back again for another right. 12 hours oh, of 4 3 day man. the Ken Block content motherfucking marathon. So, here's the deal. Uh, if you don't know what the hell's going on, and maybe YouTube puts you in from somewhere else, we made another one of these videos. And it's before this, so you need to watch that one first. Or not, but you should probably do that. Link is in the description below. That's right. If you're watching this and you haven't watched part one, maybe you want to go back and then fast forward like nine hours to get to the important part. Or keep watching here, we'll tell you again. Unfortunately, we reached the limit of what is a YouTube upload. That's right, we broke you too. We broke you Yeah, go do it again. What? Twelve hours? They were not ready for four three day. So if you're just joining us, today is four three day. We're celebrating all of the best content from Ken Block. We're curating it. We also made a major announcement a few hours ago, which is that we are bringing back Gymkhana Grid as an event here in the U.S. It will be called the Ken Block Gymkhana Grid something. For real, for real? For real, for real. Yeah. Is it fake? No joke. Were you not here three hours ago? Where were you? I was in the other room trying to get these petitions signed. Uh, all right. <laughs> Tell them about the petitions. Tell them about the, hit them with the petitions. Listen, people, we need you to sign these virtual documents. That way this man's day can be real. Custard and fish sticks, respectfully, are gross. Chocolate mousse, respectfully, gross. I hate to say it, we don't care about those, but what we do care about is Mr. Kenneth Block himself. He will want the day, we want the day, and shit. There are only 20 more days away till my birthday, so that's 423. So I want to celebrate 43 today the right way as an official day. So Zach, why don't you tell him what we've got for the next 12 hours? Here's the deal. We're going deep with the cuts. We're giving out stuff that you probably haven't seen, well, most of you ever. Some of it was before you guys were born, but we're talking... We're talking rare gems. That's right, we dug so far back that we have footage from before YouTube even existed. It it's crazy how like 2005 can look old. Mind blown. But we got some vintage content. Yo, you know what's funny about that? It's double 4-3 day. Because it's 43 day oh, and all the aspect ratio man. is also in 4-3. Technical nerdery. We, should we just kick off right now? With, the, with the best of the 4-3 content. <laughs> so for all you folks that were born probably uh, after the turn of the century here, back in the day, we used to have to watch videos like this. That's right. A square-ass aspect ratio. It's not actually square. It was a rectangle, and it was called 4-3 aspect. So this is the best of 43's 4-3 videos. Say that. Stop the right now. And if that's what? confusing, this man is it's out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> of course, who else will do 24 hours of content and make all of you suffer through it? And just in case that's way too confusing for you, guess what? All you gotta do is watch it. And so just sit enjoy. back, enjoy. We're leading the rally, one, two. Um, Ken is 1.5 seconds ahead after four stages, I believe, or five stages. Um, both of us feel feel pretty good. Um, rally's going excellent for us. Third place is a good ways back right now, so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. What happened to Travis? Well, we came around the corner and there had obviously been a big spin, and uh, someone had hit some trees and knocked some parts off their car, and unfortunately it was Travis. Uh, it sucks to see that car destroyed and I was having a lot of fun competing with him this weekend. It's the first time we've actually really ran at the same speed, so that was really fun. And now I'm kind of bummed he's gone. Now, now all the pressure's on me just to finish. So, that's my goal. Ken did a very, very good job and uh, he was able to pace himself like a veteran, even though he's just a rookie, but he didn't feel any pressure when he was leading the rally and while he was first on the road, which is quite impressive. Again, that was good. <laughs> That's great. That's Oh, 
caution. Let's fight plus. Down there. Right four, into left four plus, repeat left four plus, and entry, right five, seventy, left three minus stay in, three minus stay in, and right five, okay. Uh, at least she landed on the wheels, you know?
I didn't know what to expect though coming down there and I heard we were going to shred with, with Ken and his rally car and I'm like, what? <laughs> Before we showed up there, we had no idea. We didn't even know if the car was going to be able to climb the mountain very easily. But once we saw how well the car got traction, how easy it was able to get around on the mountain, um, let's figure out how we can be innovative and, and try and put these two sports together to, to really have fun and make some innovative and different footage. one of those random ideas you have, you know, hey, let's take the rally car up to the mountain and see what can happen. And I think those guys even surprised themselves as to how much we were all able to get done and how fun it really was. Every time he would come back to pick us up, to tow us into something, he would just roost your tail around and just like cover all of us. I'm sure Ken loved, loved it, every minute of it. There was like a 35 stair handrail and Ryan Teeny would front side board side down it and then Ken towed me uphill at like 40 miles an hour. That was really crazy with the whole timing. All this stuff has so much timing to it, it was like really crazy and just like a lot of it was just like pretty fortunate that it worked out. There was this one shot where Ken almost hits Ryan Tini. Um, and they set it up, you know, it was like a little bit set up, just kind of like, hey, Ryan, rake this jump and Ken's gonna spray you. Easy, right? I think I did it two times before that shot and wasn't getting very close. And so I said, all right, well, I'll come at it a little faster and get a little closer. And, uh, and as I went by, I was like, ooh, that was pretty close. Teeny stays dead still, like crazy. Props to Ryan. That was one of the gnarliest things I've ever seen. I don't know how, like, you couldn't even time that if you had a machine driving that car. I don't know, that was insane. It was a fun little thing, but I never intended to get that close. And very happy Ryan didn't get hurt. Everything's good, right, Ryan? <laughs> Coming from the background of motocross and snowboarding, I, I always look at stuff as jumps, you know? The first day we were there, Ken is looking at the last jump in Snow Park, which is a really big jump. It's like 
65, 70 foot park jump, built for snowboarders, not for cars. Uh, and he's just looking at it kind of like, hey, maybe I could hit that with my car. And um, we were all just kind of like, yeah, cool, good idea, Ken, like, haha, whatever. And kind of blew it off. I saw the jumps and the jump line and figured, I didn't see why not the car couldn't jump off the kicker. The kicker was actually more than twice the width of the car, so actually getting the car off it wouldn't be a problem. Go ahead. <laughs> did it once and ah, the car took a bit of an impact, but hey, it was fine. And, okay, well that was fun. What else can we do, you know? After he hit it once, you know, we were coming up with ideas like, oh, that'd be cool to hit it right following him or right in front of him. And then we were thinking, well, right in front of him would be a death sentence because if you fall, he's gonna land on you and pretty much completely crush you to death. I mean, that was like really crazy. I mean, you're flying next to a 3,000 pound rally car, just like spinning through the air and there's a freaking car next to you. It, it's just, it was pretty surreal. Probably one of the scariest things I've ever done, for sure, on a snowboard. I actually saw, you know, some of the photos and, okay, let's, let's do that again. And uh, that's when we had the idea of having multiple guys go with the car. And that's the shot with Torsten, that was the third time we went. And uh, that actually went really well too, but about that time it was still kind of coming down on the nose and I didn't want to really damage the car too much on the first day. Just an amazing feeling. You hear that boom, you know, with the car and you think it's you and in the air you hear that brum, 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 the motor, you know, going. It was crazy and amazing, wicked awesome. Man. <laughs> I had aspirations to be a pro snowboarder at one time, and I would have loved to have been on the cover of a snowboarder. And if you would have told me 20 years ago, hey, 20 years from now, you're gonna be on the cover of a snowboarder in a rally car, like, I just would have, I, you know, would have told you you're absolutely crazy. You know, we'd heard some rumors um, from New Zealand that the shoot was going on, that this happened and stuff, and we were way along in the production schedule for that December issue. And then suddenly we get these photos that come in that are the remaining portions, their last shoot for the video. You know, and it's Ken jumping his car and Torstein doing a 720 next to it. This cover is definitely one of the covers that'll be, you know, in the history books, of covers that people remember. Oh man, I was sliding this log and oh no, something weird happened down there. Oh. Should we call the patrol? Get patrol. <laughs> you got shit on your lens. Parker planted Park City. I'm so happy right now, I haven't done shit all season. He has this windbreaker that is very slippery, and you can actually stand on Travis's back and ride him. I rode him down basically the whole park of Park City, the adult swim snowboard park. I rode him down like the landings of a couple jumps, and it was good. It was good fun. Travis is a man. He's, he just goes out there and gives it his all.
Parker. <laughs> he's just, he has the best attitude on snowboarding, in my opinion. Always has like a new idea and a different aspect on snowboarding than everyone else. He has a style that nobody can uh, replicate. Nobody can even try to have his style because it's just so different and crazy and I love it. It's awesome. He's, he's a very unique character, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool being out in nature, you know? It's so cool. I love it. This is pretty. Bryce popped a five off that, straight out of backside, lip twisted off that one down there. Did a little honky donk off the wall ride, huh? What do you say about that? I think it's pretty sweet. Progression in the backyard of Ken's house. Huh? Huh? What's going on, kids? It's your boy, Sal Masakela, on the most beautiful bluebird day in the universe. And we're in the Wasatch Mountains, you and me. Why? Well, we've come on a journey, on a quest of sorts, to explore one of the most remarkable explorations in snowboarding today in the 21st century, and that is the DC Mountain Lab. Ooh. It's ringing, it's ringing. Whoa. Hello? Hey, is this uh, Ken Block? Yes. Ken Block, Sal Black. Who? Sal Black. Are we, 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 are we still in for the exclusive tour? Uh, no doubt. Sick. We're in. Let's go. Yeah, my man. What's going on? Big Black is the first thing that greets you That's at the mountain you do it. That's how you do it. Wow. No doubt. I know you told me not to bring anybody, and I, I, I tr you know, I tried to listen, but I had to bring people with me oh. because I had a ready sort of made them a promise that they were in so they're, they're, they're not gonna get in the way all right is that cool as long as they don't get in the way of us having fun okay you guys cool with that okay cool I think they're cool first you Travis Parker how Hi. are you good so how are you doing I'm good um first of all let me say that I think pink really is your color thank you it kind of brings out the eyes Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't mean that in any sort of way other than, you know, complimentary. And if I did mean it in another way, I mean, that'd be cool, but that's not how I meant it. Yeah, you know, pink stuff, it's, you know, it's kind of hot right now, I guess. Todd of Richards? Todd of Richards? Todd of Richards. Awkward seating. Honestly, anybody can help themselves to the candy. Can we go there's see? so much candy. Can we go see it? Show yeah. them the snack. So there's like a, a whole snack department area, which yeah, you're in charge. It's the whole room. And you're in charge of that. Oh, <laughs> oh hey, thanks, Black. You alright, babe? Yeah, it's just Let's go in. Red vines. Red vines. Crap. This Alka Salsa morning relief. Not mm. to be confused with morning relief that you would get in an Asian country. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that right now. I love this game called Three Men in the Closet, but I'm kinda I'm kinda over it. Let's so let's out. get out of the, the So I'll come out of the closet.
Do you cook bacon? Swine, yes. You like swine? Yes. And do you eat swine? Uh, yes, I do. I say swine is fine. <laughs> That's the adult section. That's the yeah, that's adult swim right that's there. That's adult swim. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Like, it looks very like the bottles are dusty, so it doesn't really look like there's much adult swim. That's right. Swim We're in. professional athletes, so we don't we don't this is the devil's juice. That's right the here. devil's temptation. <laughs> this this actually is a, a very sentimental story because Ken Locke, who we met earlier, he got married here that's right. last summer. We all were there. It was a fun party. The Love Fest 04. I just remember Todd walking around like this. Just, I was dancing with it at one point. Is this coming like a 12 pack, or six pack? How's that? <laughs> did you see the board collection? Um, uh, I did not. You just pointed that That's out. I'll bring you over here. I'll show you the board collection. Please do. I have to say that this is this is one of the most impressive things for me in the house. Really? Yeah, it really is. Do you ever stop and reflect on how long you've been? You reflect every time you walk down the stairs. Didn't stop. you have a little thing at a certain point, like a little? Rat tail? A little long, long, oh, like a semi rat tail? No. I think so. I had long hair. It was rat tail. Everyone did. I never had the Tony Hawk thing. I never had that. You didn't have a comb over. Hey, dreadlocks are coming back. Asshole. This is uh, the upstairs, what I like to call the party bathroom, because this is the, the central bathroom. You know, the activity is going on in the living room. And upstairs, this is the bathroom people come inside. And as you walk through the halls, of uh, the Mountain Lab, there's always tons and tons of memorabilia. There's the Snurfer. And here, a very nice piece of memorabilia. Blink-182 Blink dudes, Tom DeLong, Ken Block, very good friends. Uh, he said, Ken, this guitar, obviously not as strong as our friendship, haha. -ha. Tom Humor, very funny. Um, those guys are good homies. Making your way through here, this is uh, the master bedroom, inherently where the magic happens, and we'll just leave it at that. Hey, hard at work. Check the floor molding right there. Boom. How often do you come out here to the mountain lab? I mean, really, what's, what's, the, what's the usage of the mountain lab in a given year? Uh, my wife and I try and get out here as much as possible. It's usually like 10 to 14 days a month. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but it's really good though. I'm able to get out here and use my computer and still be able to get all my work done communicating back with the home office cell phone but this office has a lot better view than uh, than yeah. my office back in Vista so now when you're having a, a, a particularly stressful day as president do you, is this what you do do you come out here and release a little tension yeah just remember guns and alcohol don't mix they do not mix yeah. <laughs> safety first kids I'm from the streets! I run when I rip! I rip when I ride! Pull! Hey! Yeah. Break yourself, fools! Yep. This one's my favorite because it has the biggest bed. Um, generally speaking, pro shreds with a wife or a girlfriend, if they have that sort of an arranged union, they end up here in this bed. This is one of those bathrooms you can come in, think about it, process it, release it, and leave it behind. So the kid who won the Help Make DC's Boots Better contest, his name is Steve. He lives in Utah, but he's actually from the Midwest. Anyway, we're gonna give him some some stuff, some free stuff. He's here. He's already like freaked out, and now we're gonna freak him out a little bit more with gifts. It's Christmas, and, and, you're, and you're brown Santa, and you're my little vanilla elves. That's right. Let's go. This is all of his, really. Holy shizer, kids! You gotta be kidding me. This actually isn't very cool. Now I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Open up! We're coming in! How do you feel about this? Uh, this is dream come true. Totally, it's dream come true. So this is the most like mellowed out dream come true I've ever seen in my life. If we see this stuff on eBay, Dang, we come to BYU and bad things happen. Okay, this room that is presently Steve's home to him and his free stuff is actually 
the bunk room. It's a very happy place. I had a lot of team members sometimes after a long day of trying to, to, to perform maneuvers to clap about, they come in here and they meditate in the steam room and sort of find their peace and center. I like to get in touch with myself in there. Yeah. I once got in touch with someone here, right, right here. And, and That's it, disgusting. It is disgusting, but I just brought back a memory, a little flashback. Ew. I don't know if I'm back in that. <laughs> I brushed my teeth there, so. <laughs> you gotta go in, though. Oh, gosh. Don't just rim it. You killed it. Here. Where's the DC toilet paper? Can I give you a hand, Travis? One of the best things. Sorry. <laughs> Do you ever get nasty with it? You're not against I try friends. every now and then. I can't figure out how to turn it on. You know what's weird though? CDs sound like shit on this. Seriously, I tried to mix two CDs and it just, the needle scratched the it, thing. No, it's, it's not made for CDs though. Come See, on. for you kids at home who are wondering what this is, this is a record player. This right here is, is the special Xbox. These are all games that are actually on the hard drive. So basically we have everything from pretty much the last couple years. All these games, all these games are on here. Are on the hard drive. On you never have to put a game in. That's right. Okay, so it basically has every arcade game up until Mortal Kombat 3 in the arcade, every Atari 620, 2600 game, every Atari Lynx game, every <laughs> and every Sega Master System. Sal, so, what game did you like to play in the arcade when you were younger? This will date me, but Galaga. Show me Galaga. You got it. What version? Which country? Are you serious? Oh yeah, it would go deep here, pal. I'm just going through these now. And that's just the A's. That's B. We're on C now. D, E, F, G. Okay, so let's go up to Galaga. Put yeah. coins in the TV? Yeah. No, I forget how to do it. That's that. In a, in a nutshell. I would not ever ride a snowboard if I had access to that many videos. Yeah, games. we're not really allowed to use it very much. <laughs> Let's okay. get out there. You guys want to teach me a trick? We got a weenie roast going on out there. Really? That's right. Like like a we literal weenies. Hot dogs roasted? and handrails. In the garage, immediately, what do you see? Grind right tools. Grind right means you shred right. Uh, there's technicians that handle the grind right duties, specifically on the DC team. Our technician, resident technician. Todd Richards. Todd, right. you take sort of a special pleasure in uh, tooling away on the shred six. Yep. This right here is the G-Wagon, uh, my personal favorite. I was driving the G-Wagon two years ago during the Sundance Film Festival, and um, people sort of made a big deal. I'd roll up the street, they said, who's the black man in the dreadlock? It's Ricky Williams, Ricky Williams is in town. It was funny until the last day of Sundance when someone- They thought he was Serena Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Gilrod. Someone threw a coffee mug at the windshield of the G-Wagon while I was driving it. it. Totally shattered the windshield and I had to come home and explain to Ken that I broke the G-Wagon. I'm still here so it all worked out but it was a pretty funny story. This here is the, um, the rally expression session. Um, there's a lot of things going on with the Subaru. Basically you get the picture. It's a rally car. Who else has a rally car at their mountain left? And then we empty out into the mountain bike area here. That's for, for when the snow melts, for training. And then, of course, Ooh. this is where you keep <laughs> this is where you keep your BJ Linuses. What's up? What's up, Beach? Just playing a little uh, Tony Hawk skater here, trying to get amped up before I hit the park. Are you serious? Is yeah. that how you do it? That's how I do it. A little Tony Hawk before you hit the shred park. Because you can get those backside lips, backside tail. Look at that nose blunt slides. A little bit of what I'm talking about. And it's not uncommon to find a BJ in the backseat of a G-Wagon. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then, of course, it wouldn't really be a team area without a locker room area. So this is where the shreds uh, keep their stuff. Hey. You've got the Eddie Wall locker, Simone, Chamberlain, Travis. I just gotta fix it. It was screwed up. There you go. What do you keep in your locker? Um. Oh, well, I like the way you've decorated your locker track. Thanks, yeah, this is, uh, you know, I put a uh, poster of myself up here for self-esteem and uh, some old uh, stickers, uh, uh, air blasters, you know, mm -hmm. uh, friends, Dirksen, mm -hmm. Crawford, and uh, yeah, and I keep my stuff in here. I got my spare tire, uh, some uh, boots. Cowboy boots. Cowboy boots, uh, leg bag and boots, 
uh, snowboard boots and extra boards. Oh, oil. extra boards, you got like six. Yep. Wow. Is I'm that because you're pro? I'm <clears throat> sponsored, yeah. Okay, cool. Travis put this in here, I opened it up one day and it says, hey Todd, what's up? I'm just two lockers down. <laughs> sure enough. He is. Okay kids, we are in what's called the mud room. As you can see, there's rows and rows and rows of boots, all different sizes. Um, this is for the actual testing and researching of the product. This is where the players play. Right, this place is tighter than a crab's ass, and that's watertight, Sal. Safety first, kids. Hang it. And uh, I want to I want to know what you're doing here today, and so do these guys. Well, mainly I just want to come out and check out the dudes riding this, see how it's looking in snow now that there's some snow. Last time I was here is a bunch of shred knives. Hey! See, see, that's gonna chip the stairs. See, and we're trying to do just, you know, an interview here. Oh my god! See that? He owns the place, so he can do that. He's allowed to do whatever he wants. Did you build this? Yeah, we built this. Whole you built thing. everything here. Pretty much, yeah. Some people would call you a visionary. Well, we just want to have fun here, you know? That's what the Mountain Lab's all about. Let me show you a little bit about why the Mountain Lab is a legit park with its own park staff and fully functioning equipment. As you can see, we've got the snow cat over here. It's got a sleeping dog inside, dog and the cat. If you come inside here, you can see we've got all the different tools you need. We've got the snow spark, lights, generators, electrical cables. And one thing that most people may not have seen if they haven't seen any night shots yet of, of the stair feature is this uh, electrical light box we built that'll light up the DC logo on the outside of the stair feature. Oh, squeeze the target in. <laughs> It looks like a Travis move. Doesn't this suck? He moved. He moved it. Down here at the bottom of the fun park in fun zone with Brenner Adams and Nate Larson. Nate Larson. You guys are essentially AMP, the video game series, correct? Yep. Where are you from? Where are you based at? What the hell are you doing here? We're based in Salt Lake City, which is convenient. We've got seven resorts within 30 minutes of our office. Mm -hmm. And um, we're up here trying to turn this crazy place into a video game. That's amazing. Can I get a free game? Can I get on the we'll, mailing we'll list? We'll talk a little later. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> right. At this point, I have the honor of shutting down the rope tow. It's time for a little R&R &R back at the house. Let's go. <laughs> okay, kids, it's been a wrap. A beautiful day at the Mountain Lab. Ken, this is really obnoxious, the hot tub, the champagne, but you know what? Someone's got to do it.
Oh my god. So we were setting up this whole idea to do this 24 hours of content. One of the things that we talked about were, you know, what were some of our favorite moments uh, that we had with Ken as far as like episodes were concerned, you know? And uh, mine, one stuck out really, really hard for me. And uh, that had to be the time that we went and randomly flew to Colorado to buy a clapped out Mustang for basically no reason. So the backstory on this, like you guys have probably seen, we did the, uh, what do we call that thing? The Mustang? Yeah, Destiny. So the, the five liter, the, the drop top five liter Mustang, uh, better known as Destiny. We wound up giving the car away uh, like later that year, or the next year. So the whole thing with this, originally, we had all gone up to Park City to film with Ken and we were shooting like three different episodes. And one of those episodes was supposed to be action in his old uh, Escort Cosworth, uh, or his, his old Cosi uh, V2. Uh, but the problem was we didn't have the correct size turbo. Like basically it needed a different size turbo for the altitude and you know, blah, blah, blah. So that wasn't going to be in in time. Uh, so we kind of were sitting around in the kitchen, you know, like figuring like, oh, what, you know, what, what could we do to, you know, because we have all these camera guys here. I was there to, you know, host and we had a producer. And uh, I jokingly said, hey, we should just go buy a clapped out Mustang and like uh, just rip donuts in it. It would be fun because how is that not fun? And uh, shortly at what the f Anyway, shortly after that, right, like some of the boys are already on like Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and, you know, randomly from the cheap seats, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Magic uh, who had found it. Uh, shout out to Magic, cameraman, DP, director, you know, on a lot of stuff we do. Uh, but he was like, yo, I found this one, you know, but basically we were, we were all kind of like going around like showing some of the crappy Mustangs that we found, you know, for all like just, you know, really cheap, like $3,000, $4,000 range. And he happened to find, find this one that was perfect because it was just clapped out, ragtop, looked shitty, but like ran. And the price point was uh, very low. Uh, and so we were like, yeah, this is amazing. It's like the vanilla ice Mustang, sort of, obviously not as clean. And, uh, but then we we're like, oh shit, it's in Colorado. It's in uh, Denver. So, you know, we we're like, damn, and I kind of, it was funny because we all thought it was like, oh, this is, this is hilarious. And then uh, I, I, basically Ken was like, well, why don't we just fly out there and buy it? And we were like, what? Like, why would you do that? You know, he's like, no, we'll fly it out. And we'll, we'll fly out and we'll just drive it back. He's like, just call him and see. So we call the guy to be like a joke and to just, I don't know, see and like, you know, try to like hassle him down or haggle him down a little. Basically we call the guy Try to haggle him down. We haggle him down a little bit. We're like, look, we'll pick this thing up today, but you got to meet us at the airport. We're buying it there, straight cash. And he agreed to it. And so we legit got the next flight out, flew to Denver, met this dude in the pickup line, uh, like at the pickup row at the airport, bought this shit sight unseen, and then proceeded to drive it all the way back to Utah, which... It's not that long, but it's still like a five hour, six hour drive. Actually, no, it's maybe it's longer than that. Yeah, it's still a long ass drive to drive in a clapped out hoopty that as we found out had it like a whole nitrous kit on it, you know, and it just been beat within an inch of its life for most of its life. Body parts were just flapping around on it. it had no rear window, uh, heat barely worked. It was amazing. But that's the kind of guy Ken was, that's the kind of guy Ken was, right? Like he was like, yo, it's gonna be dope to do that. Let's just fucking do it.
who cares? And then that Mustang turned out to be amazing when we built something awesome out of it. And you know what? Whoever won it, I hope that you're watching this uh, because that all of us love that car. And got to meet Vanilla Ice because of it. So here's the episode. Take a look. You packed and ready to roll? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> it's a good decision or a bad decision? I think it's an awesome decision. What are we doing? Des well, Destiny's determined that I need more Fox bodies in my life. I don't even have one yet, but that's what we need to do is go get a Fox body today. I'm going to jump in the car, get to a plane, fly to Denver. Cut to one hour earlier in that conversation. <laughs> so we were all kind of hanging around. And uh, I don't know, got the wild hair to start checking Facebook Marketplace for, I don't know, maybe a Fox Body Mustang. Turns out there's one that's actually relatively close here in Salt Lake City. It's uh, the sweet convertible Mustang. <laughs> Drop top 5.0. Oh. <laughs> Is he in Colorado though? Longmont, Colorado. Yeah, very interested in Mustang. Solid 9 out of 10. Needs paint job. It's not a paint. nine out of ten. <laughs> it's not even a five out of ten. <laughs> you know, it's a, you know, probably staunch hundred and sixty-five horsepower. I mean, I feel like with the Huna Fox design, I need to get a bit more familiar with, yeah. you know, the Fox bodies. Yeah, wow. It's hard, yeah, start living the it's dream yeah, from the like, from why the bottom a, up. Why a convertible? Oh, yeah. It's the only option available right now. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's the right option right now. <laughs> Sweet. That is a perfect summer hour for a round of market. I mean, picture yourself rolling. <laughs> Uh, this is what Hoonigan Racing Division was missing, right? <laughs> right, like, right. See, that's, that's we, why we brought an official Hoonigan in to help us out here. Is this what you call scumbagging someone into <laughs> doing something? <laughs> yes, this is exactly what that is. <laughs> Hoona truck, Hoona corn, convertible fox body <laughs> sitting in the shop. So yeah, this is the best idea. See, this is a this is what I'm talking about. Look. Ask for rock bottom cash price. Yeah, what's your rock in cash? Make sure you put today, cash. Today. And then, but the, the, the S should be a dollar sign though, in cash. Today. <laughs> so, want to make sure everyone, what's your bottom barrel today? Cash with a dollar sign in hand price. <laughs> <laughs> trade him the Honda Ruckus scooter. You yeah. can go down the line because Scott will trade me the scooter for the Audi and we can trade this. Oh, that was yours. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. This is Wheel and Deal in 101. You got, the, you got the video? I got a video, he just sent it to me of it starting up and it's actually informative here. Wait, let's... I can't, you can't. It's... Oh, no, 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 I just want to see that attack. <laughs> oh, he's got a, he's got a val uh, radar detector, he's got the passport. He, he's gonna have to throw that in. Yeah. <laughs> he's got oil pressure. Definitely sounds like it doesn't have catalytic converters, which is perfect. <laughs> I like the oil did you hear that thing start up? So, I mean, I was impressed. Yeah, that, you know what? It didn't. You didn't even hear a single lifter flatten out. <laughs> <sighs> well, flatten out, you can get that 345. The day is is really heated up here. We came in this morning with uh, bad news about um, the Kazi. Now we've elevated the game to buying a uh, used, pretty much clapped out five liter Mustang. Hey, Joel. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? This is uh, this is Zach. I'm here with Matt. We were uh, talking with you uh, about the Mustang. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, look, man, we want to come and get it. Um, so, tell you what, we're gonna basically we're gonna have to catch a flight from here and then come out to you. So, the f any chance you can meet us at the airport? We're you know flying from Salt Lake City <laughs> with cash, with cash in hand. I mean, you know, so it'd be at least it'd be a nice fun drive back. Let me see, let me talk to my wife, see what she says, and then uh, I'll figure something out for you guys. We'll make something work. Awesome. You ready, Ken? Absolutely. You were born for this. You have worked your entire life training for this very moment. We're gonna bring some essentials to fix in a Mustang. We got NASCAR tape, radiator stop leak, Crescent wrench, 
shitty channel locks, ball peen hammer, sorted zip ties, hose clamps, some super glue in, in various fuses. And of course, iconic duct tape. This may match the car better, so you don't know. That should do it. It's nice, it's a roll, but the whole idea of it is so you can like lay on it. So you can like, you know, not be on the, in the dirt. Hey, it's nice to not have to like lay in the damn dirt. Denver airport? I mean, there is there's nobody here. And we are waiting to see this Mustang that we haphazardly decided to get on a plane and fly a few hundred miles and purchase sight unseen. That's, that's the sound. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. <laughs> this is it. It's gonna be a fun drive. Oh yeah. Yeah. How's it going, man? Zach. Pretty good, how are you? Joel. Nice to meet you, Joel. So everything works. I mean, everything HP. Yeah, it's right. It's got a nitrous kit on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, empty? It's empty. Yeah. Uh, right on. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> When is the last time you bought a car off the internet like this? <laughs> Never. <laughs> you ready to party? It's gonna be a adventure. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the stuff. Is there a seatbelt? See ya. Thanks. Later, dude. Appreciate it. The good news is there's some oil in it, just not a lot. <laughs> so, I think we stopped. Yeah. You know, in all, I was expecting this to be way more clapped out than it really is. I mean, there's your traditional, like, you know, wires that are just kind of tied together and then electrical tape in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we can shit everywhere, but... But the fact that there's this... <laughs> I mean, you, you can't just, you can't just fly into a city and buy a car sight unseen and not have nitrous. Destiny. Wow, that's deep. Destiny. 
my first fox mommy. Yeah. And she, she's a fox. And she's topless. And it's she's, kind of a stripper name. She is, <laughs> she's a looker. <laughs> you know what? She may be a little rugged on the, uh, a little rough around the edges. But she purrs like a kitten. You love this thing, don't you? I love the thought of it. <laughs> All right, I just got to shout out how much of a quality vehicle this is. Look at that. Look at that. It's, uh, oh. oh. Back to HRD. Late night. Oh yeah. <laughs> Long day. <laughs> Very. And it is uh 1:52 a.m. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well. And we, now we got to come back here in the morning and uh, do some hunting. Yes. See you guys in a second. So after 500 grueling miles driving from the Denver airport straight back to Utah. We made it. We didn't even have any problems. And you know what? This is the first time we have ever flown and bought a shit box sight unseen without a single problem. So you know what that deserves? A bitchin' beauty segment. Drop it on them! This majestic stallion. Oh, speaking of majestic stallions, what's up? You made it. How you feeling? Ooh, a little beat up. <laughs> <laughs> the that... seats aren't exactly the most comfortable road trip seats in the world. No, you know I don't think they were. Uh, you know, apparently we just actually found out that they have adjustable lumbar. Oh yeah. <laughs> But does it work though? That's not a, really. That's a whole different question. I, I maxed it out and uh, it's still almost flat. So, <laughs> but that was a fun day yesterday. Uh, you know, the the Huda Fox is a project we recently launched, but I've never owned a Fox body. Now I now I can say officially I've owned and driven a Fox body over 500 miles. So, you know what you haven't done yet though? What's that? What you do best, Ken. Oh. <laughs> Here's what we did. This morning, everybody got here early. We put new spark plugs and wires on it, and Butch went and filled the nitrous bottle. <laughs> Which cost exactly $69. So Bam. Fully filled. No idea if the system works at all, but it's full. That's right. So you, uh, you wanna go hit some skids in this or what? Yeah, let's do this. It's party time. Oh yeah, pop in bottles, baby. Get into second gear and hit that, hold the button down. So, found the problem. We got a little nitrous leak. Yeah. You know what? That's the next episode. Yeah, figuring out yeah, nitrous yeah. on the let's fox. Get this, let's get this burnout done. Let's just do a burnout.
slowed down. But then it did donuts really easy, so I just kept going. <laughs> well done, sir. Come see us next time, where we fix the nitrous kit. And hopefully don't blow the motor. Or maybe we do. Also, Ken, what do you think the people want to see with this? Man, I don't know. Uh, this could be my daughter's drift car, or a fun drift car just for the whole family here in, in Utah. I don't know. Let's get everybody a comment below. What should we do with this Fox body? Besides the obvious choice of the other box. Need more ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Blocks, Jim Conagrid is coming back to the United States this fall. Now, tickets are going to be on sale very soon here, but if you want to hold your spot in line, if you want to be the first to know about it, click the link in the description below. Go there, fill that out. And that's actually not just for spectating. If you want to drive, whether you're pro or amateur, go to the link below, sign up. You'll be the first to know when spots are available. And those are going to run out really quick. We've seen the Hoonicorn do some incredible things from going up mountains to doing all sorts of crazy kanas. But what we didn't know, or we completely underestimated, is that it's actually a really savagely fast drag car. So we did a series called Hoonicorn vs. World. Well, we did two. One, we underestimated how fast the car would be. And it pretty much mopped up everything in its path. Then we did it again, and we put it up against even faster cars, and it still mopped them up. Because the Hoonicorn, low-key, full-blown drag car. So here are some of our favorite episodes of Hoonicorn vs. the World. By the way, I don't like this thing. Welcome to janitor school. Whose side are you on? I already here? voted for RS3. Welcome to Hoonicorn vs. the World, a special of this versus that, where we're going to race the Hoonicorn against a bunch of different cars. The world! Technically the world. All right, so what do we got going on? So uh, we're going to race this versus a bunch of random vehicles, and the reason this whole thing came about is Forza. When the Hoonicorn made its way into Forza, we noticed that a lot of kids were taking the Hoonicorn and just racing it versus random things. Everything from trophy trucks to supercars to little three-wheeled vehicles that look like an egg. When we got the Hoonicorn into Forza, I really made it a big point to make it feel as realistic as possible. When I first tried it, I was like, it's not fast enough. It needs to feel more manic. In real life, this thing feels like it wants to kill me. It feels very manic. So we tried to make it feel that way in the game, and it's very fast. So we took that concept of the kids playing the Hoonicorn and racing other people in a straight line, and we're bringing that to real life. We're gonna drag race it versus supercars, <laughs> trophy trucks. Maybe Let's not forget that 71 Caprice that's sitting over there. <laughs> well, you have it. Here we go. down this matchup the one i'm most excited about obviously because there's four rings and this is a car that made you a believer dude i remember we went to vegas we visited hank's shop and i was like eh, whatever and then as soon as i saw it go damn that thing is loud ow and they got it right along that was it changed me forever i am converted but this is like the hero of the audi community so without further ado, 
So this thing looks by, very. By much the way, I don't like this thing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it's an all-wheel drive car. I I like all-wheel drive cars. I study all-wheel drive cars. I've never seen an all-wheel drive car that looks like this. Because it looks like a sleeper. <laughs> yeah. Well, that. But it looks like off-road trunk wheels with some yeah. giant overstuffed tire. But you realize that's around. not for aesthetic. That's I so know. he doesn't spin the tire on yeah, the Yeah, we wheel. used to we used to mark what? them with stripes and you'd see at every pass you'd spin the the tire 8 inches to 10 inches on on the rim. So these are absolutely radials. <laughs> now I don't have a ton of experience on these cuz we do run a, a bias ply normally. This is a radial class tire. It's not a, a bias ply. So Did you bring the biases too? No, we didn't. Okay. So we, we just brought these. I so have, what he's saying is, is he has another tire that's faster that he didn't bring. So it, that's it's confidence. It doesn't have as much wrinkle in it. Um, the thing with these is they say that they're just axle killers, they're just drivetrain killers because they don't have that that squish that a, a bias ply has to kind of soak up the drivetrain lash. Well, I, I hope that. you don't break anything. Well, me too. But it sounds like the exhaust is coming out of somewhere else. Yeah, up yeah, there. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, I noticed this before. <laughs> Yeah, That's yeah. A carbon Kevlar door. Yeah, yeah. So we got some new doors for this season. Some carbon Kevlar, dropping a little I weight out of the car. I didn't to see a baby seat back well, there. The last time we saw this car, it had an interior, right? So you've dropped a bit of weight. Yep. Do you know what the pretty weight light. is? It's right under 3,000 pounds right now. All right, all right. So for a modern Equal. car, it's pretty light. Wait, how much horsepower? Probably around 1,100. We'll see how fast so you are. And that's we'll without nitrous. Been, it, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, Wait, I thought our numbers were pretty equal there. <laughs> oh, no, I've been here all day long. I've been, I keep watching the magician with the Motex shirt on. And he just, it car just keeps getting faster, faster and faster, faster and faster, 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 faster all day long. So. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so pop the hood. Let's see what this grocery getter has. Yeah, it looks stock, other than that huge... Woody! Woody Harrelson? Wait, what looks stock? This looks stock. <laughs> this is like Bill a lot. That's a lot. I've seen bigger. A aluminum comes. Yeah, it's stockish. You know why that happened? Because you, you blew yeah, we so should... much boost, they blew the plate out. So you may be wondering why there's dents in the hood. Would you like to show them? That's how that happens. Look at that. That's a lot of boost. Yeah, we run like 55, 60 pounds of boost. It's funny how easily he brings that out and other dry racers over here earlier, like... It's a giant mystery. I like this though. There's How one, two, three, four, five. I like five. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what makes it sound good. How big is the turbo? So this is a 72 millimeter. So Zona Rotor makes the turbo. It's rated at 105 pounds per minute. So we can get about 1100 horsepower with this kit. This is a kit we sell. People daily drive this, this kit pretty routinely. It's a good solid kit to get cars into the eights. Pretty full weight. <coughs> so wait, just wait. Yeah, just nonchalantly. <laughs> it's a kit <laughs> that daily drives and runs eight <laughs> seconds. You have an eight four time slip on this thing? Yeah, so I've run 843 in this car, probably about 300 pounds heavier than the car is That's now. full tilt? That's, that's on a prep strip. The surface like this is completely different. So you can't feed in much power until the car starts moving. But yeah, the cylinder heads are great, so we just throw a lot of boost at them. They eat it up. But I think the thing you need to feeling. explain is the transmission, because that's really yeah. the secret sauce of what makes this thing the way a DSG works is you just have two clutches. One's on the even gears and one's on the odd gears. So pretty much what it's doing is it's opening a clutch. When you're in first gear, it just has second gear ready. With second that you're ready to shift, it just transitions. Pretty fast shifts back and forth. It makes it to where you can kind of have a sequential. Purists get really bent about dual clutch transmissions, they call them autos. Like growing up, sequential transmissions were everything. You're like, oh, I want a sequential transmission. So like the OEM said, hey, we'll give you one with synchros that shifts in you know, 90 milliseconds and is a wet clutch so it lasts forever. The general public's like, oh, that's an automatic. Because you can't clutch kick it. Because you can't clutch kick it, so. <laughs> cool transmission, it's super efficient. Does it Bang do donuts? Gears. It can do donuts. There this you go, that's it. This oh, has an LSD in the rear so we can we can toss it around. All right, oh. so you want to take a look at the Hunicorn? Yeah, let's do it. It's a 1965 Mustang. It's pretty much stock under the hood. <laughs> yeah. The only thing left so, is the roof, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got some turbos. Uh, yeah. I, I see two two injectors per cylinder, which usually yeah, means let's, that's let, let's, on... Let's, I know you'll appreciate this under the hood. So that usually means it's running on methanol if there's two injectors per cylinder. would be my guess, but I yep. could be wrong. Well, without an intercooler, we had to keep the engine, you know, cool somehow. This thing's a monster. What all drive system is it using? Uh, it's state of. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so it's the same system that we use in all the rally cross cars. Yeah, 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 it's just no. beefier. This one was originally built for Dakar vehicles. This thing doesn't break too many parts anymore, does it? Just runs? Yeah, just kind of goes. Well, the whole idea of it too, though, was a lot of horsepower, but on a on a tire, not like a, a yeah, yeah. drag tire that's got so much grip. So right. can't yeah, this thing's nasty. I've, I've watched this car for, for quite a while. I'm pretty pumped to play with it. It's violent. What it's kind of violent. power? 1400. 1400. So it feels like it's it wants healthy. to kill me. Runs on Motac. It's uh. When it's when it's chewing up 315s like that, it's. Yeah, and it revs business. to 8500. How much does it weigh though? The whole car, about 2800 with Ken in it. 
I think it's closer to 3,000. 3,000. So it sounds to me, just, just observing it, that you're riding the limiter 135, 140 miles an hour. Does that sound about right? No, you were you were getting a one. <laughs> see the smile. See, he's starting to get he's, he's starting to get <laughs> he's race car, race car. Look at this. this. <laughs> no, he's like I don't know how fast it is. Hopefully he's like I already popped power. the hood, kid. <laughs> Go get in your blue car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the real question is, is how many laptops do you have with you today versus how many laptops does I have Ken two. Have? I think they have three. Uh, so. <laughs> Got <laughs> Well, one of my calibrator has Crocs on. I don't know if you noticed that or uh, not. But... Hurt? You didn't bring the Crocs today? I don't want to hurt anyone today. Oh! Well, pff. if he loses, so this is actually a much more mild version than originally. When we first set up the fueling on this, it was running a lift pump and then, gotcha. and then double pumps. Gotcha. But now we've gotten it with the air motors. Oh, we've sorry. gotten it down to just, just kicking it. Two, two pumps with a lift. Yeah, it's a beast. It's a monster car. Definitely not a drag car. No, but it seems to be really fast. <laughs> no, no. It's, I'm getting out of the straight away, it's doing this. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah, but it's doing that in front of drag cars. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a question. What's your question? Are we running slicks versus street tires? For the first run, we will. We'll give them that. Let's are see you, how are it you slightly worried about yes. this car? Yes. Whoa! Yes. Those That's are not your radials. That's a radial. Those are radials. They're radials. The well, they're that's cheater radials. radials. They're cheater radials. look at it. It says radial on it. Oh. That tire saying radial is like like lying hey, on your application for a job. <laughs> yeah, I've totally done that before. I've been to a college. That's, that's, that's I'm not a felon. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, I actually you. feel bad because I miscommunicated. I told him to bring radials, meaning also bring radials. But oh. He normally shows up on full wrinkles, so he's actually at a disadvantage. Oh, I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a running Audi. There's I'll tell you this, it'll whoop anything and everything that Soupy's ever built. They made me sign a waiver earlier and I said, you know what? If I do die, Scotto can have my Earth Watcher. It'll be the only fast Audi he ever owns. Man, wow. don't, don't that power. His car? Yeah. I saw his car 20 years ago when he was getting built. In his garage yeah, it's in not New much York. Further ahead. Yeah, he put some ahead. KWs on. He's like, it's gonna be running in like three months. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're here for predictions. Can I can't root against the RS3. I just can't. I've sat in this car. I've sat in that car, and this car feels faster. But Dino, this car feels faster. I'm gonna go with uh, not betting against the unicorn, just because I don't really know enough about this car other than it's really fast. Just based on looking at these wheels alone, I'm going with the RS3. This might be one of the rare times that I'm betting stop. against. I'm gonna have to go with the corn. Ken's gonna take him janitor university and he's going to give him a crash course on getting mopped up. I was converted when I met Hank and got to do sit and some ride alongs in this. And Hank might be sandbagging a little bit because they didn't talk about the spray. They mentioned it, but they didn't talk about it. A car, a four, a four all wheel drive car is going to win. That's all I'm gonna say. I honestly don't know. But I have not seen anything beat the unicorn. But this looks like a pretty gnarly car. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Chase. Put me in the middle. We're getting oh, it. Oh, oh, janitor school. I took him to janitor school. Hank ran at 80%. Who are you? Whose side are you on I was here? For RS3. We, we already know whose side he's on. From here, it looked I, like mopping. No, from here, it looked like they were even. No mopping. Mop. You can claim mopping when they mop. Don't get out of your fucking league when they don't. Mop. Woo. Hey, you better turn him up. Turn it up. You better turn him up. Finally, a 
worthy opponent. Yeah, I thought he might pull on me later. Like, who knows what would have happened? And like, he was right there. And then we, I just sort of looked like, started yeah, yeah, started creeping away from yeah. him. You want to go swap tires? Or are you keeping these things on? I, well, I don't know. He told Ken's boys to turn it up. He goes, you better turn it up. No. Yeah. Because that was his test. Heard. You got to get the mop bucket out? It's already out and half full. <laughs> what do you think, Skip? Street tire. That's all I want to say. Are you yeah. swapping? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, hold on. Let me just, I forget. How do you mop? That's a mop. That's like four cars. Well, it lost best of three, so. Actually, that last one was a race and he broke on it. So that's best out of five. So the Audi won best out of five. That Audi's definitely blue though, right? 100% blue. 100% blue. <laughs> yeah. All right, sir. You yeah. lost, but you kind of still won in my heart. So thank you. <laughs> Even losing like that is still winning to me. You guys yeah, are great. That was fun. Yeah, that was pretty good. You actually made Ken try today. So <laughs> like he was actually warming up his tires for you. He actually changed his tires for the more drag appropriate tire. What was the last one? Wait, wait, no numbers, no numbers. There's never been a better time to play Forza Horizon 4. Now it's optimized to play on Xbox Series S and Series X. I will be playing Forza Horizon with the drift car at all times. That's pretty much all I do. Live out my fantasy life. It's amazing. Join me. This car was built off of parts of the Unicorn. Racing, racing. <laughs> pounds because yeah. you gotta race the Baja 1000. Welcome to Hoonicorn vs. the World, a special segment of this versus that where we are going to race the Hoonicorn vs. the World. And Drag race. That's right. Straight line performance, baby! Yes! <laughs> Which I've never done. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done Gymkhana 7, Pikes Peak, Gymkhana 10. and also Top Gear London. And now you're here saying that you don't really know how to drag race the car though. Right, but this all comes from Forza. So when this car was introduced into Forza, it was very fast. So kids discovered that and started just drag racing it versus a bunch of different cars to see what it would do. When Forza uh, put it in the game, I went up there and tested at the studio and when I drove it, I just thought, ah, it's just not, it's not manic enough. This thing in real life feels like it wants to kill me. And that's the way it should feel in the game. So in the game, it is very fast. It is very violent. It makes sense that kids were taking it and then drag racing against everything they could. And we saw that and we thought, that, that's actually very interesting. I wonder what it would do in real life. So we're gonna drag race it versus supercars and trophy trucks. Maybe Let's not forget that 71 Caprice that's sitting over there. <laughs> well, you have it. Here we go. So for today's matchup, I have brought the baddest, most savage, most violent car in the Hoonigan lineup. I brought a truck to a car fight, pretty much. I'm scared of it, actually. All right, later. let's go check these things out. It's made to go through the desert extremely fast. It 
<laughs> it's like no raptor you've ever seen. Yeah. Also. <laughs> Almost 7,000 pounds. That's what's crazy. Holy so much crap. weight. What? Six speed has a 555 big block, 30 inches of wheel travel. So it can go over bumps 145 miles an hour, about that big. So this is a trophy truck, unlimited, right? Yes. But it's four wheel drive. Yeah, so four wheel drive is a pretty new to our sport in trophy truck just because of the components, the amount of wheel travel that these cars have. It seemed like we didn't have the technology to build parts up front to live. Uh, this is about the third year that we've ran this thing and everything's been running. Really and by good. the way, when he says living, it means <laughs> it just has to survive a race. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this thing's so overbuilt, 7,000 pounds, because yeah. it's got to race the Baja 1000. And you said you're running a six speed, which is super, that's pretty new tech for the sport also, a six right? Six speed paddle. That's insane. He's got a paddle shift. Because usually these trucks run a three speed automatic. Yeah, pretty old traditional. School, turbo 400. Um, so the last couple of years, transmission companies are coming up building six speed transmissions and it, it really helps these trucks get off the line through the corners because they weigh so much. I mean, pushing a truck that's 7,000 pounds is insane. pretty hard. Oh, all the carbon fiber in the cockpit. Look at this thing. Well, it's got a full jungle gym for a roll cage and uh, structural support, but are you running, are these 40s or are these bigger? 40 inch. Okay. Yep, Toyota tires, 40 inch. They build specially for us to run out in the desert. Do a lot of testing from street tire testing as well. 40 inches tire, 30 inches of wheel travel. Wow. This what about shocks? I mean, I see you got Fox. Are those like 4.0s? Are those bigger 4 than? 4.5s. 4.5s, yep. and you have a coilover. And a bypass. A bypass and a bump, yep. right? So you have essentially three units to control shock travel, which is insane. How is any of that gonna help you in a drag race? Uh, it's not. Let's get down to it. How much power does this make? It makes about 950. That's okay. a lot. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. We got to ask this because our man Zach right here is a big fan of crank horsepower. <laughs> so is that 950 crank or at the tire? That's crank. So through the 40 inch tires, I mean, it's we're like, talking. It's like 316 horsepower <laughs> yeah. at the tire. You lose quite a bit going back. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we're driving four tires too. Yeah. Oh, too. Yeah, yeah. Are you running a full tank of gas or are we like lean and mean right we now? We have a oh, little still got, lean and mean. still got fire extinguishers <laughs> on board. Right, man. Yeah, six speed paddle. Everything's off MoTeC. Wow. Is that a handbrake or is that a turn brake? Rear brake only. So it's a rear brake only? Yep. Nice. Wait, you have air conditioning too, right? Yeah, for the helmet. Yep. Air conditioning. Can the Hunicorn got air conditioning? No. Yes! Say so you've never driven this down a drag strip, so you don't have any idea of how quick it is, right? I'm saying low tens. Tens? No. <laughs> <laughs> what are we working with the Hunicorn? Yeah, we should go look at this. Yeah. Oh, Ken, the friggin' Hunicorn V2. <laughs> I mean, everyone knows about this car, but we gotta give us the quick rundown. I think we should pull this off. Yes. All right, well, it is a 65 Ford Mustang notchback. There's one original part from that car. I think it's somewhere around here. <laughs> <laughs> Roush Yates motor. So it's basically the motor that they would use for NASCAR, but it's been modified some. Vaughn getting worked with us in this company, RTR. Yeah, the V2 is crazy, man. I mean, the look of the turbos, like sticking through the hood is just such a insane look for this car. So this is also all wheel drive, right? This is a yes. all wheel drive platform. And if you look, the reason why the motor sits where it sits is because it sits behind uh, the front diff. And this is a pretty insane setup because I mean, it's pretty much designed bespoke to do what you do. Yes. Like this isn't like a, oh, this is a IMSA chassis setup or something. This is like something you needed to do specifically for Jim Connor, correct? Yep. And it turned out way better than I ever expected. Not only the look that we wanted was achieved, but driving it, it's the funnest thing that I have to drive. And that's saying a lot, considering I'm- You got some cool cars. Yeah. You got some cool cars. Uh, so much like the trophy truck, this thing also has a six speed, but this is a I sequential. I don't have little flappy paddles. You don't have flappy paddles in this thing? I gotta actually move my arm. No. Uh, it's got carbon fiber dash, also has a handbrake. I mean, they're pretty much the same car. Both <laughs> Fords, right? Just smaller, Fords. smaller tires, that's all. Yeah. All right, so they both got V8s. Both got six speeds. Only one is air conditioning, but <laughs> they both got Toyos. Are you running? My Toyos are slightly smaller than his. Though. Are you running triple eights? The triple eight R's? Yeah. So these are a street DOT tire, and that's yeah. a race only tire, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very Race special. only tires. Sounds Race. unfair. <laughs> Race Sounds only. unfair. <laughs> so the tire itself actually is the R Triple Eight R. This is what we use for Jim Connor. So I've never dragged race on this, but I know that they get up to temp quite quickly. These are known to be a very sticky tire. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Drag racing. So I think with me in this thing, it's about three thousand pounds. Oh wow, that's it. I thought that the Hunicorn was way heavier. Nah. All right, I got an idea. I feel like <laughs> Ken might have some advantages. So how about I drive it? 
because I'm not as professional, so it'll give Bryce a little bit more of a chance. That's I'll bet on that one. Let's move forward with this. Let's get the race. Why do you got to ask me this? It's going to be the unicorn thing so fast. Uh, I think Ken. You're going to have to give this one to Ken. Does this thing stand a chance? Is it a question? That probably weighs a bazillion pounds. <laughs> gonna have to get it. <laughs> From a dig? I mean, if it was like over like whoops or something, Bryce. Unfortunately, I feel like Bryce may have bought a knife to a machine gun fight. Fire these things up and let's get moving. Pucker moment, having that much power going in between you. <laughs> yeah. that, that was is. sick! Honestly, I was not expecting you to leave like that. That thing did a minute! <laughs> second race should be just, he gets the hit. He should get the hit. Get the hit. Yeah. The hit. So guys, that was four no. car lengths. Four car lengths? That was a bus and a half. You never Bro. told us this thing does <laughs> wheelies. <laughs> it is fast. <laughs> Got a little traction now. Yo, for such a big girl, this thing gets up in boogies. Is that the first time you've ever launched this thing on pavement? Yeah. Did you ball. know it, it literally pulls the wheel off the ground? It like lifts the front <laughs> wheel. That's yeah. insane. What do you want to do for the next one? We can either have you take the hit, which means he leaves off you going. Yeah. Right? I think that actually would be interesting. Okay. Because like you've got a good launch off of it. And then he, if he reels you back in, then I think we should go for like him at the dig and you at a roll. Okay. Well, how how often do car loses a race and everyone gravitates towards it? <laughs> <laughs> everyone, but, but, er, it lost and everyone went, oh my God, the how, truck is You want to drop weight too? We can. Yeah, let's drop weight and do it from a- That uh, wheelie was trailer. sick. Leave those tires. Kim Gyer. That whole run, I, I keep questioning that. if I, I'm actually seeing what I'm looking yeah. at. It's that amazing. Yo, wait, did you see this this thing back there? He's got a shade. That that carbon fiber panel goes up and down and blocks the sun from him. What? <laughs> this thing is sick, dude. Thank that you. whole shot was uh, that was nasty. <laughs> you you want to go again? It don't matter. You want some cars? I don't think the roll's gonna get him much no, because no. he's already got the launch. He's losing speed on the top end. Yeah. I say you shorten the track and give go him to the car. red. Yeah, go to the red and give him two cars. Yeah. Ken's like whatever you say. Did you? <laughs> Ken's not not even warming up his tires. You're gonna win this one. I feel it.
easy. Oh, that was he easy. Oh my god. That he was definitely sauce. cranked that thing to 11. No one well, happened there. Now that she's not made to drag race. <laughs> <laughs> Can she do donuts though? <laughs> I felt it sliding off and I was like, oh, it's gonna go. <laughs> well, you lost, but you still won our hearts. You know, at least the launch is cool. So I did figure out that I screwed up. On the first two? Yeah, so I was using the clutch at the wrong time and it puts it in a different mode. So I was only at 70% on the first two Whoa. rounds. Whoa, don't be. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Favorite episode for Ken Block? Uh, I think I'll go with the first one I ever did with Ken, which would be Grange test day with the Gymkhana Escort. We actually had Ryan Turk out there. Um, it was Ken's first rear wheel drive car that he built, and this thing is so sick. It's one of my favorite cars he ever built, and it was just a really fun day. I don't think we showed it in the content, but we actually got flooded out midday. There was a flash flood right around lunchtime. There was rivers everywhere. You couldn't get in or out of the track. But overall, it's a really fun day and getting to see that car rip around Grange was rad. Check it out. This car behind me, this car is rear wheel drive. This is our brand new uh, Hoonigan 1978 Mark II Escort that used to be a rally car that I used for several different events. But we've now converted it to race Gymkhana. So it is very purpose built, two years in development, Amazing little toy. October 24th and 25th, Monster Energy is putting on Gymkhana Grid at Santa Pod in England. But unfortunately, I have a date with the All Wheel Drive Unicorn for that event. So we're bringing in fellow Hoonigan, Rear Wheel Drive Ringer, and top Formula D competitor, Mr. Ryan Turk. <laughs> so, uh, you ready to get started? I am ready. All right, let me get the door for you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, <laughs> my 
I'm just glad he didn't hit me. Homage. Bit of an homage. Oh my gosh. I think his fender came off. Put down 1240. Wow. Oh my gosh. What the? All right, we're back for another episode of Hoonicorn vs. the World, where we drag race this 1400 horsepower twin turbo Hoonicorn with this. Mr. Ken Block. It's been fun. I've been driving straight and winning because apparently the unicorn's faster than we thought it would be. When we first set out to do this, we had no idea how fast this is. So here's what we know. It's faster than a McLaren Senna. <laughs> faster than the world's fastest RS3. <laughs> the world's fastest Don. <laughs> the world's fastest diesel up Pikes Peak. <laughs> and it's also faster than a trophy truck. <laughs> Which makes all this kind of seem like video game matchups. Well, that's where it all came from because we saw kids racing the unicorn when it first came into the Forza game against all sorts of different things. Which is what inspired this whole idea. The idea of taking the unicorn and racing it against the weirdest collection of cars we could. All right, ready to race? How pumped are you? This much pumped. Fully pumped? Four times pumped. This is like a pretty special race. This car was built off of parts of the Hoonicorn. An homage? Bit of an homage. Anyway, Rob Dom and his four rotor. Before we even get into this. Can we yes. tell Rob's backstory of coming to this versus that? <laughs> yeah. the, Rob has been invited to this versus that three, three times, times now, and this is the first time he's shown up. We had no expectation of him being here. We still have no expectation of the vehicle actually making it to the runway. We don't know. We don't know what'll happen. But this whole journey for you started, what, five years ago? Five or six years ago. And uh, it was when my brother beat me in a race. I had way more horsepower, but he had the R35 GTR, and I was sitting there all bummed out. And then Jim Connor 7 came on. That and you were like, I want to build a Hoonicorn. I saw that car. It was when Ken went through the LA River and bounced. And I was like, that suspension, that is beautiful. Wait, of all things, the Jim Connor 7. It was just, <laughs> the water just, drop. The suspension, the guy you when, when, when you When you, it picked up and it kind of did kind of like a backwards sort of thing. There was that little piece of wood or something that you had. <laughs> That moment, I was like, okay, that suspension articulated. That was beautiful. Oh, all right. <laughs> so you then all right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like in a we like a, we just referred to this as like a it has a semi homage to the Hoonicorn. That's right. And now you are here five years later. You have not actually driven this car at anger. No. Right. Like you made one <laughs> slow test pass just to make sure that everything was nut and bolted together. You did first run of the car at Burnyard. Actually, that was Burnyard that was also the first Burnyard we had Hoonicorn at. So. It was so epic. Yeah, that, that that was the first time I let go of that clutch at full boost. Well, you know, two-stepping it and then yeah. just seeing what happened. Let's talk about 
about what it is. Let's talk like, about what it is. Where it was an RX-7. The only part that is still FD RX-7 are the door sills. And I'm gonna keep them. They're the stock car that I had when I was 19. And the Athene markers. Yeah, yeah, technically, oh. yeah, the, the markers. Everything else is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I want people to look at it and say that's an RX-7, but it's not. And it's six and a half inches stretched wow. to accommodate the all-wheel drive system. But you could really tell when you look at it from this angle, <laughs> like behind the front wheel, Yeah, that's like, it almost looks like a Corvette. The suspension is pound for pound the same suspension geometry as the Hunicorn. And then, Out the hood, let's look. Yeah, let's, yeah. It visually looks the same. Got I mean, the, Ken, come here and look. Tell me this doesn't look familiar. This it's is a crazy setup. Inboard, <laughs> just like ours. Same style control arm. And you know what makes me uncomfortable to say this to you guys, but I actually called up some of the vendors pretending I work for Hoonigan. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I respect it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I respect and that. By the way, no one else do that. Yeah, don't do that. I must break you. So, you know, the, the suspension geometry from the front of the car is the same, but then I took liberties on the way the suspension you know, articulates with the shock ratios. The drivetrain is completely different. So, of course. So we, yeah. di we diverge completely. Not just the rotary, but even the way I solved the all-wheel right, drive. Right, so, so what are wait, you? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. He solved the all-wheel drive? <laughs> I, I there was, was forced... something wrong with <laughs> yeah. the all-wheel drive? Yeah, the price tag, <laughs> yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the all-wheel drive system? The all-wheel drive system is actually out of an R32 GTR. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of guys out in you know, Australia launching the mm -hmm. crap out of those cars. And I figured, okay, that's that seems like a good thing. <laughs> so before we even get into it, like, just give us a quick overview. Like, what what is this? So this is uh, a four rotor. You know, so it's a rotary engine, and of course, the only ones that were made by Mazda aren't even like this. They sound very similar. And I turbocharged it. It can pretty much eat that's an to be iPhone Max. Bill. Yeah. Uh, what this what type of like horsepower <laughs> is it making right now? Uh, on my first dyno, uh, going rear wheel drive only though, um, I oh, put down 1240. 1240. 1240. Wow. What boost? Uh, that was 30 PSI. And the only reason we stopped was I promised myself I would stop after I hit 1200. I was shaking, absolutely shaking, because it started turning on the dyno. Like, it was Jeez. pulling up and turning. You have wow. a pretty crazy injector setup. Yeah, what is it? Too, isn't it? It's like pretty <laughs> yeah. massive sets of injectors going through. Yeah, that. so I have 16 injectors, so four injectors per rotor, and I'm firing two at a time, basically. Well, the cool thing, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, is that we can actually look at your drivetrain right because here. There is no floor. <laughs> okay, that door doesn't oh, open as well oh, as sorry, this door. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so I promised I would have a floor of some sorts. Safety 33rd? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when uh, you came to Burnyard, you didn't have a floor at all. I didn't even the floor. You no. can see no. straight through them. You have like this all this crazy custom stuff and you still have the stock steering wheel. <laughs> is the <laughs> airbag still Wait, in there? Still yeah, I made sure that's not connected, but if you use the horn, the horn is my line lock and disconnects all wheel drive. You self taught yourself everything. Honestly, yes. So, so let me ask you a question. <laughs> You're a YouTuber. How much other YouTube do you watch to learn how to do things on YouTube? You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, how many levels so of inception yeah, are you? Yeah. Like, who are you watching on YouTube? Hoonigan. <laughs> oh, God. You're yeah. screwed. Yeah. Dude, yeah. You're, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. That's why I blew both drive shafts. <laughs> so, 3,300 pounds, 1,200 horsepower. Similar size tires. I mean, it sounds it's a on real, paper. It's, it's, it's on paper. It sounds it's like the real unicorn. freaking close. So, have you had much time to look at the unicorn? I mean, we don't need to look at this. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Does Let's he have just... a ruler with them? Because yeah, it's yeah. all yeah. over this thing. Actually, you know what? Yeah. You're not allowed to look at the yeah. unicorn. All of a sudden, he's selling his own unicorns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've I've obviously obsessed over it. Um, and looked at it. Well, from... you've done like crazy stuff, like figuring out our dimensions, right? Like, yeah. What what? Tell tell everyone at home yeah. what so you did. If you look at there's that Speed Hunter article that Vaughn helped write, and in that article there's a picture, there's two pictures of the Hunicorn's CAD, and they're isometric pictures. So I actually went and took a screenshot I of the picture. I don't remember this oh, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Wait, uh, we put out CAD drawings? Yeah, yeah. It was just it was a really small picture. <laughs> really no, small Vaughn picture. Did. Yeah. It's all Vaughn's fault. And so I, I actually zoomed in and said, okay, this is five pixels wide. That, and I know that that's this long on the car, you know, the tire is an 18 inch tire. So I actually said, okay, that's X number of pixels. And then I measured everything else on the, the picture by number of pixels. Said, okay, <laughs> wow. that's roughly this. Yo, you know the internet what? joke when you're like, it's Photoshopped, I know, cause I counted the pixels. Yeah. This man actually <laughs> counted the pixels. Yeah. Well, so come over and look, you should recognize the front suspension cause I've the never inboard, inboard canty looks very similar to yours. Control arms look very similar. Mm -hmm. They're just a different color, that's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a different anodized. And then instead of a four rotor, we've got V8, 410, Roush Yates motor, which is like obviously their version of, this is based on the Windsor, right? Yeah, most of oh, wow. based on the Windsor. Yeah, so it's like old school tech, but new school tech added to it. Uh, revs to 8,600. I'm sure yours revs to like 
10? Yeah, uh, 98. 98, okay. Yeah. Where's Beep Boop? We gotta get him out of here. <laughs> Raise the rev limiter, we're going. And then obviously this is methanol fed, so no intercooler, only cools via the fueling. Okay. Um, yeah. And we're both Garrett. We both have Garrett turbos. Your yeah, yeah. Two Single. of mine might equal one of yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sadev <laughs> Trans. So you know that setup. SC, is... SC90. Yeah, yeah. So. You know. Wait, you know the model number of this? <laughs> yeah. He tried, he, tried yeah. To, he doesn't even know the model number. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to buy it off of Sadev and they told him no. Yeah. That's the best part. Yeah. So look, so l let's set the the real groundwork yes. right now. You've never driven that. We might have lost a cylinder earlier today. Perfect. We're going to see how that works out. We normally yeah. start this. First run is always from a dig. Yeah. Right? But you're afraid of going from a dig because you think you might break your car on the first yeah, run. Yeah, I'm a little uh, drivetrain snappy shy. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. No, I get yeah. that. I, I've uh, seen that. Yeah. that footage. <laughs> Do you wear a jock strap when you drive that thing? <laughs> Just, <laughs> like a metal, like an Iron Maiden. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to actually race these things, finally. It's been a long time coming. You ready, Rob? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hunacorn versus Hunacon. I hope I don't get fired for this. I gotta respect my JDM roots. I'm going Rob Dom. This whole episode's been all about math, and uh, the math says Hunacorn. Lighter, a little bit more power, a little bit more cam block. I told you I'd never oh, bet against Hunacorn, but if I was going to, it would be something like this. I'm just scared for Rob. You know what? I just hope that both teams have fun. Team fun? <laughs> Team fun. Dude, I don't know. If you're gonna, if it would be a betting man, I would definitely go with Ken and Hunicorn. By speed or just living after the end of the race? I gotta give it to the corn. Ken and the corn. This would be one of those things where it would be a complete freak accident and that thing could win because it's got all the power. Yeah. On paper, it says it could win, but it's also their first run. But this thing's also down on power today, so who knows? But I mean, my vote would be Hunicorn. Mercy for Rob Dom's drivetrain. We're gonna start with a rolling hit. I know it's a break from the norm here, but we're gonna let him go from a roll and we're gonna go all the way to the second flag. And then after that, we go to a hit. It's gonna be loud. It's gonna be a loud it's one. It's gonna be a loud what? one. What? Oh yeah. What? What? Wait. Hurt today. Oh my God. Tribute. The car looks like it ran good though. It did the Not thing. Not bad for its first run. Yeah. What goes on yeah. here? Oh my God. Ah! Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you blew the welds off your hood? Wow. <laughs> Windshield didn't break. Hey, Rob. Please tell me that you welded that really early in your welding experience. <laughs> oh shit, you blew the back window out. Holy. Wow. Go Baker, go home, I guess. I'm going again. Hey, let's yeah, sweep the glass. Yeah. yeah, let's sweep the glass. You don't need hood. Yeah. Who needs yeah, mint? Yeah, if we get uh, I saw him coming oh. down the track back at me with it up like that. I was like, oh, that's a rally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a 
good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yo, on the last run, it's just gonna look like shark cart. <laughs> oh my god, look at that. <laughs> wow. Not bad, dude. Dude. Three, three cars. Not bad for your second run ever in this car. <laughs> this thing's fast. This thing rips. Oh. Yeah, How stoked are you? That was epic. I only have it at 20% wastegate duty too. I think the first person to lose a race by three cars, they'd be really excited and you deserve it. Oh my god, yeah. That was that was amazing. I'm happy for you, bro. Uh, this is rad. I'm gonna turn it up. Wait, is your laptop just like in the car running? Scott up, Scott up. I'm gonna point something out, but homeboy right here had that had saw that in his pocket. He knew. Okay, so here's the deal. Rob has lost his hood, his rear windshield, uh, part of a quarter panel, but. But he's getting good. faster. He's getting faster. So this race, they're gonna run from the dig to see what it do. Ken's, like the Hunicorn's motor. I think he got him, yeah. I think he got him. I told <laughs> Ken, I was like, I don't know if you want to give him the hit, but Ken gave him the hit. Yeah, yeah. That's he say, was that's taking so long to get into the sequence that Ken looked over and then he left and then Ken was like, uh, went back. Run it back, run it back, run it back. Run it back. So now let's just go straight up. Told you you shouldn't have given him the hit. <laughs> I didn't know if he was going or not going. And How'd that feel? Oh my f***ing god. <laughs> so you got him by a half. That jumped. Keep that... your helmet on. Okay. Let's go, before we lose all light, let's just go straight up now. Because he let you get the hit that time. Let's just do a straight up race. All right? Okay. It's fast. That's so what that's was fast. driving angry. What right was that? There. Super fast. What was that machine gun fire from Ken there? I, I, I think that might that. be the end of that motor. I think that that's was the end that of Ken's was. Motor. There was some serious flames off the top. Hold on. Yeah, that's full sauce. That was <laughs> pretty juicy right now. Did he get a good launch? What? Did he get a good launch? No. No. 
Oh. But it was sick. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> awesome. Ah, the pops are real. This thing looks yeah. like a Your scoots, pops, man. If I'm going to lose, that's how I want to do it. That was how to do it. You might have biffed the launch a little bit, but yeah. once it started but, going. But now you had a straight up run. So, yeah. And honestly, a lot of that's just like you getting used to the car and getting yeah. used to the launch. How stoked I, are you, dude? dude? I came here and. I'm, yeah, I'm stoked yeah, for you. That was so much. <laughs> yeah, man, that was awesome. So here's the question Will it do donuts? <laughs> I, mean, I, I turned around in the dirt. I'm like, I'm, I'm miniature Ken Block. I gunned it in the dirt and turned sideways. Like, yeah. That was a big flop. That thing is terrifying. Commit! He's like, I'm good. I'll need more space to try it again. <laughs> ah, whatever. It's fine. something. I just want you to read something real quick, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. All right, can you read what, uh, what's read written? Read the top there? comment from the first Unicorn vs. the World. Okay. Um, me. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what it's like to line up next to the Unicorn. How wild. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. Still, how wild. <laughs> What's up? If you're just tuning in, you missed the big announcement earlier today. It is that Ken Block's Gymkhana Grid Race Series is coming to America this fall. That's right. Tickets will be on sale soon, so go check the link below in the description to hold your spot. Not only that, if you want to compete, same link will get you all the info of how to enter, what classes there are going to be, what kind of car you might want to build. That link alone, that'll get you all the info as it comes out. Whether you're a pro or you want to come race us jabronis, see if you're faster than us. Jabroni class. Jabroni class. <laughs> you can't even order a normal size coffee through a drive-thru. You can't just sandbag it. Oh my, <laughs> that would've gone so fast! Welcome to Unicorn vs. the World. This is a this versus that special. What are we doing today, Ken? Apparently drag racing. <laughs> There's a <laughs> lot of confidence there. <laughs> Something I've never done before. You ready to watch Ken get his ass kicked today? I don't think he is, man. <laughs> I, I think that thing is going to surprise a lot of cars. So we're here today. We're going to be racing a bunch of different stuff. We're going to be racing supercar, <laughs> drag race cars, <laughs> trophy trucks, <laughs> and even the world's fastest donk. <laughs> All right, so how do we get here? The whole concept of this is based around Forza. So when the Hunicorn made its way into Forza, it was one of the fastest vehicles. So we noticed that a lot of the players were actually taking the Hunicorn and drag racing it against other vehicles. And that's the right thing about Forza. You could put this thing versus a supercar, you know, a truck, or a little three-wheeled thing that looks like an egg. I actually worked pretty hard with the studio that makes Forza to really make this thing feel as manic as it does in real life. I actually sat there in the studio and was like, no, 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 it feels more violent. It feels faster than what it feels like in their test units. So they actually made it faster, made it feel really much more realistic to how it feels. All right, so Ken, you're here to drive a Hunicorn in a straight line. What are some other things you've done with a <laughs> It originally started with Gymkhana 7. <laughs> After that, it actually went to London. We did a Top Gear episode. And after that is when we put the twin turbos on and we did Climb Kana in Pikes Peak. But it's never drag raced and neither have I. It's no. not a drag race car, but it's all wheel drive. It makes 1400 horsepower. <laughs> has super sticky tires on and a sequential gearbox so is it what are you trying to say it's a drag race car <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of drag racers who will argue on that but I, I get where you're coming from all right so less talking let's start racing
All right, yeah. what are we doing today? Today, we're here to match up ridiculous built machine from America, and then uh, probably one of the gnarliest hypercars to come out from England in the last 10 years. And named after the greatest race car driver of all time. I mean, not just one of the greatest like hypercar builders, but race car teams yeah, no, in I know. history. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, name name a better one. Uh, Hoonigan Racing. There you go. <laughs> Boom. So that's what we're here today to see. I don't even I like know what to talk way. about besides look at this paint. I was going to say, I'm sorry, on, the paint, sun. on paint alone, this is sorcery Holy going on moly. here. Look at that. Now, I just I just got to say, like, personally, I would like a little bit chunkier metal flake in there. You know, maybe something along the lines of bass boat. Now, that is a nice fish. Yeah, we know <laughs> you yeah. would, <laughs> It looks like it came from, you know, like an alien, like the ship that they're on. Or it's like, you know that they're just like super evil. Ash, can you see this? Yes, I can. I've never seen anything like it. Cars Instead of talking about his bass boat <laughs> flake or the alien ship-like capabilities, I bet Nick could tell us a lot more about the car. What would you guys like to know? <laughs> it's a bass boat. <laughs> no. okay, this is the McLaren Senna 2019, one of 500 made, particularly one of one in the Merlin edition, which is what you have here. And obviously, you guys took notice of the crazy paint. Um, Merlin has actually dubbed from McLaren's paint master. So this is called Sorcerer's Black. Uh, the gentleman in uh, MSO, his name's Darren Townsend. Uh, and his nickname was Merlin because of how crazy he can come up with these paints. And just, just ma it's magic. You can't even order a normal size co coffee through a drive-thru with this. Like, what do you do with this? You don't drink in the car. It's That's savings. because you don't order coffees. They just yeah, Can you even get you. a Big Mac through this? I do not eat McDonald's. That is for poor people. I don't see a cup holder in there. The other challenge is you need good pants flex too, because look at that. That's to show off your kicks. Yeah, you got to show off your kicks and you can't be running some kind of bobo pants on there. There's got to be like a race reason for that, Nick, right? Is that so you can like see the nose of other hypercars trying to pass you? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Hell yeah. Can you hit us with the hard specs of this car? Yeah, so uh, 789 horsepower, uh, 0 to 60, 2.0 to 62, 2.8 seconds, 0 to 124 in 6.8 seconds, top speed 211 miles an hour. But the fun fact that I love is at 150 five miles an hour, this car is producing very close to 1,800 pounds of downforce. I mean, this car. is like the coolest thing ever because it actually like evacuates all of its heat from the radiator, creating downforce in this front. For sure. That's a pass-through. Uh, insane. That, Look at that. Yeah. It's so cool. It's on a production car. And your uh, small speed. child could crawl through there. It yeah. could. Yeah. So are these like flaps that... Do they adjust? Yep. They That's act, what I was just saying. Yeah, in the front as well as the rear. Yeah. So it changes at different speeds and cornering to help push the car down farther. I, I was told that this, this was basically designed in the wind tunnel. That like The whole thing. Yeah, people talk about it doesn't look good because this is what the wind and air like, not not what the eye likes. Look That's at this wing. <laughs> it's, it's sick. You could actually see it. It's bolted to the chassis of the car. And then this is on like... Flexing constantly. Yep, right? it's constantly it, moving. This is the first one of these I've seen in real life, out on the street, not in Forza and not at the Peterson Museum. You guys talk about the fact that this is a cover model? <laughs> <laughs> I did say that the only place I've seen this was in Forza. It was on the cover of Forza, right? Right, right. Well, that's that's the thing. Part of the premise of this Drag Ray series is the fact that it came from Forza. Well, this car was actually on the cover of one of the last Forzas. So that's what I think is actually very cool about this whole thing. It's kind of coming full circle. What does this thing cost? What is, like, <laughs> this is an unbelievable vehicle. Like, so what is this? How, how many of our cars do we have to sell uh, to buy one? Uh, I don't know. And then have, like, a lease, like, you know, you get there's it on commas. Tuesdays yeah. after There's two. commas in yeah. the amount of our cars we Are we combining credit worthiness here? This car particularly uh, is built very high spec through MSO. It's 1.15 million, out. yes. Uh, yeah. You yeah, said this I one's mean, for sale, right? This one is for how sale. Much, how yes. much can we buy this one for? Uh, I'm talking cash right now. Cash here right, right now. now. Man, I think about one point. One five, yeah. I think it's uh, gonna be more like cash in very large duffel bags. Plural. It's in the truck. It's in them. It's in that truck. In. So all this arrow, not done in a wind tunnel. Hold on, all of this arrow done on Photoshop, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it looks really cool. Right. Let's pop the hood. Man, he's got four hood pins to lose. By the way. Yeah, no. It's scary. Yeah, it looks just as good as uh, I always remember. So Brian, you want to tell us what this is? It's a Roush Yates 410. It's a Ford engine built by Roush Yates. It says Ford on the side. I mean, <laughs> that one out. This is basically, it starts as like what a, it's like a dirt oval outlaw motor. Revs to 8600. It's obviously got 
two big old turbos in front of it. Big old Garrett's. No intercooler because it's running on meth, so it doesn't need to because it runs nice and cool. And then it's got a bunch of other crazy packaging stuff, and it makes 1,400 horsepower. 1,400. This yeah. is ludicrous speed fast. Paired with the set of gearbox, banging those gears. And all-wheel drive. And all-wheel drive. And four. 315 wide Toyo R triple yeah, okay. and like, I love and like dash 12 oil lines, which just says race yeah, car. Yeah, I know. Shit. Look at the dry sump just hanging right there. I love that the front diff is in front of the motor, so it's a dual drive shaft type setup, like a R35. This yeah. is this like stock firewall area on a Mustang. Well, right? this so this, this was you, you could see it's moved back quite a bit. That much, yeah. When we built this car. We didn't build it to race in any series. We built it just to make some kind of stuff. So there's actually like a bunch of things in this car that are kind of sketchy that we did because it looks good on camera. So you're saying it's unsafe? I'm saying that it's a camera, it's a picture car. <laughs> it's a really fast picture car. Don't tell car. my wife that. She still hasn't <laughs> seen Clan Con one. So, so Nick, you have any questions about the car? Twin turbo V8, twin turbo V8. I think we're it's good. It's a perfect seems, matchup. Seems equal. <laughs> Street tires. Uh, no, no, no. Partial, it's super, but yeah. I'm gonna tell you what that translates slicks. to. That's a, this might be a cheater tire. The Toyo R888R isn't exactly not a cheater tire. No, I mean, it's no. one of the stickiest tires it's that's a border on the line. It's a borderline street For a tire. DOT tire. Yeah. yeah. How wide are these? Oh, these are 315s. 315 R888Rs, all yeah. around. On all fours. Square. Oh, 315s as well. So, oh, hey. oh he's, got, he's got 10 up on him. Can you do a burnout? It's tough. <laughs> well, you already lost. <laughs> Let's go predictions, boys. Uh, the McLaren all day for a car show. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not trying to, that's, I can't. It, the Hoonicorn, me, I, I got Hoonicorn. Shit, I don't know, man. I, it's, the Hoonicorn is so fast. Want a prediction? Yeah. Hoonicorn. No, they want to see your pretty face. Said no one ever. Hoonicorn all day, but that Macca is just something, something special. I'm not being the Hoonicorn. I told you guys. How many times I gotta tell you? Just mopping them up. Mopping them up. This is Forza in real life right there. Yeah. This is literally Forza in real life. We all win on this one, honestly. Yeah, it's yeah. true. John, you're so wholesome. We all win. is it didn't take him on the launch. No, like the launch exactly. for the Senna was strong. You said you built it purpose built for Jim Connor, but I really think you built a drag car. That's Apparently we <laughs> built a drag car and we just didn't know. Now think about when you watch Jim Connor 7, Jim Connor 10 and Climb Connor, how fast that car was. Yeah, going. that's a really good point. Like I don't think people realize how fast Ken is attacking those corners yeah. in that car. I feel like we're in a real life Forza lobby right now. Dude, I'm not I've only seen that, that car in the game. Yeah. So seeing one in real life and it's ripping? Against that. that? That's a video game in real life. Yeah. It's bananas. All right, so same heads up race, except this time Ken's gonna give him the hit, let him leave first, and we'll see if Ken can reel him in. Which I think we I think he will. <laughs> Round two. Up, it just goes. Ken bogged the launch and still. That thing's a missile, man. 
it's it's faster than it looks. It's tough. How? I gotta ask, because this thing sounds really good, right? Yep. But when the apocalypse is passing you, it's gotta sound insane. The pops in that are coming from that are yeah. just unbelievable. What are we doing? We're gonna give them like, should I give them two cars? Two cars, I beat them by six, but you only only No, nah, you two? beat them by three on that one. Okay, three cars. Three cars? Okay, three cars. Three, three cars, cars and go on his jump. All right, yeah, we're you wanna take three cars? Three cars? Is yeah. that what I think, is that what he was leading me on? That's what we're thinking. Three cars. I think three cars. Let's do three. Let's do it. Turn around, we'll go run it real quick. That was Ken being generous. We, yeah, we, we were, were saying gonna, two. we were offering two and Ken was like, give them three. <laughs> He comes up. It keeps getting faster. Ken is sandbagging. He was sandbagging all day. How's it feel to be beat by a Ford? <laughs> <laughs> it was that 1,800 pounds. Ooh, I think my reaction yeah. time was slow because all the meth that was coming in through the window, yeah, I was choking that up. Oh, that's yeah, that's, that's what it is. Thanks for the run. Thank man. you. That was fun. Thanks. There's never been a better time to play Forza Horizon 4 right now. It's been optimized for Xbox Series X and Series S, which means higher resolution, greater frame rate, faster load times, more fun. So maybe I'll see you online. I'll be cruising around Tri-Fi by Fire. Have fun. Play games. He's got 1,500 hours left. That turbo comes from a garbage truck. <laughs> we always raise some money. All right, here we are, Hunicorn versus the world, a special segment of this versus that. What, what do we got going on today? Uh, Hunicorn, 1400 horsepower, two turbos, sticky tires, sequential gearbox. I win. It's very simple. <laughs> so you can say I'm gonna win everything? I, th I think you're gonna just mop it up. Right, he's got so. a lot of faith in my vehicle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think he's crazy. just buttering you up, hoping he gets to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how did we get here? Uh, well, this actually originally came from Forza. When Forza put this car in the game, we found that a lot of kids were taking this car because it was so fast and drag racing it versus other cars in the game. I actually worked pretty hard with the studio that makes Forza to really make this thing feel as manic as it does in real life. I actually sat there in the studio and was like, no, 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 it feels more violent. It feels faster than what it feels like. So they, they actually made it faster, made it feel really much more realistic to how it feels. And in the game, obviously you can pick everything from a trophy truck to like a little three wheel car that looks like a bubble. So it was funny seeing the players put it up against all these different things. We decided to try and take that from the game and put it into real life and see what actually happens. All right, so that's it. This is Unicorn vs. The World.
All right, so today's race is probably the one I'm most excited about. I think we all are, yeah. honestly. Yeah. So we all went up to Sacramento, watched Donk Master. <laughs> and we convinced him to come out and race Ken. So that's our race today. Unicorn versus Donk Masters. Z06 Donk. All right, so you guys ready for this? Is this is a real drag car. Oh, you get two right. nerves in it. <laughs> 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 nah, he got, he got 3,000 pounds with, you know what I mean, at least 1,000, 1,200 horsepower, at least, right? 1,400. See, it's 1,400 horsepower. <laughs> so I'm 5,000 pounds at 1,500. He 3,000 at 1,400. I think he's got 1,500 horsepower. Right? Oh, yeah, you got a fly. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they ain't a, never see real power. Show nah, real I'm gonna show him a little something. I'm gonna show him where, where a turbo come from, where NASA born turbo. Oh, oh, oh. That huh? turbo comes from a garbage truck. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Wow. What what kind of rear end do you got? What kind of suspension All right, so do you got? This is a 71 Impala. It's custom made Mosin 9 inch rear end. It got custom titanium 40 spline axles in it. Suspension. I can't tell you all that. <laughs> Yo, by the way, this is just a photo. Yeah. You gotta <laughs> see it. Underneath this is a different motor. You, you no one stuck their hand in yet. See? It's an illusion. It's my illusion. When do you hit full boost? When I look at my shoulder, see how far I'm in front of him. <laughs> All right, then keep your secrets. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you one thing. 1500 horsepower means 17. You just add 200 to whatever drag racer says. Is it weird not racing for money? We always race for money, yeah. man. We this know we want to side bets right now. Yeah, we want to win in the bag over there and Yo, talk to come side bet going. I'm down for yeah. a side bet. You got to lose something. It can't. The pride got to hurt. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So what are you willing to lose, Ken? What are you willing, so, willing yeah, to do? Yeah, yeah, we got to hit. We got to out the in our custom hat. The All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. I know it doesn't make you faster, but the Corvette interior is just next level. That's 2017 Corvette interior. I mean, that fits nice. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 sure you're looking at it. That's just for extra. That's What's just that some, that's guaranteed to make me win. <laughs> oh. That's the button I need to hit. See, Kim was over the top of the button he was looking for. I got one just uh, like that too. <laughs> regular 71 yeah. Impala. That's all. A regular a 71 <laughs> Impala with a parachute on. Yeah, let's like not that. let's not walk away from that. You, you, know, you know a man's got style when his parachute is leather. And, yeah, it, says, got a and it says gap sauce. So you know what happens when you get popped. They got on a that. So you don't got no sauce, then you get lost. So we can you know what I mean we can talk about you got a triple weave custom TR grill on it. It's uh FTI transmission, 3V motor in it. I run a Holly computer, nitrous outlet, nitrous system on it. How much boost did you say again? Uh, it makes enough boost to <laughs> gap somebody. That's what it does. I want to see if I can hook up. He all-wheel drive, you know what I mean? He lighter. I make a little bit more power, but I'm a little bit heavier, though. You sound a little unsure about yourself. Nah, right? I got horsepower. <laughs> I know how to drive, so I'm going to see what's going on. Show them the Hoonicorn so they can see what they're up against. She makes, like, so she makes like 300 horsepower. <laughs> on this side, on, yeah. side, on the two front cylinders, or the two, <laughs> two party whistles. They oh, make yeah. nice noises. They got no intercool, no radiator, nothing. Methanol. Damn. Man, so how many shocks Skip, you got? You want to give us the rundown on the motor? Uh huh. 14 cubic inches. 16 injectors, so run on methanol. Yeah, run on methanol. It's like 3,200 cc. Yeah. A cylinder or something. How many RPM turns there? About 8,600. 8,600. Yeah. So we be screaming through there by the same kind of way. So what is the shift? What is the other thing? That's the brake. Handbrake, oh, just for the rear wheels, oh, so it can slide. I like Tell them what the red button does. I see that. You got a couple of them in there, three or four. <laughs> you got so many. Why you got so many red buttons there, kid? You got so many. I don't know what he got. I know he when he gets to the line, he. <laughs> I see five shooting on top of. It. Yeah, so here's a question. So are we gonna start? With the R triple eight R on this one, oh. yeah, he's running street tires. Yeah, I mean, street, street tires, tires. Street tires. I mean, technically, that's the only option of tire he has. For yeah, this, yeah. So. That's why the R triple eight R is a perfect matchup. What do you want to run to? Uh, what, thousand what, feet. Guest choice. Uh, thousand, thousand feet. Thousand feet. Yeah, I'm gonna try a thousand feet. Since I got to shake the weight, let me shake the weight. So a thousand feet. That's cool with you? Yeah. Right, I shake the weight. Thousand feet. Oh. Straight up dig. Yeah. All right, yeah. Let's yeah. do it. It is gonna win. Don't let Ken hear, but I'm gonna go with the dunk. Like, I got nothing but respect for Donk Master. That thing is fast as shit. I've seen all the videos, but it's uh, Kenley on just mop it up. He's gonna mop it up. Where you at? Put my money on Ken. <laughs> Ken's gonna leave. This might reel him back. Stop it. Stop it. I'm scared. I don't know. It's just intrigued. But I will say, we, if we leave first, yeah, I'm out with this. Cut the, cut, cut the cameras off. <laughs> I respect, I respect you and your car, but you ain't leaving first. 
Yeah, we leave first. Yeah, leave first. We leave first. Yeah, leave first. You sure? You want to get a bet on leaving first? Let's get a bet going just on leaving first. Just have shoe socks. Yo, he'll take your socks from you. That should embarrass him. Win. I mean, one they want a hat. Oh, the shirt. Had a shirt. No, I like this hat. No, 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 give it up. That's my hat. I'm not betting my hat. Listen, I'm not betting my hat. Longer than a few minutes later. Yo, he got the hit. He yeah, got, but I think he came out of he, it. Oh no, no, no! He jumped the fuck out of the line. How many pounds of boost was that? Oh, uh, enough to spend the time. <laughs> <laughs> this man unflappable. You Unless can do the burnout in the hole if you want to leave some yeah. rubber, and then have your boys back you back in your yeah, line. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do though. Hey, you jumped too. I left first. Let's try. <laughs> Changing the race. Yo, I no, feel like the hoodie keeps getting faster. Yeah, every <laughs> run, it just gets uh, 10% more you. sauce. I, I told you guys. See? No. All right, what do you want? Huh? What do you want? I need to cool down a little bit. You need to cool down? A little time to ready to get hot a little bit. Nah, you, I just you ain't got no prep. Anything? Yeah, yeah we got to no figure prep. something out. I really, if I had some prep, it wouldn't be no problem. Hey, you see how smoking the tires? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, we're way down the track. We already oh, discussed. We want to see a rematch on an actual track. Oh, yeah, on a real it'll track. It'll be interesting to see that. Yeah, see that. But like, you know what I mean? If you give me a couple cars, we can try it. But All right. I ain't got no traction. You know what I mean? But, we're down for a couple cars in the hit. We could do that. So here's where we negotiated two cars <laughs> in the hit. Every time. That's just so good. It's weird because part of me, when I hear it, it sounds like a crazy LS. And then yeah. the other part of me thinks that the garbage man's here. Like it has that ridiculous yeah. whine. Yeah. Industrial. Yeah, very industrial. Bonus round. Where do you think he's going to run him down? You think he'll run him down here? <laughs> By the second. I'm telling you, it's the get faster tune. What happened? Woo! They, he gave him the full beans. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, you won again. We think that you just keep turning up the power because <laughs> it literally seems faster every time, which makes me think that while you might not be a drag racer, Skippy is. <laughs> Skippy's in the background with the switch. I just, I can feel the genuine disappointment uh -huh. coming from you because you can't hook up. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't hook it. up. I can't hook up. I know. What I wanted to see that thing, man. I, oh, yeah. The one time I was there and you took off and went and I could see you at yeah. the night just went, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Whoa. <laughs> 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 cringing from my seat. Oh yeah, like, it'd be spinning. Yeah. No, it's impressive. I wish oh, I could see it actually connect. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we try it again on track when you be uh, done with I that. Think, I think it would explode if I had tracked <laughs> <laughs> See, Sage? Sage uh, takes a loss like a winner. Yeah. Oh, he was still shit-talking yeah. when after he lost. It's amazing. Yeah. This, this is, is experience. <laughs> you know what I mean? I lost, I just learned something. I learned how to f***ing block with all <laughs> There's never been a better time to play Forza Horizon 4 right now. It has been optimized for Xbox Series X and Series S, which means higher resolution, greater frame rate, faster load times, more fun. So maybe I'll see you online. I'll be cruising around Tri-Fi by Fire. Have fun. Play games. <laughs>
sponsors, some stripes, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The, the well, hatch... technically, actually, his first non-monster car was the snow livery. Right, okay. Right, and then he had, like, a more traditional livery with the monster claw and a lot of black, right. and that's what everyone knows is the Jim Connor 1 car, which wasn't really livery, it was, like, color blocking. Right. Then Jim 2 was the DC Shoes sort of blend graphic, where it was the DC Shoes script that went from that the white, white to black. Yeah. But from in my opinion, the first real, like, other than snow camels, let's say the second real livery, like real like thought through livery, was Drips, yes. which was released yeah. on the Fiesta. And that was the first one to get like a real livery launch video. That was like the concept of that. It was like, hey, we're gonna make something special to show off the livery and also the schedule. Mm -hmm. Right, it was like, what are we doing this year? What's the car look like? What are the specs? And what are we gonna go do? And I remember we did that first video, and it crushed. It did, it did like a it million nuts. views. And yeah, we were like we did not expect it to do that, that was, well. That was the Q-tip video, right? Was that Q-tip? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 It's, it's funny because you bring up the music part. Like we made them to be like music videos. Yeah. Like, that was the concept. It was like if a music video was going to, you know, be a car reveal video, what would it look like? An unfortunate side effect of that was doing a video with the cool kids as a Jim Connor video, <laughs> but we'll get to that later. So this was always a big thing. It was like, let's reveal, let's put it all together. And we worked with a bunch of different people on it. Um, they were always fun. I definitely think in the latter years, we slowed down the amount of effort we put into them. Probably because there, I think at a certain point, YouTube had really went from this space of like music videos and like content like Junkana to more like vlog type stuff. Yeah. So you start looking later on and like when we're launching things like the Hoonicorn, they're actually like a part of a daily transmission episode because that's just what was working. And for a while, everybody was trying to do viral. Remember right. the viral area, yeah. like pre-vlog, it was full like, what's the most viral thing we could do? Yep. And livery launches weren't necessarily that. The biggest one I think we ever did was 2012. It was two cars, it was Nick Swartzen, it was brand new designs, it was some crazy stuff. We had black and white, I mean, um, we had glow in the dark stuff going in there. And then yeah, as Brian said later on, you know, it didn't become as much of a video thing, but we still released a ton of photos. Still had fun with them later on. The Galaxy one was a good time. Mm -hmm. They all blend together for me. Yeah, the the Galaxy one was an interesting one because we originally wanted to film that out in southern Utah, out in the desert, at night, and do long, crazy time lapses of like the stars and the galaxy and doing all that. It worked great, except for one thing. Uh, it got really cold overnight, and then the day was really hot, so the entire car frosted over. So we're out there, full crew, full everybody, ready to go, all the budget spent. Comes time to turn the cameras on, whole thing's frosted over, completely. <laughs> we got heaters going on, we got people wiping down, it didn't matter, it didn't matter. So what we did with that one was we did just like a graphical kind of stop motion-y, crazy, I, that was still a cool video to me, it was a lot of effort. Not necessarily what the original concept was. But we always had fun with these videos. And I really enjoyed putting them together. I'll tell you, you're definitely looking at all of this through rosy glasses. Because nine times out of ten, we were doing this in the middle of the night. Because the car was due to like leave to go to a race the next day. There was never ample time. It was always a nightmare. This I think is, the end this is product... YouTube. They don't want to know I how think grueling the end it product, was. I think the end product was what made them great because they were fun when they came out, but they were they were always a lot. I just remember sitting in studios for 16, 17 hours because we would do the stills and the video at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't work in this industry, stills people and motion people hate each other. Like, they're just like, they just fight about everything. Like, oh, that lighting, this lighting. Eventually, we got it to work together, but yeah. It was not easy. No. It was definitely not easy. No. Um, and then you guys have shot a lot of them without me in M Sport. I did a couple in M Sport, but you guys went and did some did some shoots in M Sport. And I think that, like, that became the thing was in the early days, we had the time and that, you know, to do full studio shoots. And then they yeah. started to be, oh, we got access to the car overnight in M Sport for, you know, nine hours. You have to be out of here by the time the morning comes and the crew shows up and starts working on cars. It was a lot to get along. And let me stuff. tell you a little something about what the fine people at M Sport, bless them, what they thought when we came in, yeah. we're like, we want to shoot our pictures and our videos in the same place that you built race cars for Colin McRae 
and all these other Merritt Bradley legends. We were just showing up with our, our flat bills and our crazy colorful shoes and high tops and everything, and we got it done. And then at the end of it, they would see. It was also a different era in motorsports things. I think they didn't really understand why we were putting this much effort in. Like, they were used to, like, well, just go to the first event and just take a photo of the car, like, parked in front of, you know, the, you know, a flag or, like, you know, with someone, you know, in front of whatever. Like, they, they never really put thought into this. And, you know, I think you see now, now it's kind of standard to do, like, a big livery reveal. And a lot of that's, I think, stuff that, you know, was created because of how Ken saw it all. So, um... I don't want to get into the same debate we just got through on the Gymkhana films. Oh, like which so ones we won't the best rank one? them. But like, <laughs> but like, would you name your favorites? Like, do you think you got a top three list? Oh yeah. Oh for sure. Um, mine's very biased because one of my first directing jobs was directing the Gymkhana Eight livery. Oh yeah, that one sucked. Video shoot. I'm actually joking. That's one of my favorite ones. Oh really? Yeah, top three for me. Oh hell yeah. That was a that was a crazy one. We actually shot it three blocks down from here in a place that used to be called uh, Thunder Studios. No, South Bay. It was called South, South Bay before at Thunder Studios now. And we had the reflective livery. We got this crazy lighting setup, like like EDM DJ lighting setup, because that livery would reflect whatever colors that you were beaming onto it. It would beam that color back. So we decided we're like, okay, let's show that off. Let's get all these crazy like lights on, lights off reflecting everything, show the car off. I, I was I was pretty hyped on how that came out. I think what made that one great was like the car, because the car did something, it was active because right. of the reflection. Right. Where before, you were always dealing with it. I will tell you, I think one of my least favorite to make, it was also like a weird kind of break for us because we never really put girls and mm. stuff, was when we did the one with the three girls in the Taurus B. Oh, um, man. Yep. It wasn't really on brand for us, and but I think it was just like we wanted to do it because it was like Monster. Monster wanted to have the Monster Girls in it. Of course, yeah. And we shot in a indoor um, cross-country cross country skiing yeah. facility. It was like built into a tunnel, and it was one of the coldest places on earth because it was like they were pumping in air conditioning to keep it cold or like on that level. It was a but it was also tunnel in Sweden in the winter. But it was also like moist, so it was they it was cold and wet. I just remember yeah. it being wet the whole time we were there, and those poor girls were wearing like barely anything. It was freezing. There were three of them. One was from France, one from the UK, and one from Finland. And the one from Finland never put a jacket on. <laughs> she was just chilling. The one from France, look, I get it. They they're wearing mm -hmm. essentially nothing and no shoes, whatever. She was having a breakdown. The one from the UK was very UK, which was just like, ah, uh, this sucks, but whatever. And then the one from Finland, she was just like, yeah, she was so chill. What's for lunch? Anyway, that was a brutal one. What song was that? Do you remember? Oh, man, that was, oh, Noriaro just hit me up about this one the other day. Was it, because was, it was Rusko. Mm -hmm. It was the dubstep era. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> I'll never forget, I don't know how that song came up. But Ken was sitting there at the table with me over Thai food and being like, you know, we, we have the song playing and he looks over and he goes, is this what you listen to when you drive in your Subaru? <laughs> and I was like, I've never been dissed so hard by one question. That was just my whole being by an at assumption. that time. Yeah, just that assumption. Uh, oh man, I forgot about dubstep. Yeah. So did a lot of other so people. everybody else. Yeah. Um, I think uh, another one... The q tip one definitely hit really hard. What were some of the other songs we used? I'm trying to remember. What did we... Did we use a... Nick Swartzen was like an interview. I don't think we... No, used... that was two. Remember? We we did oh. we did two videos for, right. for 2012. Oh. Directed by Steve Barra. I just did the one with, with Steve you. Barra. Yeah. And that one was crazy. And we used that song from Sleigh Bells. Oh my and god. And I liked that song yeah. on the first 37 times I heard it. And you liked Sleigh Bells until that Until video. that video. I've never listened to Sleigh Bells no. ever no, again. No, can't. Yeah. Because of that. But that was crazy doing that one with Steve Barra. Barra as in the barracks. Steve Barra as the Barra part of the barracks. And uh, that was rad because he had such a different view on all of it. Because he was coming in from skating and making like all different types of stuff. And I think, remember he came in, he shot the whole thing with GoPros with modified lenses. So he was pulling like CCTV that style yes, yeah. like 
little lenses and like adapting them to GoPros and like doing all this weird shit at that era to like give it a different look and it was all like tilt shift mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. That was a cool video, but man, it took a lot to put that together. Absolutely brutal one. You know, I've actually been speaking to Barry a lot in the past three weeks. I haven't spoken to him in hmm. forever, but he's been he's been staying in touch recently, just kind of seeing how everything's going. They bought back the barracks. Insider info. There yeah. you go. Yeah. I mean, it's insider because I follow them on on uh, Instagram. But yeah. should we uh, <laughs> should we tee them up? Hmm? Should we tee them up for what? I mean, the the, the rest of this whole series isn't just you and me eating at a table and doing story time. I mean, what else do you fill 24 hours with? <laughs> so anyway, here you go. All the livery videos that we've done, or at least our semi-favorite In ones. no particular order. Unless That's right. maybe they're chronological. Enjoy. Now, uh, yeah, check it out now. Uh, no doubt, yeah. Special girl, real good girl. Biggest thing in my itty bitty world. Call her up and she made me feel right. Wish the bliss could never take flight. Sitting back with this mic in my hand. Spitting hot shit, trying to see grand. Imprinted on my mind every minute. Make my plans and you always in it, y'all. Uh, it's such a vibrant thing. Vibrant thing, a vibrant thing. And even though we both fly, give each other space and not the evil eye. Acting like grown ups, don't even try to hide cause the spot blown up. Girlfriend telling you she wanna see. I say I don't know, but you say gladly. And when we both do head, we go on and on and on and on and on and. We see you're campaigning the entire Global Rallycross Championship this year. What excites you the most about the change in concentration to Rallycross coming from a mostly stage rally background? Yes. 
Let's try another question. Let's start with the new look of your Fiestas this season. Can you tell us about your inspiration behind the new livery? Yes, I can. I was greatly influenced, as everybody knows, by the Amazon jungle. The vibrancy of the birds everywhere. And spider monkeys in their fun little playful ways. Like all the wheels on all of my cars are named after each individual monkey that I met. Tell us about some of the gear we can expect to see this year. Uh, a lot of a lot of exciting things. I'm very, 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 very proud of. Um, one of them is my cologne, called Ken Chapman. Um, there's also my line of thongs and sailor hats, called Block It Like It's Hot. I want to get into the vegetable business, like everyone does. So I'm starting Blockly, which is my own kind of broccoli. The point I'm trying to sandwich. Thanks, Mark. Outside of X Games. It's Here's been a while since you and Travis Pastrana have gone head-to-head. -head. Are you looking forward to the competition he brings to Global Rallycross? I don't know who that is. Is that the drummer from Blink-182? I love that guy. He's good stuff. Speaking of X Games, do you have any special plans for this year? Yes, I want to rename the games, first of all, uh, to the Malcolm X Games, because I just bought a bow tie factory. This being your third year of racing in the WRC, what are your hopes and goals? Yeah, the thing... <coughs> I'm sorry. Can I get some water? <laughs> That's too much! Ouch! It's a dangerous amount. Sorry, anyway. I want to crash out within the first three stages of every race. Total wipeout. I want to get to the after party because that's my focus this year, after parties. I have 25 lined up every night that I will be DJing with Christian Dub... Step House Trance, Fusion, Jazz, with a magic act. Let's move on to your return to Rally America for two events, specifically 100 Acre Wood. You've raced there five times and won each time. Are you planning on a sixth? <laughs> yes. Yes. You seem pretty confident. What's your secret weapon? Shit! And also, girls. Here I go again on my own. Going down the only road I've ever known. Like a drifter, I was born to walk alone. And I've made up my mind. Fantastic. Outside of competition, you have big plans with five international stops for the Gymkhana World Tour. Can you share any more details on your worldwide tour? Hey, f you, man! What the f That's none of your business, Gymkhana! Damn it! Yeah, Jerry, yeah, I'm at the shoot. Yep, he asked me the question I didn't want to get asked. Cocky little piece of I'm Kenny from the block. Before J Lo. Yeah, I want out of here. Send a he helicopter or a catapult. I want out of here fast. Your fans are obviously very excited about Jim Connor 5. We know it's very hush hush, but can you share anything with us? I'd love to. Yeah, I'll tell you anything. I'll tell you the whole thing. All right, we got it all mapped out. We start flying like. Vomiting like they were underwater. Little donies. And then they just like, don't. You'll also be racing in a few Canadian rallies this year? That's it for me, man. I'm out of here. I'm Ken Block, homie. Just a
said that to me? Are you insane? Oh, no. no tapping. Can't block says no tapping. Can't block.
Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Block's Jim Connor Grid is coming back to the United States this fall. Now, we are not offering tickets just yet, but if you want to be the first to know when tickets are available and actually have a spot in line, you can click the link in the description, go there, fill that out, you'll be the first to know. And you can actually sign up to participate. All that information is in the link below. Click it. So we have two special guests. One is the HHIC and the other you'll meet in just a second. Am I interrupting an important meeting? <laughs> it's always important. Hurts. What's up, Ken? How you doing? Hi, Hurts. How you doing, David? Yeah, come on. What do we got here? What are we working on? Well, the official name though is Desperate Custom. Ken's pet name is Lord Death. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> My yeah. sunny disposition and uh, life, so yeah. I mean, he's a Brit, so everything's yeah. sunny all yeah. the time. Lord right. Death, I like yeah. it, I like Lord it. Death. That, that's, that's fresh. <laughs> only, Ken, only Ken calls me. Oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> uh, my guess is you did this. Yeah, so, so David, uh, we've been working with David for about two years now. So he did our graphics uh, in 2017 that we raced in uh, the World Rallycross Championship. The 3D. The 3D. Yeah, the 3D graphic. Uh, and because of that, we started Gymkhana 10 last year. So we evolved that livery into all the cars for Gymkhana 10. Right. And so that's a two year project. We liked working with David so much that we brought him in to do the livery for 2018 also. So now we're here to launch, do all the photos, do all the video and everything to show off all the new fun stuff I'm doing this year. So basically what you're saying is it's time to flex. Straight flex. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have matching everything? I'm assuming this is what the cars are gonna look like or they already look like. Uh, yeah, so the, the delivery process, coming up with a graphic is always very fun. It's been great working with David and we enjoy creating something that has a story to it, that has much more of a background. And working with guys like David really is quite enjoyable for me and Hoonigan to create something that will be unique and stand out. And it's not like we just throw shit at the car. It's not about just trying to throw something on there. It's about developing something that has a, a good concept and a good story behind it and doing something in a cool and different way. I couldn't say it better than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd say that again, but I'd swear a lot more. <laughs> in terms of what I have done, what I do and what I've done with, with Ken and Hoonigan so far is a lot of my work is really, really sim simply done, very basic, very sort of analog like the cars from the 70s, 80s, the rally cars from that, from that era, which I like and I'm sure you like. And mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work to make it look so simple, I, I'll give you that, but um, I want to make sure that everything looks like it can be created by hand, it can be painted by hand, yeah. and not rely on computers and uh, complicated programs right. to, to generate something. It's like a, that's like the throwback to the past where it was literally sticking stickers down, hand painting sides of cars, writing the number on, writing the driver's name on the side of the glass. That's what interests me and that's the sort of thing I'm trying to sort of keep going with Ken. A lot of very simple ideas that you think, oh, that's, that's so obvious, but it's, it's just a simple, strong concept and then done very well. And that also then rolls into the story of the driving suit. We wanted a driving suit that kind of could go longer than just one season. Let's check it out. Please. Okay, let me grab it. Yeah. You start in very detailed, see, 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 cardio, you know, it's vascular system. Then it's applied to the entire suit. So you see the, uh, the vein network. Yeah, yeah. So inside all that is there's actual uh, words. Well, just, just, just let them see it. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's, just, let's just see if you can see anything. Okay, <laughs> can you find the words in it? Kill all tires. Yeah, there's one. All right, all right. Oh, wow. Oh, no, no. Yeah, there's I one in the... He's got one. Yeah. Tire Slayer. All right. Yeah, there's ain't. A-I-N-T. Oh, okay. Ain't. Ain't. Can. Yeah, yeah. And then there's one more... In the back of my arm, or is it both arms, or just one? <laughs> we, uh -oh. have, we have lost the, the last <laughs> word. Realize this is the first time we're actually seeing this. <laughs> this is exactly why we work with David, because he's able to bring these unique stories and, and flavors to our program, and we're stoked to have David involved. We see in all suits, uh, F1 guys, rally guys, these lapels. 
Like that? Yeah. That's so you can drag the driver out. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, wait, not oh, kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's not kidding. So, so if we're in an accident, I'm knocked out, a safety person just can come in and yank us out of the car. That's actually meant as a handle. I'm going to yank you out I'm, just for I'm fun. I want to make sure it works. I'm very happy that no one's ever had to do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it's there. Let's cut to it. I'm glad it's never... We can cut to dragging him around a bit. Yeah, <laughs> we, we can do that, and we should cut to when you had to put your own fire out in Vegas, GRC. Oh, yeah, yeah. GRC, yeah, yeah. leading a race. And, yeah. <laughs> Let's go, let's go see these cars. Okay. Here we actually have two cars. We're not going to show you the first car, the actual race car, yet. So we'll skip uh, that. Because what we did for this particular livery launch, we bought another Kazi, a matching Kazi, so that David could come over and paint the actual graphic that we're using on the livery on this car. Bone stock. Basically, bone stock. We bought it, it was delivered, I don't know, a week and a half ago. You can't get it these here, right? Italy. Yeah, okay. it came from Italy. And the idea with that car was to this give it something that actually showed off the basis of what ended up on the race car. Right. This is basically the very first drawing I did of this car. All this is like when you're sort of sketching something out and you're not going to draw a Ford logo or anything like that, you just sort of make the shape and, and do that, and that's what we precisely retained. You guys went ahead and painted the windows and everything. We painted the windows, we painted everything, matte coats to just show the, the sort of sculpture, the, the lines of the car. And my good friend Ken Block suggested we vinyl the windows and paint them, and I was like, well, I can't do that. <laughs> real, real deal only. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> well, like I said, it's, it's not often that you get the take a livery and show the actual elements of the art that goes into it. See, the fun part for David, he, he just gets to look at it in this sort of simple graphic sense. I've got to worry about sponsors and our obligations to our, our different racing series with, you know, numbers and logos and all that sort of thing. And, and I, I got to find this fine balance between what we can do with the actual art that we have to then what makes functional sense for us going out racing. So it, it becomes sort of a push and pull sometimes. And I know David really hates us sometimes because we're <laughs> having to put our uh, stuff on top of his great art. I have to torture you at least a little bit. <laughs> and then he fights. What's art without torture? Yeah, I, uh, I feel bad for David sometimes. Do he you, has to deal you, with us. Do you actually feel bad? <laughs> <laughs> now you've seen the hand painted version. This is, this is day one. Yeah. And over there is day 100. Yeah. Something like that. Yo, 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 Cars all fully prepped to race now here in uh, Stage Round here in America. Now, we did the DT on this a while ago oh, right. when we first launched this car. We've done a bunch of testing and development on it now, I've done some stuff with the suspension, did something really quite sad, which is take the side exhaust off. So if you come back here now, there is a exhaust sticking out the, the actual bumper hole. Does that make you sad? Because to go race, you know, this car has to be street legal. Look. There's my license plate. This is a street legal... You drive this here? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for, for stage rally, we have to be able to drive from service to the stages and in between all the stages back to service. So it is a completely road legal 
race car. That adds so, a crazy element to yeah, racing. Yeah, so I mean, we have turn signals, we got mirrors, and the reason why we were talking about the exhaust is the side exhaust didn't have a muffler, didn't have a cat in it. So now this car has, you know, a proper exhaust right. system, so it'll have the correct emissions coming out of it. It has the correct level of sound, all that sort of stuff. So the very nice sound that you hear, cut the footage of doing uh, Donut. burn, <laughs> donuts here. <laughs> car had an amazing sound there. Uh, it still does sound good. It just doesn't really have that quite level of volume and that the violence has turned down just a little yeah. bit yeah and since then we've done a couple of gravel tests uh you know gravel road tests to get it ready for stage ride. right actually shot this car in Jim Connor 10 mm -hmm. part of that and we've made a several modifications to make this ready to race stage rally this year uh engine work and engine engine management work to get it ready uh because we we're having some you know, overheating issues, that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, and also, here's a simple one that you can see here. This is the modern rally seat that we use. Very safe, um, very expensive. But this seat didn't fit in the cage as it was as a 90s WRC car. So we had to make some adjustments, including moving this particular bar right here. Uh. So that was done at a very high level way to make sure that the seat would fit so that Alex and I would be very safe in the proper seats, but the cage was done in such a way for it all to still be structurally safe just as we need it to be. All change is worth making so you can drive one of the most OG rally race cars, huh? Yep, absolutely. The impact back there and everything, so when, yep. a, when a tire blows out, there's nobody there to help you. You guys nope. gotta hop out. Do that ourselves. And you lose time the longer you take, so. Yeah, if so, we have to change it on the stage, it, it can... We lose a minimum of about two minutes, so we want to do that as quick as possible to lose as little time as possible. Obviously, we get back to service, all that stuff gets changed and fixed, but if we're out there on the road in between services, we got to do everything ourselves. It's do or die. And by the way, see Alex's name back here on the window. It's good to see him back in the mix. Yeah, absolutely. Really enjoy working with Alex. So This is the wheel that we used on this car in Gymkhana 10. Um, but I actually won't race on this wheel, unfortunately. I really like this wheel. So we have a wheel that they raced on in the 90s for this car. But this was the graphic that they used at one point on this car in the 90s. So we're applying that to the gravel wheel that I'll be using. So these oh, are your dope, right? these are your stunt wheels. Oh yeah, yeah no, that yeah. looks fantastic. <laughs> I love the colors on this car. Yeah. Why are you racing a car from 1993? I. I I've seen a lot of your cars, <laughs> and none of them are usually that old. Uh, not true, because I have my 78 Mark II Escort. Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> and your and my, and my Mustang. My favorite car of your fleet. <laughs> All right, I made a mistake. <laughs> you got some old Johnnies that do some work, but. So, but I, I think that that goes right along with that theme that I am a big fan of just rally. Like I've been a stage rally enthusiast since I was a, a kid. So that's why I have a 78 Mark II Escort. That's why I have an 86 RS200. That those cars like mean a lot to me in the world of rally. For me as a fan, as an enthusiast. And so as I've gone through my career and enjoyed racing all these different cars that kind of grabbing from that history and pulling that stuff in and, and racing it in modern ways is just a, a really cool thing for me. So this plays right along into that. You know, this year I'm, I'm going out, I'm racing a, a modern WRC Fiesta. I'm racing, uh, you know, my Focus RS, RX Beast, you know. Th those are the, the ultimate modern day rally and rally cross cars. But I'm actually getting to go out and do some stage rally. And this thing, like one of the cars that I loved as a kid watching race out on the stages, and now I get to take it myself and go out and race three events out on the gravel with it. And believe me, I, I know like racing here in the States in the in the championship, there's there's factory level cars I'm competing against, modern equipment. So I'm not taking this there to try and win. It's about the experience. I, I may end up eighth place, I may end up third place. Yep. I, I don't really know, but for me, it's it's about living that experience. Putting yourself in the shoes of the guys who drove this car when it was the pinnacle of yeah. 
Absolutely. Even taking it today and seeing what it does do against those modern cars. Yeah. You know, that's that's what's also cool about this experience. I think what's fun for me and fun for our team is to take on a challenge like this and say, okay, let's see how good we can do. Let's yeah. see how much fun we can have. Let's see what the the trials and tribulations for sure. will result in. And I, I love that because, I mean, in, in drifting, there's a lot of people who think the pro the pro world kind of loses the fun of it so it's like you're just keeping rally fun you're just that's sweet yep at the end of the day it's about going out and and trying new stuff you know taking on new experiences uh but also this year hoonigan is yeah. basically one of the Would title look? sponsors yeah. and logos on the car yeah we're used to i'm used to seeing the yeah. the claw coming yeah. down the side there so i still have monster is uh one of my biggest sponsors but they wanted to focus more and be involved more with uh, the Gymkhana side of things. So they've been doing a Gymkhana grid and series of events over in Europe uh, now for four or five years. Uh, they've been involved with uh, you know, the Gymkhana videos, so they're still involved in a big way with us. They're just focusing and expanding more on the Gymkhana side. Right. So you will see them all through Gymkhana 10, Gymkhana Files, and with us doing Gymkhana grid this year. So the the monster logo is on the car for all those events and those races. But for the actual racing that I'm doing, Rally and Rallycross, uh, Hoonigan is the title sponsor. So that's what. Oh. <laughs> also, another little piece of David back here that we didn't really talk about, which is, you know, he's made us some great Ain Care logos and Kill All Tires. So we have a, a new Ain Care logo here on the back. We enjoy that. You almost caused it. You almost caused an accident. <laughs> and, and of course, my uh, my personalized Utah license plate. How many HHIC, which is head Hoonigan in charge? Don't you have a couple that say HHIC? How do you? No, nah, hey. that license plate just moved around. Okay. Every time. <laughs> it was on my Raptor. Whichever, whichever is your favorite it, at the time. Well, it was on my Raptor, and then I got a new Raptor, and it's a a lease from Ford, and so I couldn't have this license plate anymore there. So then we needed a place for it to go, so we put it on this car. I was gonna say, who's printing these out for you? I need, <laughs> I need a guy. If you got a guy, so, wing the same on the. Yeah, the exact same wing. This is, uh, I think, in the entire world of motorsports, one of my favorite wings ever, and it's part of why I love this car so much. But it's just such a unique design, and really quite functional. And strange little random fact: apparently, the original design had three levels to this wing like step yeah uh, and for whatever reason i think uh uh the accountants got involved and they ended up cutting back to, to two levels on the wing like hey guys i think you'll survive yeah, with just yeah. one deck yeah it, it's such a beautiful design it's, it's a unique design. super unique yeah. so I, I just realized we made it all the way back here yeah but we didn't I like this thing so much, uh, <laughs> yeah, but we didn't but we actually missed an important part yeah we didn't actually <laughs> show the people what you hide I mean, this is Hoonigan. This is very important yeah. information that we cover. You got to see the guts. Yep. Uh, a little dirty. Sorry about that. Apparently, you, uh, you don't have to apologize for using your car. Yeah. All right. yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, this thing is freshly dirty from a, a gravel test that we did recently in Arizona. But yeah, four cylinder turbocharged, two liter engine, puts out about 350 horsepower. Is that about the same kind of power everyone in that series is going to have? Uh, yeah, roughly. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, a restrictor on the turbo that will only let you put so much air through the, through the turbo into the engine. I've, so that's really how... I've heard that and I've never actually seen one until right now. So yeah, this is a... You know, the, the power delivery of this engine is quite different than what I'm used to with the modern cars. Uh, so it's taken me a bit in testing to kind of get used to hearing the sound and, and getting the shift points right. right. But like I said, that's part of the fun Was it a new car. What, what is it redline at? Was... Uh, max power really, I think is about 6,800 RPM. So you know, pretty... it's a turbo engine, so the, the power and torque is really down a bit lower. Yeah. And you really, with a, a gravel rally car, you really want to flow through the corners. It's not about just wheel spin. And, right flying through that's about carrying the momentum and using See, the torque keep it right in that happy place yeah 
Yeah, I, know, I, I noticed in like Gravel Rally, you, I mean, just from, just from playing video games, I have no real experience. <laughs> you keep it a little gear higher so you have that wheel speed to play with when you need it and yep. stuff like that. That's exactly. interesting. See, I'm practicing, man. I'm practicing. Hey, there we go. <laughs> the inside is, uh, obviously, we have a very nice Hoonigan handbrake handle that we've added. Uh, but the, the gearbox and even the, the old school gear shift there, it's a seven speed gearbox. Seven speed. Just kind of unusual. 1993 car with seven yeah, gears. Yeah, but when they when they originally built the gearbox, uh, first gear I think was a bit tall, and for tarmac racing, uh, they wanted to drop another gear in uh, to get off the line quicker on the tarmac. Mm. They figured they could save a half second to a second just on their starts with the lower speed uh, first gear, so that first gear was added so it's quite unique that this car is a, a, a seven speed no, that's pretty awesome and I mean I see you have a little fetish for carbon fiber you got a little yeah and, and you know typical 90s there's all sorts of uh, switches and fuses, fuses and, and relays and I mean hey you got a gas gauge that's good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one of those and then the center the center console here that's all the controls for the electronic diff um, That's crazy. These cars have electronic diffs. Too. Yeah. That, when I get in the car to race, you have, you know, the switch for the anti lag because we're in a transit mode going from service and in between all the stages. But once we start uh, a stage, we want to be in the anti lag mode. So that's literally one of the only switches I make sure is on when we're about to start a yeah. stage. We put in anti lag, uh, and then we have a diffs button. A diff button there that is on and off for the diffs. And that locks them? Uh, that turns on the electronics. Okay, okay. So, so what do you think, Hurt? What do you think? What do you I, think of our art project? Yeah, our project is pretty cool. I, I, yeah. I don't know much about these cars, and I'm, that's why I'm actually really glad you brought them here, because yeah. I like learning about these things, because I eventually hope to drive one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you're a busy man, so I don't think we have time to see you. You shred this thing today, so we're just going to cut to some of that from the old one. <laughs> So now that we learned all the art stuff, the art part of your your livery, what what are you actually going to do with this car? Uh, well, this year, obviously, you can see right here, ARA American Rally Association. So I'm really stoked to be doing three stage rallies with this car. Uh, but that's not all I'm doing, that because that's only three events. I'll be racing not only this Kazi, I'll be racing my Ford Focus RSRX and some rally crosses. Also racing a Ford Fiesta WRC car and a couple events including WRC Spain. And we'll also be doing a couple Gymkhana grids. The rally cross side, I actually have a partnership with Steve Arpin and his team to continue developing that car because uh, we didn't get it to the level of exactly where we wanted it the past couple of years in World RX. We're partnering with Steve because we really think he has uh, some great potential to help us get the car there. Yeah. Uh, he's an exceptional driver and he's actually coming in uh, to Hoonigan as a Hoonigan driver. It's actually really quite a big year for me. Yeah, I mean. that's uh, stacked. That's <laughs> yeah. stacked. How do you keep moving? How do you... <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be a wild year. But, uh, I, you know, that's, that's part of the dream. In about two weeks, we'll be racing this Oregon Trail Rally. So hope to see you fans out there.
if there's ever a time where you can't drive one of your cars but it needs to be there just let me know i got your back oh yeah you're gonna do all wheel drive yeah. <laughs> hey i'm, I'm happy i'm happy to take on the challenge <laughs> this is where we show you guys the huna truck yay huna truck About time. It's been a long time. We've been keeping this secret for two years. Yeah. I'm actually amazed we've kept it secret for two years. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> we showed a teaser that had it in it. A it year just ago. took people time to figure out that. What's well, the internet nowadays? Everyone's so jaded. So this is Hoonicorn Part Two, the Hoona Truck. Yep. Enjoy. You guys have now seen the truck, but we wanted to kind of answer some questions that we had about getting the truck. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Why build a 1977 F-150? Well, I grew up in a Ford family. I grew up in a Ford truck. My dad, when I was a teenager, young teenager, had a 77 F-150, so I learned to drive in it. I drove myself to the uh, dirt bike track, you know, mm -hmm. raced out of the back of it. Pretty sure I did my first burnout in that truck. I really like that 70s truck. It's just special to me. My dad passed away about 20 or 25 years ago, and I've always wanted one of those tr trucks, that generation. Well, we needed to build a new vehicle for Jim Connor 10, so this idea came up. And, and basically, the idea was build a new Hoonicorn, but at a different style. And But we also learned a lot from the Hoonicorn on how to make it better. So. Working with Detroit Speed, we were able to figure out how to, you know, make a lot of pieces to where we could deal with the ups and downs of filming and doing demos and all that mm -hmm. stuff and be able to repair and work on it much easier than the Hunicorn is. To be honest, when we developed the Hunicorn, I don't think we thought it was going to become the vehicle it's become. Like, it was so unique, so different. And the reason that we did it was because we wanted to, like, 
do something that was outside of just the regular race cars. So like the Jim 3 car was actually a purpose-built Jim Connor car, but it looked identical to the vehicle we were racing. <laughs> Right. So this was like, hey, we have an opportunity to build something that just looks cool and is just super different. And obviously it connected with 50 years of the Mustang at the time and it made sense to build a 65 Mustang. But it was also just like, hey, wouldn't it be cool to build something that was a Gymkhana purpose vehicle that was just cool? I mean, we spent painstaking hours designing how the dash looked because we just wanted every element of it on camera to just look like your dream car. It actually took us two years to build the Unicorn. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Uh, so for me, the truck was just a natural progression because I wanted something that was definitely unusual as a Gymkhana car. It's just such a different shape than anything else I've ever driven. If, if you put the Fiesta next to this thing, it would be tiny, mm -hmm. you know? And the, the Fiesta is really what I'm most comfortable with as far as dimensions of a race car and being able to put it where I want. Yeah, and then these are a set of Toyos uh, tires that they make for their truck line. Which is it, a 315, 35, 20? Yeah, yeah. With a re huge tire with a really small sidewall yeah. for a truck, which is cool. So the, the weight of that compared to like the Hunicorn, it was mm -hmm. just different. The, the reaction of, you know, throttle response, braking, even how the, everything moves and bounces back under weight transfer, uh, it was just different. It took me a little while to get used to, but you know, it's a truck. So this became very strange for me when I first started driving it because you have to imagine in your head how far back those points are behind you for the wheel and for the tip of the wing and all that sort of thing. So Instead of just sitting yeah. like a foot and a half in front of the axle. Right. So, so it drives it exceptional, but the feeling of the size of it is just like very foreign. Right. And it took a while to get used to that. But thank you, 1552, for building these very unique one-off wheels for me for this project. And one thing about it, like once I start driving this thing, I feel the weight of the wheels because these are proper truck wheels and tires. With uh, real bead locks, not, yeah, not bro locks. We didn't want to just run the same wheels and tires that we use on everything else. We wanted it to look the right proportions. We wanted it to to the feel the way that the, the tire is sold and uh, it is what it is. So pretty rad. Thank you again, Toyo and 1552 for making a great setup for me. Uh, the engine is, uh, we haven't talked about that. The, the engine. Don't give them too much detail, save some, but yeah. So it's a V6 twin turbo and it just has a very different power range than, than the other cars that I use for Gymkhana. It has a very unique sound. So that's one thing. It, it sounds doesn't like a, sound like it should be coming out of a truck. No, no, it definitely <laughs> doesn't. But it sounds like a pissed off rallycross car yep. with like a deeper sound. I think my favorite part is the, the, the intake manifold that Ford Performance developed for us because it's 3D printed. Mm -hmm. It is designed in such a way that you could not make that from a cast or from a mill. I, I just think Ford Performance did an exceptional job. Not only partnering with us to get that engine into this truck, you know, from the, the mm -hmm. Daytona prototype, but then doing some of the development work, especially on the, the intake. It looks like a toy, but shrank down. Looking at it, as you guys see it on camera, it doesn't look that big. I'm six foot eight. That means my wingspan is six foot eight and I'm not wider than the truck. Like, it's big. So is it wild to see it moving? And it's, see it? it's more wild than anything else that you have. Like I, like, I like how the Hoonicorn looks sliding. There's something about it because I like where you sit. Yeah. There's something that always looks so cool about the Hoonicorn, mainly because it's totally unsafe and it has a really big, <laughs> it has a really big window opening that doesn't have any like yeah, D pillar yeah. that protects you from like horrible rolls. Yeah. But it looks cool because it has this like real James Dean kind of feel, especially with the leather jacket and seven and just sitting far back. But this looks odd because the pivot point in the truck is so different from what you're used to seeing sliding, especially all-wheel drive. Like yeah. you've seen trucks slide rear-wheel drive, but watching an all-wheel drive slide, and it just like how it snaps and spins and it's so big, it's just so exaggerated, which looks really cool. The minute we all saw it move, it was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be good. Like this looks, it looks good on camera, which is the point of why we built it. And that part of the video was actually difficult because we had a new vehicle mm -hmm. and we had a concept to it that was, uh, the goals were high. 
As they always are. Yeah, yeah. So new vehicle, haven't driven it that much, and we're in a new location and with a kind of a, a, a unique storyline with some of the things that we are doing. And it was really quite difficult. We set the bar high with having the truck and the location, and that's really for us the, the end of Jim Connor 10. It's the hero moment. It's the best, one of the best locations we've ever it's used. It's the longest segment of yeah. everything we shot. Yeah. And in typical fashion, we gave Ken no practice in it <laughs> and made him <laughs> jump in it and try it immediately with like, would you drive it maybe 15 minutes a day before? Yeah. And then a little bit of practice without the body, which we're gonna give you a really quick snippet of right now. Yeah, so let's just run through those dates for everyone. So November 16th, uh, Amazon Files launches. Every week, there will be two episodes that come out. And on the fourth week, you're gonna get a preview uh, Actually, a first view, I should say, because it is the full video. Exclusive view. The exclusive view, exclusive first view yeah. of Jim Connor 10. And then 10 days later, see that magical number there? See what we did? Uh, you'll get to watch it on YouTube on uh, December 17th. So there's that. This week, we're going to be announcing the rest of the cars on the stream. Uh, car will be at SEMA, as well as some of the other vehicles, like the Hoonicorn and uh, its new V2 with the Jim Connor livery and uh, Forza car pack. We'll be talking about this weekend as well. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff coming up. So stay tuned. Ken, thanks for coming through. Welcome back. Now it's my turn to pick my favorite video that we've ever made with Ken, which honestly, that's impossible. It's not a real task. I just can't, there's so much that we've made throughout the years, every year for Facebook, for Instagram, for YouTube, whatever it may be. But if I do have to choose one and it's just off the top of my head, I always really enjoyed making testing videos with the team. Testing videos is like a rally car in a controlled environment you get to do the same corner a couple of different times. It's not like a regular rally where you just get one shot at everything. You actually get to make a cool piece of content in the woods or wherever it may be with everybody together. So one of my favorites was when we were on the verge of winning the 2013 Rally America Championship. The last race of the year, the last rally of the year was LSPR, the Lake Superior Performance Rally. This was the title decider. This is the one. And if you realize, Ken really, really, I get, you can almost say all he ever really wanted was that rally championship. So he was in the points. All he had to do was beat David Higgins on this round. So we made a video about it. Ken sat down and he said, look, whatever happens in this race, we have to make a video to just make a big story about this is the one. This is where we might win it. So we did just a ridiculous, crazy testing video. We start out. There's slow-mo, there's epic music. I think it's Band of Horses that we used. There's hammers flying in slow-mo. We crush a monster can. There's a giant flame that comes out of the back of the car. One of our mechanics just mean mugs the camera while grinding a skid plate. It's a ridiculous intro. And then you get in the car and you just get gravel shredding. And all crazy kind of like unique GoPro angles, we put it under the car, we put it on the exhaust, we put it in the suspension well, on the shifter, all these different rad angles to really show what it's like, what a rally car takes on a test stage. Unfortunately, later that year, or on that race, uh, Ken had one of the biggest roles of his entire career. He was doing really well before that. Either way, that LSPR test for me holds a very, very special place. That was a fun one for me to make. So here it is. Enjoy it.
five, four, three, two, one. Right five miles tight at 70. Left six, 70 crest third. Quarter into left five, tightens four plus. So we're here at the burn yard. <laughs> we're here at the burn yard! What are we here to do at the burn yard? We're doing a livery reveal, live! This thing? Yes. What is Kazi, this thing? My Ford Escort RS Kazi version two. Uh, and we have a new livery on it, so we brought it first time to the burn yard. This is the first time I've ever been here. It's the first time one of my cars has ever been here, so. By the way, I'm a little insulted this is the first time at the burn yard. Well, that's because you don't look at my schedule when you schedule the burn oh. yards. Sorry, I was <laughs> it's in San fault. Marino racing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we've done a lot of livery reveals. Damn. We've done ones in tunnels in Sweden. Damn. Yeah. We've done amazing photography from Tony Harmer. Damn. We even yep. did a digital version of one. <laughs> <laughs> Digital version with Ash Thorpe. With Ash Thorpe. And uh, Nick Swordson. Yes. We had a spoof livery. Sandwich. So we've done a lot of very cool stuff, but this is the first time actually doing a live livery reveal. So I'm really stoked to be able to do it here at the Burnyard. So can you actually give a quick little history of what the Burnyard is for people that aren't sitting in these amazing stands? So the Burnyard. <laughs> quiet when he talks. <laughs> I love you all. So the burn yard, if you guys watch Hoonigan Daily Transmission, we used to do a bunch of stuff in our yard. <laughs> we decided we'd expand into a bigger place, so we brought it to here at Irwindale Speedway. <laughs> This is our first event for 2020. And this is gonna be Ken's uh, 
First time shredding here today too, right? Yep, brought the unicorn, do a few little donuts with this thing, but this thing's actually in prep for WRC Mexico. So it's in rally spec and ready to go down to Mexico right after this. So I gotta be a little careful with it, but brought the unicorn to do some, some uh, driving with it after this. And Derek has told me that he's not really supposed to do any donuts here, but Ken's not great at listening to Derek sometimes, but I am, so we'll, we'll see. We don't, we'll, we'll, we'll see what comes out of Because I'm here for the people, right? I'm the people's champ, right? You gave me yeah, that name. Derek just scares me. <laughs> Derek just scares me. There's a weird British gentleman of him that also is Jack the Ripper. I don't know. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into this. You guys want to get loud again? All right, so, uh, Ken, you want to tell people about this car before we just pull the cover off? Yes. All right. That's the energy everyone's looking for. So, all right, so guys, if you don't know the backstory, Ken built this car last year. It is a Group A Ford Escort Cosworth. And uh, it was a rally car in the early 90s, and all last year, Ken was trying to modify it to get it become a bit more of a modernized rally car. And how'd that go? It went okay. We actually had some mechanical issues. Started racing it with only 40 miles of testing on it, which is nothing. Uh, so we had a few issues in the beginning, uh, and then it got better and better, and I ended up winning uh, Rally Legend in San Marino in my class and got third overall behind two WR current WRC cars at the end of the year. So it's getting better and better, but it's still a heavy 90s shell. Uh, but we've lightened a few things. We've taken about 30 kilos off it by lightening a lot of body panels, a new uh, carbon fiber hood, uh, rear wing, all that sort of things. But we've uh, made a few modifications to the engine. Our engineer's been able to uh, get, a, get us a new high lift cam and a new turbo that's added uh, some liveliness to the engine. So we're slowly developing it. It's a, it's a great package. It's very reliable now which was my big problem with uh, version one, was it was actually a classic 90s car, which came with all the classic unreliabilities of a 90s world rally car. And uh, one of those unreliabilities, uh, one unreliable part was a fuel rail, which is the reason why the previous one burned to the ground. And how long did that burn for? Uh, it burned for about an hour. <laughs> An hour. Yeah, that's what magnesium does. Doesn't uh, doesn't go out quickly. So this was V2. Yeah. So you know the the thing was last year we started racing it. We actually worked with Troy Lee on the livery. So Troy Lee's a, an old friend of mine, but we know Troy Lee because he paints like incredible. Hold, hold on. Paint. Who here knows Troy Lee and Troy Lee Design? Make some noise. Okay, so I'm assuming you, like me, grew up in like maybe the mid-90s, early 2000s, and your dream was to have a lid painted by Troy Lee, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So that was Ken's dream, too, and he told me something really funny last night. You asked Troy Lee to paint you a helmet like 15, 20 years ago, and what did he say to you? Yeah, he said no. <laughs> he said no. And now he designed your whole car for you. Yeah. So. yeah, so back in the day, he was just so busy painting guys like... Jeremy McGrath and Ricky Carmichael's helmet. He didn't have time for a guy like me uh, that was just racing amateur motocross. So, you know, th that's the kind of level that Troy Lee works at. But nowadays, uh, he has a bigger crew helping him paint helmets. He has a, an entire line of amazing bike and, and motocross gear. And uh, he's taken his, his level of design up several notches over the years. So it was incredible working with him last year to de design a livery. Um, and we liked it so much, we enjoy working with each other so much that we decided to do a second year with Troy. So I, I think these people are probably done hearing us talk. Um, so should we pull the cover off? Yeah! I don't think they want you to pull the cover off. Shoot, take it off, there we go. Let's get a tune going. Take it off, take it off, take it off, take it off. Let's, uh, let's take it off. You guys ready? Go, go. You want to pull it off? I think it's, it's, it's your car. All right. Take your top off. Let's go. Yeah. Take your top off. Yeah. Yeah. I love the 
Republic of Motocross gear. So he basically translated uh, some of his moto gear right to the right to the car. So you know, checkers, stripes, and Troy even did uh, a bit of stylization with the stripes with a, a little warp in it. And the same with the the checkers. There's a warp in it. And uh, yeah, and, and we love how this car looks in the front on stage. So keeping it all white in the front so it photographs really well. And even with the wing, I mean, it's one of the best looking wings ever in a stage rally. So we wanted something to really highlight that. So kept the rear wing uh, white so it would pop. So yeah, I'm really stoked on it. Last year, I loved the livery that we did with Troy. And this year, I think it just ups the level uh, a whole nother level. I actually have to say, I think it's one of my favorite. Color pops really good. It looks good on apparel. So, you know, promoting that. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, let's hear it uh, Let's hear it start up, right? You got anything else to say? You still want to hear it. I, I, I will tell you that, so the car is leaving here and heading straight to Mexico for World Rally Cross Mexico. And uh, we have been told by the team manager that, or the team director, that we should not be hooning it that hard. But I don't know, maybe you guys can get really loud and scumbag it. Just got to see Ken 
ripped the Hunakuna in the yard, which was kind of amazing to see because we're not used to seeing that kind of speed in the yard. And with 1,400 horsepower, it was kind of nuts. What did it feel like behind the wheel, Ken? Uh, sketchy, very yeah, sketchy. <laughs> it seemed like it. It seemed like you couldn't see anything either. It's a lot but, of smoke. But I mean, I drove this first. Why didn't you say anything nice about this car? So, <laughs> So inappropriate of you. No, this was also <laughs> rad to watch, but you, like then you followed it up with unicorn. So right. it was like, yeah, it's like having a really good dessert after dinner and then talking about dinner. You just All forget, right. you know. The, okay, well the unicorn, it creates so much smoke out there. It's kind of hard to see where I'm going and see what's there. And it's actually so quick and crossing around the yard that. I've got to actually temper my speed a little bit because there's a lot of stuff to hit out there. So it was a lot of fun. I think uh, it seemed like the crowd really liked it. It was great being able to do this in front of everybody here in LA and all the Hoonigan fans. So thanks so, everybody for So this out. isn't just the first time you've driven in Burnyard, but this is the first time you've been to an event. Like, yeah. what, what is, is this crazy to you? No, I love it. I mean, I think it's the epitome of everything that, that we do with Hoonigan. Like, that's what's amazing to me. Basically taking what used to do at the donut shop. Exactly. And brought it public to yeah. everybody to bring it all to life. Yeah. So I'm stoked to actually have been here. Unveil new livery, new gear. You yep, sure? Yep. New we'll gear. Do a quick, quick walk around on that. Nice, nice. I like the long sleeve. Yeah, it fits yeah. well. It has a kind of moto jersey feel to it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And Ash Thorpe made us a whole new set of uh, fully rendered digital images of the Kazi again with the new livery. So he did that last year, which is our first time launching digitally with a livery. So let's show Ash's new shots right now. So we've already talked about the next thing up for this is WRC Mexico, which is hands down my, one of my favorite events of the year. But what's after that? Yeah. What is the, what is the Kazi World Tour this year? All right, so we can show a little graphic of the schedule. I've got the Barbados rally. We're going back to Barbados for uh, an actual. Can I come rally. to that one? That one sounds like fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, after that, we have our one stage rally in America. That's called the Southern Ohio Forest Rally. Uh, then from there, we're going to WRC New Zealand. I'm back in a Fiesta racing in an R5 and arguably the best rally roads in the entire world, New Zealand. Uh, from there, we go to Nitro World Games, um, which I think is back in Utah, and then back to Rally Legend uh, in San Marino. The final event of the year, back here in the USA, Jim Connor Grid, and I'll be back in a Harpens uh, Fiesta for that thing. I just want to point out to people, Jukana Grid back in the USA for the first time since 2012. I'm really excited about it. We'll be back in the USA, and uh, we're going to have uh, quite a grid of cars there too. We're going to bring out some very special equipment. But I'm there to win this year. We're bringing out Steve Harpens Fiesta to race, and uh, it's going to be good. All right, so the ex-journalist in me, just one question. Kazi World Tour, but I heard you say Fiesta. So there's gonna be it's gonna be Kazi World Tour plus a bunch of other cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay. Kazi World Tour this year because we're taking this thing around the world again, go race all over the place. But I have three events in the Fiesta also. So you've also made a bunch of changes to this car and upgrades. But we're gonna talk about that in the next episode. Yeah. yeah next episode, we're gonna detail all the changes. So not just the rad new livery, but things yeah, that make it faster, the, we'll lighter. Open the hood, okay. Show the details of the. The, uh, uh, very nice region. Like lights, the lights, boiler exhaust. Boiler exhaust. Yeah. Awesome. So watch so that, next that's week. next episode. Thank you very much. See you, Ken. <laughs> that's how that works. So let, let's do that one more time. All right, see you, Ken. <laughs>What's up? If you're just tuning in, you missed the big announcement earlier today. It is that Ken Block's Jim Connor Grid Race Series is coming to America this fall. That's right. Tickets will be on sale soon, so go check the link below in the description to hold your spot. Not only that, if you want to compete, same link will get you all the info of how to enter, what classes there are going to be, what kind of car you might want to build. That link alone, that'll get you all the info as it comes out. Whether you're a pro or you want to come race us jabronis, see if you're faster than us. Jabroni class. Jabroni class. <laughs>
Ricardo has a very distinct color style. It's, it's so good. I think it's a cool departure from what we've had in the past. I'm really stoked to do this. Well, it's that time of year again, the beginning of the 2021 race season. So it's time to create a new livery for Ken Block. And it's kind of a crazy year. Ken's left Ford, a whole bunch of new things ahead of us. And that means we're gonna be rolling this livery out a little different than we normally do. We're actually gonna roll out the art first and then show it to you on the cars because the car thing is still a bit of a secret. Top secret investigations into the paranormal. But you know that we take liveries real serious. Ken's always tried to make the liveries really stand out and be very different than what everyone else was doing. You know, you think about it, the drip livery, the reflective livery, the unicorn camo livery, but then also most importantly, the artist collab liveries. And those are probably the ones that we really most respect because they were so different and so cool. So you have Felipe Pantone. Death spray. You have Troy Lee design. Even Huck G helped design the character that was created around the first livery. We've always liked working with artists to actually be able to put this all together. And uh, this year, no different. This year we're gonna be working with It's a Living, who is a rad artist that creates like a letterwork meets graffiti style of design. And we have kind of a really cool way of how that's going to apply to the car, but also apply to the gear that we're gonna create around it. The first drop will be exclusively available via the network. He's here at the Donut Garage creating this. So today we're gonna to show you kind of a little bit of the background of that and also explain how we're gonna launch the livery this year because it's a lot different than what we normally do. And there's a reason for that. Anyway, enjoy and watch. <laughs> And I'm just a really big fan of his art. I'm a graphic artist and I enjoy font work. His use of calligraphy to like graffiti drippy style blends and big prints. That's just what drew me to his, his art and his style. My name is Ricardo Gonzalez, AKA It's a Living. I am a lettering artist from Durango, Mexico. My style comes from typography, calligraphy, street art, graffiti a little bit, design and art and music. I put all these things together and I just combine them and that's my style. Uh, so I first came across Ricardo's art just coming from the art and street world. I follow a lot of various different artists. His art just really caught my eye. And then I saw his stuff being used by a couple different companies such as Huff. Eventually started following him on Instagram. At some point I just realized, wow, this style and what he does really fits with exactly what I like from graffiti style to a mix of, you know, 80s power boats, you know? <laughs> so we 
reached out. He was interested in lots of steps in between, and we are here today. To be honest, I'm pretty stoked to work with Ken. He's very detail-oriented, and it's an honor, you know, to work with someone like him and, and a team here at Hoonigan. Everybody's super chill, very professional. All the stuff that you guys do is, like, super amazing. And to me, to be part of this crew and create something so unique, it's amazing, you know? Well, one thing that's unique about how we put together liveries is, I mean, I came from the shoe and the apparel world. So I think about not only how the car looks, how the race suit looks, but how things are going to look, everything from a t-shirt to a pair of shoes. But this year we really wanted to start without the car. We wanted to start with literally a poster and look at it as a piece of fine art and then drop that all the way down through the t-shirts, hoodies, shoes, down to the car itself. The artwork that It's a Living creates is something that really is very much a high-end art piece and that's what justifies us going this direction. The car will definitely come later. Obviously, I'm a race car driver. There will be a race car, but we wanted to start with the art first. We've never taken that direction, but we just felt like Ricardo's art justified. Yes. I would love to see that thing, you know, like see the car, the, the wrap done, and I want to see how the graphics behave and also people's reaction. Racing comes from a more rigid style of graphics and this is more fluid. The graphic actually on the car, it's meant to be like if the letters were melting or like the speed helps to the ink to like drip. So that's one of the main things that I had in mind at first when 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 this project came to me. And it'll be really amazing to see in, in pictures and especially if I get to write it, that'd be pretty cool. So with every artist we work with from Philippe Pantone to Troy V and now Ricardo, they always have their own tastes, they have their own color palettes, they have their own styles. And even Ricardo has four or five different styles that we've worked with him to create art for Tire Slayer and Just Ain't Care and Hoonigan. But in working with him through all that stuff, he has a very distinct color style that he wanted to drop in there. And it just happened to work very good, I think, with the progression of what I've had in the past years. A lot of the stuff though I've had in the past has been black or black and white with some color pops on it. But but with Ricardo's style, we're actually using a, a very bright color palette. And really for the car and even like the t-shirts, it's front to back or top to bottom. I did some research about like the past cars uh, with a collaboration of Hoonigan or Ken Block that has done on the car and stuff like that. So I came up with a color palette as my signature style, uh, some pink, blues, it felt really organic. I think it's a cool departure from what we've had in the past. Definitely different. But it's a mix and homage to some of the stuff that we have done in the past. But his style and his color palette, I think, just works. It's so good and it fits right in with exactly the stuff that I like for my liveries and race cars. So I'm really, really happy with how everything's turned out. It was very collaborative. I talked to Ken. Ken, we, we, we discussed it for a bit. And we came up with this color palette with uh, blues, uh, purples, a bit of pink. And it's a very electric, fresh, fast color palette. So for us, Ricardo's focused on a certain piece that says tire slayer repeating in multiple colors. You start with a sketch, to be honest, like just pen and paper, just sketch it out real fast just to see the, the layout and kind of how many lines I was gonna use. And then from there, I took it to a canvas and then paint it. It was only one color. I photographed it, took it to the computer, separate every layer, color it, and then adjusted it. And then I put it into a canvas, which I had to, you know, project and, and then paint with acrylic. It comes from analog to digital to analog, you know, so it's a whole process, which I, I really enjoy it, to be honest. For me, that was really the centerpiece of everything that we're doing for the year with delivery. So he's taken that. He's painted that on a canvas for us. We've then taken that and printed it on posters. And our whole goal here is to do this very limited edition on the initial launch. So this is the base for the livery of the car that will be you know, wrapped around the entire car. So we're taking that out and letting it stand on its own for this set of gear. It'll all be very limited edition, very high end, and sold with an exclusive retailer that focuses on those very short run type options for the streetwear world. 
the poster itself is a very special paper. It's a very nice heavy print on there with Ricardo's original art. And it's a very limited edition print that both he and I will sign a number. I'm really stoked to do this. It's something we've never done. We've made a lot of very special limited edition posters here at Hoonigan. We've never made it with this sort of paper. So for me, it feels much like a very nice, very rich art piece. All right, well, that's it. Really stoked to be working with It's a Living this year. Incredible art, fun applications with the race car, but it means that we have a lot of different, very cool gear coming out this year. So something I'm very excited about. Get rid of this very boring Hoonigan shirt. I'll be wearing some very cool limited edition product. It's a Living, Ricardo Gonzalez, thank you. My favorite moment with Mr. Block is probably here when he first came to Tire Slayer Studio. The reason it stuck out in my mind is because, mind you, I'm like the new dude here. Never I got to see this man drive in real life. I've never been to any of the gym kind of sets, and I've never really seen him outside the internet besides the one time we talked about Star Wars at 621, which was cool. He's about the light side of the force, just to let you know. So when he came here, I got to see him drive his Hyundai that he was killing it in that previous season before the season ended it in this whole Hyundai thing. And the cool thing was I got to see the person I watched on the internet and idolized for a cool moment who got me doing dumb shit in Subarus, drive in real life. And the coolest thing about the whole thing, he drove into the shop, the history, ah, he drove into employee bay and he did the little, the thing he do, but the thing was, he was like kept calculating, kept calculating, and I got to give him a pep talk. So this was like, kind of like, um, you could say one of the Justice League members talking to Superman, like, yo bro, you could do this, you just bullshitting. And the next run he comes, rips, and then dips out, and it was like, fuck yeah, you did that. So if you guys are watching this, enjoy this episode that I got to do something with Mr. Block. And if the Mr. Block, you watching this in YouTube heaven, just know your boy's here. Enjoy. <laughs>
Rally Association uh, Championship, which is nine events. I raced eight of them. I won four of them, and then I had some wild luck. I, there were actually two events where I was leading the event on the final stage and actually lost it on the final event. One by hitting a deer. Year decided to end that victory. God, and that was this year. Yeah. I know yeah. it's so much happened this year. Yeah. You mean the, the deer like a... that Subaru definitely planted in the woods? <laughs> yeah. That was a Subaru yeah. deer. I ended up second. I just didn't win. Would but have been you my eighth deer in a rally, and you got second anyway. Not bad. Not bad. Here's yeah. a question: How many podiums did you have this year? Um, six. How many All of right. those were you at the top of the podium? Four. It's pretty good numbers. Oh, eight races total, six Two podiums. Drop. Yeah, that's a pretty that's, good ratio. That's yeah. solid. That's solid. Like on the Olympic gold medal level, you like you won for your country. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't win in the end. I didn't. I didn't win in the end, though. That's the problem. Oh, but we'll, well get into that. In some yeah, other we'll episode. get into that a little later. <laughs> so at the very base of it, Hyundai i20 WRC. This is a previous generation WRC car. Yeah, currently the WRC rules are it's actually a hybrid. Right. So they have an electric drivetrain and a 1.6 liter turbo engine. This is the generation before, so this... Pre-hybrid Yeah, this car raced last year. Oh, okay. And then basically the beginning of this year started the new rules, which is the hybrid. Right, so which this, is kind of why these things look so wild. Is This was the aero era yeah. of WRC. Yeah. Where even the really mirror. Started. Even the mirror. Has aero. Ever. This actually has all the safety. You know, the best wheel technology, the best shock technology, the best engine technology, so the speed is right. much higher even with a smaller engine right. the technology to get you down the stage is there in just an incredible way how so long let's... did it take you to get used to driving this uh well this car because we had it all season it took me a few events to get up to speed in it but that you know by the last i've won the last three out of four or four out of five events i'm like a three out of four events it took a little while to get up to speed but once i was used to it I could just drive it flat out. Is this your favorite rally car you've ever driven? This is my favorite rally car I have ever driven. Nice. Damn. Well, part it's... of it though, I, I, I drove the Ford Fiesta like in Spain, like I said, and I really enjoyed it, but I only got to do like a test and then yeah. go try to race it. Yeah. I didn't get to really experience it. This car I got to drive for eight events, so I, I got up to a comfortable level over a couple of events. We did a lot of test changes for the car, made it work for me. And then I just got to drive it flat sure. out for the rest of the year yeah, with yeah, confidence, yeah. Yeah. you know? So that's the big difference. I mean, I want to drive flat out. I want to go fast and take big risks, but yes. you can't do that if right. you're not confident in what is underneath you. And I have so much confidence in this thing. I, I can put this thing wherever I want, unless there's some mud in, on the road. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. I really, truly enjoyed it. You know, I, I would put it up there with the Hunicorn. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hot take. He's CNN breaking news. Hot take. <laughs> I had to walk away. Hot I take. had to walk away. This man, this man is just spitting abominations out his mouth. He just didn't say that casually. Yeah. But y'all don't say that. We don't have a WRC race in America, so there's no reason for this car to come right, here. Right, right, right. So we just happened to be able to, to bring this car over and run it this year. And so it is really the only Hyundai WRC car in existence that we know of in the States wow. today. So for us to run this in the States, because of the rules of our championship, WRC is the top level, you know, we're a national level championship. So there's just more restrictions. So we had to add, uh, what was it, 275, 275 275 pounds. pounds. That's almost a whole Gary. That's that almost is, a Gary. Yeah. Imagine. That's almost you got all of these back, back there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So added to that just to be legal yeah so 275 pounds went from a 36 millimeter to a 34 millimeter so it's a smaller amount of air that can get in so that reduces the power uh and run on a different fuel and the normal displacement of like a car in our championship is two liter and we know some that are up to 2.3 and we're at 1.6 so we're at a huge disadvantage as far as displacement and the car doesn't work the same way as it was built to work so i was underpowered i mean if you take our car and add like a 700 cc sport bike that's the equal to the car i'm mainly Damn. competing against plus one <laughs> plus one jixer <laughs> <laughs> but i so i just had to drive harder than them 
Did you see the turbo is cute. Oh. So you can see here the restrictor all the way down in there. They got safety wire on there too? Gary, I can't tell you how safety glad I am. Safety wires on everything. I can't tell you how glad I am that, I, that you brought that up. The restrictor on there has that's there for rules, right? Mm. Because that limits the amount of power that everybody has to try and level the playing field. And that wire is tamper proof, so they know if you've taken it off or put it back on after you see scrutiny. This, you see this little stamp here? That's like the a little metal piece that holds that wire together. That's yep. what, how they know you didn't open well, it. Let's take a look inside this thing. This first of all, the thickness on this door. Look at all that side impact safety that you have over here. Oh, that's solid, solid. Look at that cranium container he got over there in the passenger cranium seat. container. That's actually the most buttons I think I've seen on one of your steering wheels ever. Also, look at the biggest word. I know it's a lot of letters for you. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> R. E Exiting wing punisher. Oh, that's, that's crazy. Is that, is that German? <laughs> So this is actually on there because the fire extinguisher is not on. The system oh, is not so on that's right not now. always there. So like, they put that there to, when they turn it as off. As a reminder. So as we get back in and turn everything back on, oh, we take that disarmed. off. And there's actually a spot up there where Alex has a bunch of different things like this, because there's like blankets that go on the front radiator. You know, I'm gonna add this to my cars where one says like no coolant, it doesn't run. no, no engine. fuel, no engine. That way people know <laughs> has to be pushed. Has to be pushed. So real quick different launch settings so different rpms for the launch the gearbox has different settings for the center diff lights i can control all the lights from there uh obviously simple things like horn what's that launch. sad button all about no boost why would you hit, <laughs> why would you hit that button if it's wet tarmac mm. uh. right where you need to really have some nice throttle control as opposed to like I thought that was like a complaint button that goes back to the <laughs> yeah, service area. It just it's goes like, back. I don't know, it's too slow. I got no boost. <laughs> and then this is the ignition setting. So depending on the event, how much grip there is, mm. what the conditions like wet or whatever will control the amount of boost and how the power comes in on boost. So that's what this is for. Wow. And can you explain to people what the what stage button is for because like that's a right here. Right. Obviously stage button is the fun button. But like right. for people to understand that. So when I'm not racing, this is basically off. So I'm in a transit mode, which is like a detuned version of this. So when I push stage mode, then it's activating whatever setting I'm on here. As well as stuff like anti-lag, yeah. the really aggressive map, like yeah. all that kind of yeah. stuff. So when we're about to start a stage, we'll confirm these settings because the engineer is constantly mm -hmm. telling us uh, adjustments to make. I'll put it in gear. I'll push stage mode. I'll pull the handbrake back. Then I push the start button. So that puts me in launch mode. Oh, wow. So it takes a combination of clutch, throttle, and handbrake to let the launch mode go into mode. Oh, interesting. Right? And then when I have five seconds left, I just go full throttle and then it cycles through. You'll hear it when I do a launch here. You'll hear it find the right RPM. What? set the boost and everything so mm. when i have one second left it's at the right rpm everything well there you go kids you've learned how to launch a wrc car <laughs> with easy. us today easy yeah. it's easy yeah. it's easy it's easy and press then, this turn this i already forgot then, all right well that's I well mean, you forgot the two paddles here though whoa yeah that is a windshield wiper paddle stop it <laughs> that is the most expensive windshield wiper paddle ever <laughs> and so shift is only on the right side yep. forward and back yep. shift can i click it right side. yeah yeah Oh, that's a very nice action. So two other sticks in there, obviously. There's a, a gear shift. Even though we have pedal shift, I still have to get into oh, first and out of first, into neutral and into reverse using a stick. You know, it has a gearbox like anything else. The paddle is, a, is an actuator that actually uses air to move that stick back and forth. Oh, so as I'm, as I'm driving along, if I shift with the pedal, you'll see the... You'll see oh, you those. see it move every yeah, time. You see it move, yeah. Man, that's really cool. All right, so the Motec display, that gives Alex all the stats that he needs to look at. Give it back to the engineers. You know, you're you're focusing on driving in the next stage. Alex is beaming info back to him. Yeah, Alex by, actually. By the way, Alex also has controls on the foot. So he's got, wipers. he can actually do the wipers himself. So oh, Ken look doesn't at that. have to, right? Hit him with. What is the water splash oh, dude, button? He told me about that one the other day. The That's water splash button closes a vent on the intake. So if we're going through a water splash, uh, it closes the intake and it'll draw air from somewhere else in case a bunch of water's coming in as we cross a stream. That's rad. That's really yeah. cool. What? By the way, Alex, 
Alex in the beginning did not like this car. Oh, really? There was just a lot more work for him. <laughs> because, hey, you're right. My job is extremely stressful. Way more homework for the man <laughs> yeah. to do. All right, but let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about this. Ken, I have not seen this helmet. So I like patterns, and I like, like 80s and 90s bright graphics. You like colors, too, I see. Yeah, yeah so. Not boring. I kind of couldn't decide on one, so I went with all of them. You got purple, yellow, Is green. this from our man Despre? He had something to do with the inspiration, but it's a helmet painter named Airtrix. Oh, put yeah. It all together. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. So this is the first one that he's done for me. I also have a matching mountain bike full face helmet that I use in the Can-Ams also, and a matching motocross snowmobile helmet all look the same. So, all right, so you have matching so, helmets for all of your dangerous so things. So it's an ink care pattern. Yep. It's the brain bucket. Okay, okay. We got some flames. You have to. I have to have flames. Got some pattern like what we had back on the Kazi, the yep. black and white pattern, and then just some fun That star stuff. pattern is sick. Yeah, so wow. we just, like I said, I couldn't decide on one pattern, so I said, I'll take them all. Give me everything you've got. You always have mega unique helmets, and I feel like you just get the helmet and people get to look at it. It'd be cool if we had like either a miniature or maybe like a consumer level, like a mountain bike helmet that anybody could buy. I feel like we should do something like that. I'm glad That's you- a comment below. Comment below if you want this helmet for sale. Can I comment now? Yeah, comment right now. <laughs> I want it right now. But now! So we're here in the back, and uh, the back is fairly empty. Room for two spares. Yeah. All we want usually to talk about is this jack. <laughs> oh, do you usually run with two spares? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. But the jack, let's... I mean, first of all, you're out there in the field, and if you lose a tire, you lose a piece of suspension, anything, you're out. You have yeah. to fix your own car in the field. So these have permanently latched tools. You got your impact, you got your torque wrench, and you got this thing. There's a lot more tools under Alex's seat. There's generally spare parts, bolted the roll cages, and a full kit. Both, most of this simple kit that's back here is so that we can change a tire on stage right. or in between stages. This jack looks like- Full hydraulic. And look how sick this little system is for like holding it in and putting it back away, like all the arrows. Oh, wow, there. yeah, so you could see it if it's yeah. all covered in yeah. dust, yeah. And it's one of those jacks too that as you pump, it works both directions. What? Right? This ain't no. no Ricky Ding oh, wait, either. this is the bottom. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The bottom. Oh, with spikes and everything. I'm not see, sure. See, wow, so they it's go like both a, directions. It's like yeah. a high lift jack, but for your car. Which, yeah. have you actually, because ARB made one like this. Oh, no way. hydraulic, but it's like this big. And this goes into the sill stand on the side of the car, which we'll look at in a second. But I love how even this is rifled like that for lightweight. Oh, of course. You gotta save weight everywhere you can. Everywhere. So you hey, might as, well, might as well show the little holes, yeah. though. So there's two holes here and here that we put this jacket Is it weird in. that I want to jack it up? Can we just throw it in? Can we just see God. it? Can we just see? Can we just see? <laughs> Ken has to practice these Ken, with Alex yeah. and he despises it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo. So back when Ken was on the WRC, we made a bet that Ron and I could change a wheel faster than him and Alex could, and they never let us actually do the test. Don't, I, I they don't They were afraid do, to lose. They were afraid to lose. Physical labor Unfortunately, right now. Ron and I combined have put on the weight of like, I don't know, like a 19 year old man. <laughs> so I just don't know if we're, we're in the same, wow. I doubt, it's in, I doubt it's in gear, and I know the handbrake's not on. Nice. So I don't yeah. want to put There's it There's a sign there. back there that says handbrake. <laughs> yeah, look how quick that went up. That's it? Yeah. Also, look how high the car just got lifted. Wheels still in touch with the ground. Oh yeah. That's, That's droop. Look at, actually, this is a good way to go into suspension here. Look at those dampers. I, I don't know how much travel exactly is on this thing, but I imagine it's a lot. Like previous here. cars, yeah. Probably as much or more than a Ford Raptor, but on a Hyundai. All right, if you guys are done with the nerdery, I think we all want to see Ken shred the yard with this Please. thing. That's really what we all came here for. I mean, for those of you who skipped ahead to this point, this is a Hyundai rally car and it's about to shred the yard. Yeah! Yeah! Mm -hmm.
when I just throws it into the first corner yeah. with so much just... And then just comes like two feet from us, like he doesn't need us. Right. I guess so, dude. <laughs> you're hey, you're insane. Down, my boy. <laughs> oh my god. You want to do a little more out here? Or you want to go inside now? Uh, let me do one more quick one. He wants to do more. The man wants to do more. <laughs> On the outside and through here, maybe do some donuts. That's just crazy. That's crazy. <laughs>
you tried. I mean, you didn't do too bad of a job. See, there's some corn. Man, a lot of firsts here today. Man. First time Ken has shredded the yard. First WRC car in the yard. First gravel tire taken down to the core. I had to kill some tires. I mean, every time I come here, I have to kill tires. <laughs> yeah. It's like absolutely. a requirement. Yeah. And it took <laughs> longer than expected. That last session was crazy I'm with how here, much bro, smoke. My, my ears are uh. still going off the Richter scale. Miss Man, killing my eardrums. Thank you. And possibly the tightest donuts ever done. Well, definitely the tightest donut ever done here on this property. I was super impressed. Bro, I knew he could do it. You though. did. I you knew did. He you could did. You it. called it. You called I, it. I said this mother You was manifested. Do it. You manifested. You had, you had faith in me. I always I got faith. That. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, Ken, thank you for coming by. Hey, we still got more tonight. Oh, there is. Shoot. There is. Actually, this thing is going to be on display out front. We're doing a little meet and greet here at Tire Slayer Studios in the store up front. Well, the funny thing is I wanted to do that because we have this cool car. It's literally leaving Monday. And so I thought it'd be dope to bring it out with the Trouble Andrew livery, put it on display here at Hoonigan. Let the LA rally fans come out and check out See this it car because one of these has never been here. So have a good time, interact with some fans, show off this wild beast to everybody. So hope you uh, Hoonigan fans appreciate that. There you go, Ken Block, ridiculous driver and a man of the people. Thank you very much for coming here. I can't wait to see more of this thing. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. We've seen it only in concept drawings, but today we get to see everything for the first time in real life. It's a big day. It's a big day, Brian. Why is it a big day? <laughs> you gonna tell them why it's Yes, because we're at Audi's design studio in Ingolstadt and we finally get to see uh, the car that I get to do Electricana in that Audi is building for us in the flesh the first time ever. We've seen it only in concept drawings and some photos, but today we get to see everything for the first time in real life. So without further ado, the S1 Hunatron. So realize like six or seven months ago is when this process started, which is an amazingly short period of time to build an entire car. And Ken and I said, well, why don't we just electrify like an old S1? You know, it's the reason Ken got into rally. And they said, we can do you one better. And that was basically modernizing the concept of an S1. And they even gave it a pretty cool name. The Audi S1 e-tron quattro Hunatron. Or just a S1 Hunatron to his friends. <laughs> For Audi to build an entire prototype car using all the most modern technologies straight off the things that they're doing in their amazing street cars, but doing it at even higher level for a race car performance vehicle, naming it and doing it in this incredible way, I, 
I'm dumbfounded. It's I mean, amazing. think about it. They built you a concept car. <laughs> I mean, I, just a concept car just for you yeah. to drive an yeah. electric Honda. No yeah. pressure or anything. Yeah, all designed in this amazing studio. We've built all the cars yep. for ourselves in the Gymkhanas in the past, either ourselves or through a race team like yep. M Sport. Never has the factory itself, the OEM, built the Gymkhana cars for us to be able to go out and, and do our projects. Level. Like, we've always used an existing body. This yeah. is like an entirely new body, chassis. Everything on the car is new. Maybe yeah. it'll be production at some point, but for now, it is just 100% pure prototype for us to go make an incredible video showcasing Audi's electric vehicle technology. All right, well, now that you've seen the car, we are actually going to hear from these guys how this thing came about from this. So the, the S1 Pike Speed is, is in general an inspiration for us. You know, this is it's a very important part in the gene in, in our DNA. And especially this one inspired us for, for your Unitron because, you know, the architecture, you know, these this strong muscles on top of all four wheels, this really tight cabin which creates a unique character in combination with a super short wheelbase and then this upright A-pose and this super unique triangle uh, C-pose. This, this, this makes a very strong character. Inspiration as well for the one over there, that the wing, the surface is connected, you know? Mm -hmm. It's one surface, the fender and the wing. We are always looking forward and it was very important to do not a retro design, more a very progressive interpretation of, of this thing here. And I think we, yeah, we achieved it. With Audi and the Quattro in the 80s, you wanted the wheels, all four wheels, to protrude and stand out from the car. And that created this silhouette where it's still the standard width here, exactly. but it is wider here because you needed the stance for racing. That design stance actually worked out to be something in your favor to, to really visually say all-wheel drive. I've looked at this car many times on film and in photos, but never realized just how, how big, big that is. is. Yeah. Well, also, and how big the wing is, too. All right, well, now show us how it translated. <laughs> <laughs> I think the side view is so characterful and of course the Apo's not that upright anymore. No. It's a little bit more fluid because it's a very modern car at, yeah. at the end. But there's still this strong direction. We have this chop off rear wing, very pronounced, falling backwards and then this front wing going against it. And this is very characterful and this is I think a good translation uh, from the old car. Next to the original S1 Pikes Peak, it looks completely different, yeah. but the character it's linked. It's still a very short wheelbase, but it's a little bit longer because of the battery pack. Um, it's a little bit wider than the S1, and it's a lot lower. They do look very different, but when you get into each piece, you're like, oh yeah, box flare, yeah. inset door, roof, wing, like they all have just, it's a modernized version of each piece. How long did it take to get to this? From the first sketch to the design freeze model, around a year. But this time, Mm. Yeah, four we, weeks. Had, we had four weeks. <laughs> Sorry. But, four weeks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but this is so special. So almost every designer wanted to contribute and we had a huge amount of sketches on the wall and we picked one which was from Sascha uh, out of the x design team. He, he did this, um, uh, the, the final design. A very good combination out of the past and the future. And I think, yeah, that's all in now. And it shows our passion. So we used it also to make it um, floating here, this whole piece, to visualize that there is no, no, no uh, combustion engine anymore mm -hmm. under, you know, to, to really make a modern interpretation. Well, as a, as a designer, you can have a lot more fun because you don't have to worry about a certain particular size hole to get air through exactly. that you can 
be way more creative with yeah. the lights, with how the air flows yeah. through. And I thought that you guys did a great job with that. And like you can see on that image there, that all come together with a very unique design. Yeah. And by the way, it's very cool seeing actually Hunatron <laughs> spelled out right. there. Yeah. <laughs> First we have the daytime running light which is uh, um, linked to our RS models. This is all this uh, checkered flag, and it's also linked to the um, Paris Sakar as well. So there's a kind of a family design. And then, especially for you, the main light modules are hidden here in the shadow. Mm. And this will be very cool for the movie, of course. Yeah. It also has a good rally homage. Yes, yeah, like exactly. Like yeah. dead center yeah. on the hood. Yeah. That's, yeah. Exactly, that's the second point. Yeah. And those are like laser lights too, yeah. right? Yeah. New tech. Yeah. I would say the rear end, it's, it's all about the spoiler because <laughs> that's a topic for the rear end. <laughs> and it's underlined by the livery, you know, gray car yeah. and the spoiler and the rocker and the front spoiler are in, in contrast in neon red. So when this came together, it started as a sketch and then it gets rendered and then it became, was it a small model first and then no, it was cut? So you went straight to this? Sketch, see, uh, we choose one, this yep. one proposal from Zasha. We went straight to CAD data. Mm -hmm. We mill it. That's it. We did wow. one round refinement, and that's it. That's so was it cut right here with exactly. these? Well, very rarely do you get to build something and then see it in motion in the same year. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So this is Sasha, and he worked on final design for this. So he's going to walk us through all the little details. So we got all the big picture stuff. I mean, basically you can say just the proportion itself is the first thing which is important. It's just a short wheelbase, super compact, and the whole volume is just already reminding the old S1, actually. In its Y0, if you see like the, the, the silhouette, for instance, for sure it's lower. It's also like kind of more compact probably, but it, it's actually speaking as one. Imagine this is a complete volume and we just try to chop off this front yeah, and you just fill it with a new face. That makes it kind of much more modern and it's actually jumping into the next stage. This typical spoiler style that's very iconic for the S1. We try to catch it up in the silhouette so it's very uh, expressive. Yeah? We kept this ankle which is actually leading to the front spoiler. It's coming from this uh, headline, headlight theme. Uh, including this whole ankled front, which is then through float. So it's all like parts and, and really yeah, important features actually we wanted to keep and, and uh, reinterpret it uh, for the new car. The roof is kind of very new. I like this interpretation of this classical window graphic from the S1, but still we have this kind of a ankled pillar, but it's kind of a f yeah, flying roof, so mm -hmm. it's not kind of a typical um, uh, cant rail, together with this uh, nice Naka air intake which leads uh, in, inside and uh, for the air cooling, four quattro fenders is important. That's uh, what makes the car. And for sure front spoiler and uh, side rocker to the rear spoiler, that's making the car like from far away just recognizable. A certain key features from the S1, yeah. we try to put together and make a nice kind of modern uh, thing out of it. The modernization of it, like these elements, and how that all came together, along with keeping like the really dramatic like door sill and, and f fender flare, but molding this stuff really into the body. Whereas that is more bolted on, this is more designed. Actually, overall, it's, 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 an, yeah, it's, it's an S1 interpretation and it speaks itself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's very dramatic and it's incredible design, so thank you. Yeah, welcome. I love the work that you've done and you've shown us over there. Like, thank you so much. Uh, obviously, seeing that design come to life, though, with the livery is something that we're very accustomed to doing. Yeah. And, uh, and seeing like the evolution of what I mean, this is kind of an evolved thing from the Dakar project, correct? Yes, it's like a bridge between the Dakar project and, of course, the classic car as well. It, it connects key elements of both liveries, actually. So when we put this together, together with the uh, designer who did the exterior, Sasha, yeah. 
we try to kind of check all boxes here. Okay. We can see that uh, it's sitting on this neon red rocker element, which uh, for us uh, symbolizes the e-tron technology because this is where the battery sits and this is where the heart of an electric car is pounding. We kind of start with the classic S1 and we have the spoiler theme that's uh, moving into the rocker that's connecting both elements. But in our case, we still carry it on to the front, uh, to the front spoiler and all the way back. So we have like a 360 wrap around the entire car. The graphics are diving through the parts then into other parts, and on the other side they're exiting again, and they're flowing like 360 over, under, through. It's always cool also to be able to play with uh, key logos like this and to really make sure that we show the 3D of the car and kind of um, color outside of the lines at some point. I really have to give a shout out to Heide, Sasha Heide, who uh, did the exterior. I really had to ask him like where his key parts are mm -hmm. and what key characteristics he wants to maintain so you're and the right to boost. Part. Yes, exactly. And uh, like really trying to make sure that we add something yeah. onto the character instead of kind of diluting and, it. And that's such an important part with livery design. You see sometimes where people just throw the craziest stuff at cars and it hides the design of the car. You lose yeah, the shape. Yeah, that's the problem. You lose like those certain angles. It's yeah. like you have to work with all that and exactly. bring attention to it. Right? Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. The strength of the wheel arches and how narrow the car is here and even the, the four rings tucking into the mm -hmm. underbody kind of highlights even how much more this sticks out. Yeah, the Delta. So, yeah, I like that element of just how all this stuff works together. The red going all the way around, but then how this is not the same as this. So you see a depth in yeah. this in this logo sort of bleeding into uh, the other part of the body kind of accentuates that other part of the body. Nice job. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. If you ever need work, just you hit me up. Oh, let me know. Let some t-shirts. <laughs> These guys are kind of killing it. Yeah, I mean, we're in the design studio. And speaking of the design studio, we're actually done here. That is everything that went into this incredible project. Thank you to Audi and everyone here in the design center uh, and everyone putting this whole thing together. The next step for me is actually getting to drive this thing. Yes, that's happening soon. For now, we get to go upstairs and see the future, see all the design stuff that Audi's working on for the next three or four years. So. Top secret stuff. I'm pretty stoked to have that sort of access. I'm really stoked to be with him so I can go finally <laughs> see all this stuff. But unfortunately, we can't bring you with us. Move out the way, man. People don't want to see you. They're here for this. This is great. But that is the coolest car ever made in the world. I thought the Hoonicorn was something. This is another level. The Huna Pig is absolutely insane. It's fucking ridiculous. It's just as savage as it needs to be. It's an inspiration, as it always is. I appreciate that energy right there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello everybody, thank you for coming out tonight. I'm Brian Scotto, Ken Block. A couple other people we'll introduce in a minute. This is a brand new project for us and uh, we haven't actually done a brand new car reveal in a really long time. The background of it is why did we build it, right? You guys are familiar with the Hoonicorn, the Huna truck. We built a bunch of other vehicles that were always purpose built to go do Gymkhana, go make great films. This one, a little different. This one is to go race Pikes Peak. If you guys follow Pikes, you know that this is the 100th running of Pikes Peak this year. And we've got a little bit of a history of Pikes. Film Climb Kana, 
Raise your hands if you know that famous shot of Ken almost sliding off the side of the mountain. Thank you very much. Ken, why don't you give us a little bit about your background with Pikes and kind of why we built this? One of the ways I was introduced to rally was through Pikes Peak. So in the late 80s, uh, Audi brought over a couple of their rally cars and so did Peugeot and raced up the mountain. That just really attracted me to how well all-wheel drive cars worked and how they slid and managed their way up this incredible mountain. So since I was a teenager, Pikes Peak has been something that really enamored me. But in 2005, as part of the first rally championship I ever did, so it was really a dream come true to go do that, but the car was a you know a basic rally car that was a group and lower spec. By the time we would get to the top, we'd be maybe pushing about 200 horsepower. So it was really disappointing. It was like dream come true, but ah, uh, it sucks. Like the car is so damn slow. So when we went back to do Climb Kana, it was actually an, an homage to the way that I saw the car slide and drift the turns racing up the mountain back in the 80s. And so I've always dreamt about going back there, but being able to do it in the top class and the top spec to actually race for the overall. This project here is a lot of great ideas and great connections and great people all coming together and aligning to make a really great project. So do we show it to you guys now or do we keep talking? No. <laughs> Move out the way, man. People don't want to see you. They're here for this. <laughs> There we go, more energy, that's what I like. I'll stop talking now because someone's waving at me that I should stop talking. But I'm gonna let Tim actually explain what's in this thing because the thing's a monster. I could just do a high level what the car is real quick. So beside the obvious, based on a 911, what isn't characteristic is this 911's mid-engine and it's all-wheel drive. I don't think there's ever been an all-wheel drive mid-engine 911, ever. Because now I know why. Because you have to run a drive shaft over the top of the engine. Had to build us this crazy transfer case on the back of the gearbox that then drives this eight foot long drive shaft. And anyways, that, that's for another time. But the engine's based on a 2016 Porsche GT3R, the factory race car that they run in um, ALMS or IMSA. Then we redesigned the pistons, rods, head studs, and a bunch of stuff so it could accept boost. So Garrett came on board, laid out a great turbo package. It's the biggest turbochargers Garrett Motorsport, the racing division, have ever produced, ever. So that's kind of cool. And there's two of them. So twin turbo, four liter. The car's gonna run on methanol, like the Hunicorn. We have three injectors per cylinder. It should spin to about 9,600 RPMs. At sea level, it will make 1,400 horsepower. At the starting line, 1,000, and at the peak, 800. The horsepower of this car is an arbitrary number. What will dictate that is how much traction do you have? How much mechanical grip can you make? With an all-wheel drive car, it's gonna matter more than anything because we have a mechanically locked front and rear. There's no center differential, it's just mechanically locked. So you're getting 50% of the power front, 50% of the power of the rear. Rotiform helped us out tremendously building us custom wheels. And this one was interesting because the loads that these wheels have to hold up are far greater than anything we've ever done. And with that, I was very, very demanding to have a lighter wheel than we've ever run. 
So the engineers went back and forth a lot and just said, this shape, look, feel, everything is the strongest and lightest possible package that you're going to be able to run on this car. They're an engineering feat just in themselves. Four-wheel drive, mid-engine, sub-2300 pound, 13-inch wide wheels on all four corners. It's built for one thing. It's built for nine minutes or less at Pikes Peak. First, let me introduce you to a friend of ours, Trevor Andrew, AKA Trouble Andrew, AKA Gucci Ghost. <laughs> it's LA, there's helicopters. All right, now for a bit of rewind. Uh, we're about three or four weeks out from the event that you're watching, and I'm here outside of Trevor's studio in Hollywood. On the way here, I actually stopped by BBI and did a seat fitting, saw the car in person for the first time, and actually met Batim for the first time face to face. So this whole process has been very cool, but this moment here, we're gonna meet Trevor, talk about the art and everything that went into the livery. I've actually known about Trevor Andrew for a long time, coming from the snowboard world. He was known as a very, very stylish snowboarder in the late 90s and early 2000s. And on top of being one of the most stylish snowboarders in the market, he was actually good enough to qualify to be in the Olympics on the Canadian team. And he actually did that twice. He had that talent at that level. So I've never actually met him face to face. I've just known him as one of the most stylish snowboarders in that industry. But as his career was sort of coming to an end, he had some injuries and he actually started living in New York and making music. And his artist name making Shoot music was there. Trouble Andrew. And that's the first time I'd actually heard that name, Trouble Andrew. So over time, I started to see something else from Trevor, uh, which was a thing he was doing called Gucci Ghost. And so Gucci Ghost was an art style and, and types of drawings that he was doing as sort of an homage to Gucci. And I, I saw that it was very cool, very fun. I really enjoyed the hand-drawn art. It somehow went from a rad, fun art style he was doing in New York, and then all of a sudden there was this huge leap to doing lines for Gucci itself, which I thought was <laughs> mind-blowing. So in seeing all that art and everything, I've always been a fan of the style that he's done, but I, I never had a connection with him. And out of the blue, Jeff Pontario up at Baldface had mentioned that I should buy some of his art. And I was like, hell yes, I would like to do this, connect us. And I just reached out and said, hey, what do you think about doing a livery for me? He said, hell yeah, and that's why we're here. I've actually not walked in yet. I just met him face to face for the first time today. Obviously been working with him by text, email, Zoom for several months now. I'm really stoked on this whole program and everything that we're doing with him. And I think it's going to make several very different, very dope liveries for my race cars. It's been a very cool process, but now we get to go hear it all from him. Woo! Damn. Yo, good, buddy. <laughs> this is really Welcome dope. to the inside of my brain. I was just saying this outside, amazing to see the transformation, right? Because we come from snowboarding. So yeah. it's cool to see everything that you've done there. So I always appreciated your style. And then appreciate to see that transfer into music and then art. So yeah. congrats. Oh, I'm thank very... you so much. As a kid, skateboarding and snowboarding was like really like my window to art. And you know, I was experiencing all kinds of music that I would have never known about through the films I was watching and getting exposed to from skating, snowboarding, and you know, visual art, artists like Mark Gonzalez. Skateboarding and snowboarding, it's like a martial art more than a sport. I think that there's so much culture within it. And we grew up reimagining a curve, being creative with like the most basic shit in front of you. And I think that that really taught me a lot. Well, I think one thing that skateboarding especially teaches you, snowboarding too, is it's not easy. And if you want to do it and do it well, you got to persevere, exactly. right? Exactly. And I think that applies then to everything else from art to business. It's a way of life. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Because yeah. it's to get, to get that one moment of glory, you know, you got to go through so much repetition, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that that's probably the most valuable thing that I learned for my life in general. Well, let's sit down. Let's yeah. talk about this stuff. Yeah, man. 
And I run off at the mouth like a soup sandwich, <laughs> so it's all good, you know? You've made some amazing stuff for us, so let's talk about that process. Uh, you know, I, I think that, that the stuff has come out incredible. Do you, can you give us some background on sort of your thoughts of what you came up with? Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, like, thank you. Thanks for reaching out to do this, because for me as an artist, like, I'm always looking for a, a new way to connect and, and use different mediums to tell a story and, and showcase my art and reach the people. So to like start imagining what a car would look like with my art on it is insane. You know, mm. I'd never done it before. I think for me, a lot of excitement comes from those new mediums or a new platform or a new vessel to get that art on and have it live in the world, you know? So I just wanted to create something that was different, that stood out in your space, you know what I mean? And think about what I would put on my own car. So I just started, you know, hitting the ground with that and taking some of my iconic imagery and symbols and started applying it to the car. And uh, here we are, man. I can't wait till the world sees it, you know? Well, I think the translation of your past and the things that you've used, like the ghost, yep. and then merging that with obviously my persona, yeah. my number, 43. The style of what we do. I think all that, like when I saw the final art, it was really a good merger kind of, of of all these different things brought together. So Yeah, for sure, man. You know, the combination, everything came together except Yeah, I mean, well. we're, we're coming from parallel worlds, you know, yeah. and we're just using different ways to express ourselves and push ourselves. And for me, yeah, it's super fun. I love to look at other people's identities, brand identities, personalities, and merge that with what I'm doing. It's really inspiring to me, actually. And I think that's sometimes where I do my best work is to collaborate with others. And, and that process is, I think it goes back to skating in the parking lot with your buddy, you know yeah. what I mean? And pushing yourself and yeah, having fun. Yeah. And by the way, we worked with Trevor to work out like a program of what we were doing. And he sort of absolutely over delivered in concepts and what he saw as a vision. So it's been able to work really well with what we want to do with the Huna Pig and then with the WRC car. And we're already looking to, you know, the next version of Electricon and how we can apply this livery to the, the Hunatron. So it's really amazing. I, I can't thank you enough. Like I, I love working with different artists because of their different styles and what they bring in. Like right. you said, like how you see Gucci and interpret like yeah. you, what you see for them. You did the same thing for us. And I, I'm really stoked. I mean, from, you know, this sort of lockup like this and the hand-drawn Hoonigan, it's just a great merger of a couple different concepts that worked out really well. I like to take things and make them have the energy of like what we really put into what we're doing, you know, and you're out there like what you do is crazy, you know what I mean? So I wanted to add that, take that Hoonigan logo, you know, make it drip, make it imperfectly perfect. Well, it's kind of fun too going from the It's a Living stuff, it's such He's a graffiti artist, but he does all that calligraphy style and so yeah. perfect that I, I love the juxtaposition of going this way and much rougher. Yeah. And I think it's a fun take on what we do. And it's something I haven't seen on race cars very much at all. So yeah. I think it's really going to pop. So obviously some of the, the style, the stuff like the, the ghost outline here comes from your history of what you've been doing with Gucci Ghost. Uh, but you gave us a lot of elements, not only a lot of art, uh, even writing out the, the Just Don't Die, that has a little background for the fact that I'm going to race Pikes Peak. There, there's a lot to that. Can you give us a little background of some of the patterns and where they came from? Because one of the backgrounds is actually from this floor, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I do paint on the floor, so I've done a lot of, like, um, abstract works that, that resemble that process or actually are a part of that process. So there's a bit of that and there's a bit of the, you know, the symbology of like, you know, like you said, like the ghost, which I always have used, even predating Gucci, it was like something that was, I grew up in haunted houses and stuff. So like it was, it's always been a, a theme um, and life and death. And I think with the storytelling within art, sometimes it's, it's really fun to use like simple symbols that, you know, almost function like a logo that, Everybody has their own attachment to them, you know, and you can determine what it means to you. And I definitely incorporated that with this livery, you know, there's a lot of story in there. All right, well, uh, one thing that we haven't 
told in this whole visual story yet so far as why I'm wearing this shirt with gold on it. So you gave us so much content that we're able to create a very, very unique livery for the Hunapig, the Porsche. Uh, but we also have a very unique and very different livery for the Hyundai WRC car that I'm racing in rally. So I think it's time that we actually show that and show why I'm wearing this gold. But really, it actually, like the art comes from some of the patterns that you use in the back of like the Gucci Ghost one up on the wall. Yeah, I like to to frame things up. The remnants that I've are left over from the process, I've really locked up with different kind of uniform ideas over top that I've experimented with creating monograms over top of this process. So yeah, that's what we did for, for that livery was just kind of blend those ideas, like take something that's really like no rules in the moment and then take something that's more thought out and uniform and place it over top. That's what we did with the Real By Ghost monogram and your car, you yep. know? So I can't wait to see those ghosts flying around, <laughs> you know? Yep. And then mixed in the chrome gold as the, as the pop color. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, thank you very much. It's oh, great to come you, by and man. actually see yeah, the studio. Yeah, anytime, man. Pull up with the car. Take <laughs> me for a drive one of these days, you know? No doubt. Well, I mean, past couple of artists have come out for a ride, uh, so. I'm with it. You down? Yeah. I, All right. I want to drive, too. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, bro. Thank you, sir. Yeah. This really was this kind of, like, perfect full circle of we had an idea we could talk about the name first which was we called it the pig or the huna pig porkers porsches called it a pig obviously a little bit of an homage to the pink pig and that's where like kind of the ideas came together as we started working and looking for the right partner to go do this project we started talking to our friends at mobile one if you guys know much about racing especially porsches you know the pegasus really sort of lives well on the side of a 911 right there's plenty of guys who have them sitting here on the front fender and that's kind of where it all grew into the Huna Pegasus. Thank you everybody. We appreciate you guys coming out. Enjoy, take some photos. But am I forgetting anything? No, I think I said everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Block's Jim Connor Grid is coming back to the United States this fall. Now, tickets are going to be on sale very soon here, but if you want to hold your spot in line, if you want to be the first to know about it, click the link in the description below. Go there, fill that out. And that's actually not just for spectating. If you want to drive, whether you're pro or amateur, go to the link below, sign up. You'll be the first to know when spots are available, and those are going to run out really quick. <laughs>
He's going to squirt some meth down its throat. Oh, <laughs> 
The goal is always to raise the bar, and it's the hardest thing about making these films. And I think for this one... Radio check, Ken, radio check. We had to think about a location that was gonna be something completely different. Derek, you good? Pictures up. Look alive, everybody. So yeah, I'm coming too. The thing about Climb Kana is, like the whole concept of it was taking Jim Kana and going somewhere else with it. And so there's all sorts of very cool hill climbs around the world. There's very cool mountain roads. And being able to take that Jim Kana style driving and our film style and go to places like Pikes Peak was really the simple concept and Pikes Peak being like the ultimate to me because of its history. Because of the racing legacy there. And because of the unique shots that were done there back in the day, because it was dirt and they were sliding the car around. But I've always wanted to take it beyond Pikes Peak. Like Pikes Peak to me was just a great starting point to now take this concept 
and go beyond. What you think, Derek? Here. Not 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 too bad, right? Jesus Christ. There's so much okay. to shoot here. Thanks. It looks so good, right? Check, check, check. Well, when Brian said we're going to China, I was like, are you sure? Really? Uh, why China? I mean, there's so many other places we haven't been. China is going to be complicated. All right, so let's get into this. I hope no one's afraid of heights. Yeah. So the road we picked for Climb Kana 2 is a highway on Tiananmen Mountain. And Tiananmen looks like something plucked out of Avatar with amazing hill climb rally road built in the middle of it. So I found this road literally by seeing a photo. It was actually like really small, like 72 DPI, like a little image. And this photo was this road wrapping around on itself. And it actually has a part where there's this complex of hairpins. And it was just so unique to see this tunnel where the road actually goes back around itself to loop up. One of the most unique driving situations I've ever seen. It just looked insane. And it also was like in the sky. I think in the shot, like the clouds were below it. So it looked like this just majestic thing. And when we found that, it took us like a year to figure out what it was attached to. I've seen it called Heaven's Gate. Uh, but the Heaven's Gate actually is a name for the hole that's at the top of this road. What were the other names for it? Do you remember? The road is also called 99 corners. Because nine's a really lucky number. So they actually built the road, I think, purposely to land on 99, because some corners you're like, that's only half of a turn. And the Chinese have deemed it so dangerous that they don't let the general public drive on it. They only run buses up it. Bus coming up. Watch how close he gets. No fear. Full roll, lifting tire. Yeah, yeah, this mountain is absolutely crazy. But look at how sketchy that is. You just about that. That's your pucker moment, huh? That is the pucker. Moment. Every film has to have a pucker Thanks. moment. But I know these look like you can't go through them, but you hit that fast enough with the truck, it'll just back up over it. And it's all wheel drive, so it'll climb. You can just climb it. Yeah. The big difference between this road and Pikes Peak really is the drama of it. And when I say drama, I mean that the, where Pikes Peak, you're kind of traveling a long distance. Here, the actual vertical distance is really compressed. It goes really kind of straight up this mountain with a big series of switchbacks and only six to seven miles, 10 kilometers. And it's dangerous. Like it's, I obviously don't like necessarily the danger aspect of it. I don't even want to fathom it, because like Ken goes over, it's not like, oh, let's go see if he's okay. Like, it, that's just... But that's what also makes this look so cool, and why it looks so dynamic. Anyway, next question. <laughs> it's crazy how the chicken nuggets taste just like chicken nuggets at home. I'm going to think I'm going. Should we just have her freeze up? It's 7.30, yeah. We'll move her Hey, it's been super cool on the scout. We're off now back to the hotel to meet with Ken and go off and, uh, and load the car. It's very important that if we're going to race or we're going to film or we're going to do a demo, that our equipment is 100% right from the beginning. So now we're in China, we're at a national park, but somehow there's a place that does like Fast and Furious style demos. All right, so we are out here, or I am out here in China. I believe the city's called, bear with me, Zhangji Dai, Zhangji Zhang Zhai Zhe. Zhang Zhai Zhe. Yeah, I literally did not expect you guys to be in this elevator right now. I was, I was like, all right, I'm going to do my intro in the elevator. I'm going to do my intro in the elevator and then I'll catch up with these guys. But we're here. We're, if you've been on Facebook, you've probably seen the stunt show where there's like Fast and the Furious cars and all kinds of other crazy things. And we're going there. Yeah. What's it called? Some kind of extreme stunt show thing. We're here filming Climb Kana. This happens to be the same location that we're using to like shake down Ken's car. And we went there the other day to just scout it and we realized that they had a bunch of drift cars and some other weird things like semi trucks that they drive on two wheels. So it's Friday night, we got nothing to do. So we're gonna go check it out. 
Welcome to uh, Bernard, China. <laughs> And that worked out perfect for us. So let's see if everything's made it in one piece. You never know if the truck's going to get damaged or something in transit. So uh, fingers crossed, everything's okay. The Huna truck is the sequel to the Hunicorn. But for Jim Connor 10, we wanted to do something different, very different. We said, let's build a truck. We've never built a truck before. It is a 1977 Ford F-150, a truck that I grew up driving in. But really, the body is kind of where that stopped. If you squint a little bit from far away, it just looks like a farm truck. And then you get up to it, and you're like, oh, man, look at all this stuff. All wheel drive, over 900 horsepower, and over 700 foot-pounds of torque. That all comes from twin turbo V6 engine that was one of the development engines for their Ford GT program that went on to win Le Mans. Thank you, Ford. That being said, we, we've barely used it. Yo, Ken, you want to tell people what we're <laughs> I get to go drive that thing. It's only like my second or third time driving it. So the point of today, shakedown for Climb Kana to here in Zhengzhou, China. I'm so glad you could say that. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. I'm sure the internet's gonna rip me apart. Just say it with like, confidence. No, it's Zhengzhou. Say it with confidence. Yeah, you just say it like you know it. I think one of the biggest differences for the team between racing and Jim Connor is that they probably don't have as much preparedness to get involved. Like they're not dealing with setup as much and, and changing that, but they are dealing with the unknown. Like they don't know what's going to go wrong. It's kind of strategic packing for sure. You can't bring everything just because you're limited on space. You've only got one of these 40 foot containers. So you just pick off the big items that you really need. You have the suspension, you have subframes, you have body panels, and you have anything that would actually run the vehicle. First days on location are always pretty generically the same. Freak it unloaded, quantity check everything, make sure we have everything that we need before we start filming. So the boys are over there right now just checking the engine, making sure everything looks right as much as it did when it went into the container. They'll change the fuel to get it running, make sure it comes up the temperature, everything's just fine there. They're also right now, it was fitted with its aluminum body panels, which are extremely expensive. So they're just popping all those off, putting steel ones back on. The only problem we have is, as you can see, the steel ones are not wrapped. So they need to be fit and then they come off and our Irish guy, Johnny, he goes over and wraps everything that we have. Small changes, visually, new hood, white wheels are going on. Well, wait, we have new Toyo tires. What's special about these new tires? It's the same tire they use for Jim Sand, but with a, a different rubber in it. It's kind of wild, you don't realize how big they are when you see them on the truck. It's supposed to be a 500 treadwear tire, but it has like the compound in it of like a 200 treadwear, like an Archer pulley. Mm. So extra sticky, extra smoky. So we're taking the yep. track after this. Yeah. So some time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is kind of like this weird hurry up and wait moment. I've been here for over a week. I got here before everyone else did. I've already been on the mountain like five times. Uh, this is something that like, I just want. Anyway, you getting what you want? guess it's time to go. Truck's on the move. It felt good to finally get in the truck and be able to start driving. Cause that's the beginning. That's how this really starts for me is when I get in the truck and actually hit the start button and start ripping that thing around.
So how's it feel driving this thing for the fourth time? <laughs> It's good. Look this there. surface is really slippery. Oh yeah. I mean, does it doesn't look like it's just moving around really easily? It moves really easy. Yeah, this is like the complete opposite of the mountain. <laughs> but something's wrong with the drivetrain, so. What's wrong? I'm just. I don't know. And the good thing is it happened here, but it's good to have something happen now, oh, yeah, and not sure. up there. The binding of the dips felt a little rough, and then there at the end, it just something let go. I don't know where or what. Felt maybe like a dip. But might be one one drive shaft, I don't know. I just didn't want to drive it anymore. Is it on throttle? On throttle straight away, top. We had a few issues, but that's the whole point. The whole point of shaking something down is teething. We want to see what breaks and I'm happy it broke today instead of breaking tomorrow. <laughs> this is turn uh, 88. Okay, Beemore, come over here. Here's a ladder for you, Beemore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't pay me a billion dollars. No. That is literally on the top of my nope list. This whole thing, I'm circling nope on my whole book of nope. This is it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get off here. I'm gonna be the first person to, to hike a 90 pound camera and for the entire tour. We're getting there. It is heavy. I just actually, if you didn't know, I, I just tripled my rate. It's now one million a day. Oh, poor B more. Let's put slippers on to make it just add a little bit of more drop value to this big ass camera. It's a little slippery with these things. Yeah. Oh. I'm sweating profusely. Do you see how bad I'm sweating? I don't know if it's from nervous or I'm just hot or both. Well, this is our vantage point. But as you can see, there's going to be a little bit of foot traffic. Turn 88 is our priority here. The one that looks like a little snake down there. Imagine just following. Oh yeah, for sure. It would be incredible. This mountain is so difficult to shoot, but at the same time, it's also so beautiful. I jokingly said, I don't think there's a single bad angle, but it's also trying to get the best angle. We've always like had random cameos. So when we were going to China, the thought was we need a new character that comes out or a new cameo. And since Jackie Chan didn't answer our phone calls, we figured a panda was second best. <laughs> Can we say that? We want to know like how many turns you gonna do? Um, the guy that we hired, unfortunately, bit of a language barrier. As soon as he comes in behind you, you start moving, and the second one will be a lot tighter. And then on the third one. Trying to explain to him what to do was a little difficult. I mean, he actually seemed a little concerned. Our friend Vin right here, he hasn't actually done the Segway gag yet. So we're gonna let him feel it here for the first time. So that way, the first time he feels Ken coming around him at 50 miles an hour, it's not on the mountain. I just kept going through in my head, like how messed up this must be for this guy. Like he's probably thinking, what did I sign up for? What am I doing here? All right, just locked and loaded with the HHIC in the hooded truck. Never ridden in this vehicle before. Six cylinder, twin turbo, 900 horsepower. Sounds absolutely wild. <laughs> I can't get the right pitch. Yeah, you gotta like, you know, yeah. Yeah, because it's not just a direct sound, it's like a, a sound hitting something. Yeah, 
boy. And those were just, just those donuts. He wasn't even going too fast, and it still feels wild. How do you get used to that? I thought I heard the car breaking up a little bit, and then Derek told me, Hertz in there, it's an extra 300 pounds. Uh, excuse me, 285. 285, all right? 285. Get your numbers straight. I haven't even driven in this thing yet. I got to ride first, so I win. Right off the bat, you just felt the energy going in a positive direction. Like, okay, we're about to shoot for a couple days in a new location for all of us, a new country for all of us, and so far so good, let's kill it. At this point, the location's there, Hopefully the camera ops get the shot. We've scouted and done everything here, and now I hate to say it, but it's all up to Ken. That's what I'm really stoked about. Like, I have such an appreciation for this road that it's gonna be cool to not only be able to go drive it, but capture it in such a unique way that we're really gonna be able to showcase just how wild this road is. Everybody should be in their first positions, please. I'm not fully comfortable. I've got jet lag. Up, up, up. And there's always something lost in translation. I just want to get going so that I can focus on what I need to do. I think that was it, baby. You really don't see just how steep this mountain is. It's not like there's a ditch that you're gonna roll into or if Ken had an issue that he has an out. I mean, it is 300 feet, 600 feet, 900 feet at points, but it is straight down. that everything goes fine, etc. Then you got to about three times this way, you get a cardinal point, and then you plant them in there. Okay. I prayed that we'd get great shots and Ken doesn't die. Seemed like, it seemed like a good thing to pray for. All right, so day one, it's about like 4.30 in the morning. We're here at the base of the mountain, getting ready for the first shot. First shot's the easy one. We're just kind of starting this off. It's our launch. But now we're just waiting for the sun to rise up. I'm always nervous until the first real trick gets done. How you doing? Yay, dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll start with the lights off. Down there? No, they added that. What's it say? Tiger, mud. Air, which actually is how you spell it in the game. Everybody should be in their first positions, please. Uh, we started our day with Ken coming out of the tunnel, the narrative opening to the film itself. Well, the first day of shooting, I'm always a little bit nervous because I don't know the road surface yet. I'm not fully comfortable with the truck. I've got jet lag and I just want to get going so that I can focus on what I need to do in the truck. Pierre. Have uh, Shreve push in a little bit. Okay, we ready? Ready, ready. Ready, 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 ready. Headlights. Three, two, one. Action, action. And 
that was pretty much perfect. I mean, if I was gonna beg, I'd say hang it out a little bit more at the exit, but not by much. You got two feet before you hit that statue. The truck felt great. I was able to put it right where I wanted, and we started off the shoot on a high note. Dan, green light, green light. Drone in the air. Three, two, one, action, action, action. The drone's not tilting up fast enough. They need to tilt up and way faster because right, Ken's slowing go down. Yep, we're gonna do one go over here. So, no replay, lay back. Yeah. So pause. As soon as it enters your frame, yeah. up. Lose him before he gets there. Okay, got it. Okay. Ready? Okay, ready? Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, action, action. Going again? No, they're, they're, it's, they're not getting the shot. They just don't. We have time to do another. You're going to stress Ken out. Okay. This is the point where Ken will get mad for the rest of the okay. day. Alright, so not back happening. it up. We'll just pass it off. Right. Backing it up, guys. We're moving to our next shooting location. Okay. 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 On the woman, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. We took a chunk out of the tree. Oh, what? With what? Really? Back. Going to do a quick tire warm up. Ended up going wide and putting the wing into that tree. It's one way to start off with a shoot here at Heaven's Gate. Just give it a bit of a, a, bit of a tidy up. Take a little bit of rock over there now and we'll never know. Hopefully. We wanted to pick this vehicle because juxtaposed to the small roads here in China, it seemed like it made a lot of sense. Like, oh yeah, let's take a big American truck and put it on these small Chinese roads. But then when you're standing in China, you think to yourself, maybe this was the wrong truck to bring. It's pretty sketchy, it's kind of narrow passage and these drivers are very skilled. They drive very fast. Mr. Holt, this is God speaking. I've come to smite you. Not worthy. Okay, from there, can you measure out 22 feet? That's your starting point. Anything that, that happened during this film had a, had a difficulty because of language. Communicating with Panda Man was tricky because you have to talk to somebody who really is bilingual. That bilingual has to talk to him, and there's always something lost in translation. I've done this a bunch of different times, but I think this is a new thing for this guy, and I hope he doesn't mess up. I don't want to put the front of my truck into his knees. You have a green light, Derek. Ready, ready? Oh, I am ready, ready, green light. All right, cameras are rolling, and cars on the move. In three, two, one, action, action. Can we go again quick? We slow him down though. Yeah, slow him Straight down, 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 slow him down a little bit more. He looked like he was moving too fast. Too fast. I think Ken's having a hard time getting the truck yeah. to cooperate. I think the panda head's actually a little bit difficult for him to see exactly where he's going. He didn't even want to talk to us while he was doing it because he was trying to concentrate so much which is a little annoying because we're trying to tell him to slow down and he's just concentrating going too quickly. And cars on the move in three, three two, two, one, action, action. Ken's at two. Let's uh, cut panda, please. Cut panda. All right, playback. 
you tighten up real nice here. That's good. I feel like we'll have some good moments there. I agree though, like the exit doesn't have that flare, which right. is like usually you come out of it and you're super crossed up and you're bringing it back together. Yeah. So I'd like to get that. Why it looks panda look so sad? I know, I told him to keep his head up, but it was sad panda. All right, let's do one more take. Second trick of the day, we're up and moving, things start to feel good, and then we're stopped again. Here, what's happening? Hey guys. We are in a 30 minute timeout. What? From the park. Wait, so backed up down below, the people riding up that have paid money are almost throwing riots. We were told by the mountain, hey, everything's in timeout. The mountain kind of felt like we were holding traffic for too long. I don't think it was us holding it longer. I think it was just their perception that this lockup was going to be shorter, and it wasn't. They thought it was going to be two or three buses lining up. All of a sudden, you had 45 buses. They kind of had a little mutiny between the drivers on the up climb, the drivers on the down, and the passengers. And so they freaked out, and they said, OK. So the park said, look, just give us 30 minutes to bleed this out before we shoot again. So 1025, we can start shooting again. You never want to slow things down. That's just the worst, especially we just kind of got into a groove. Hold for a second, Cam. They're releasing traffic. They've released traffic. Hold, Cam. Yeah. Panda, ready, ready? Panda, ready, ready? Panda's, ready, ready. Panda's in position. Here we go. Cars on the move in three, three two, two, one. Action, action. action, action. action, action. That follow was good. Sick. Let's go. Replay. Hi, Ken is at two. Cut panda, cut panda. I like watching the panda just continuing to go. So we're just jumping in here real quick and go position some guys for some transition stuff we're shooting right now. Just you. Find a spot, maybe up on this ledge, wherever. Get in where you fit in. What would you like me to do at this location? Uh, like whip pan. From the inside? Yeah, inside, outside, I don't care, it's just transition. So for transitions, it's usually single camera. It's one person covering one corner or one section. Real run and gun. I'll Play around, and every time he passes, change up your angle. Okay. You know make it all, make it all fast shots, not long shots. Brandon, that's a stupid question. I don't nail any shots. Hurt's been working with the company for a while now. And I still don't think he knows how to use a camera. I've actually been uh, secretly letting my AC shoot everything. Oh, okay. So I don't have to do anything. And this vest is sick, right? Action, action. How long a uh, lens do you have? You got wides. All right, well, see what you can find. Again, it's just a different angle. So they found out I had a pretty good angle over here, so they sent Magic over here to get the shot. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> this is a way bigger camera. You know they say? The bigger the camera, the... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a wide, so you always get it. You just point it, got it done, no problem. <laughs> Brandon, stop zooming in on my face. So next up, we have Dragon Slide. And for me, this is kind of the first trick that we're actually doing. 
Segway's a trick, but like the danger level on Segway, other than for the sad panda, is pretty minimal. This one, we're looking to actually get a bit of like a tail drag. So similar to what we did in Climb Kana, it's gonna be the same concept here, but the goal is to stick the wing like right over the edge of the KRL. So yeah, hopefully it goes well. The last trick of the day, so which is great because you could take more risks if you break the car and he has to fix it. Look at that face. <laughs> really? All right, here we go, guys. We are ready, ready, and rolling, please. In three, two, one, action, action. I don't know, that might be a one take Jake. As Hertz said, Hertz said that is some daddy shit or AKA Baba. That's how you say daddy here in China. To get the, the camera positions right, the drone movement right, get the perfect slide of the car. And even though I hit the blocks on the entry of the corner, it still didn't mess up my line. It just was one of those perfect moments that happens every once in a while in one of these shoots. Yeah, I think we're good. So uh, that's a day. So nice work on first day. That was a good first day. We're done. No major injuries. Got all the shots. He's excited. He's stoked. Day one down. It's a good day. That last shot. That's what we wanted. Today we're starting out bright and early here in the morning. The sun's just coming up, the fog's in the mountains, and this is turn 43, the second setup of the day and a big, big sketchy moment. We've actually got this drop off that's somewhat like the Evo Corner on Pikes Peak. Not that that wasn't sketchy, but this is a real drop off. If you go off here, it's a straight 900 feet down to the next ribbon of road. It's properly sketchy. So the goal here is for Ken to come in here, right? And then Ollie you 360. So a regular 360 would be like an over rotation, right, into a turn. But this is Ali Oop, so he comes in this way, goes the opposite direction, and then heads out. Does that make sense? And it actually, the surface here is super slick. Like, if you look, it almost looks like someone sprayed it with clear coat. So the goal will be for Ken to come down the non-shiny side, which is where a lot, a lot grippier, throw it sideways to slow it down, and then flick it in to Ali Oop. Matt, do you like our fake rock? I do like our fake rock. Somehow, Every corner out of the 99 corners, number except for two. And then one of them happened to be Ken's 43. Oh no, we took it on pre-scout. Oh, you guys already took it home with you? <laughs> we took it home. Check baggage, right? Check luggage. <laughs> of all of the locations, the one that was probably at the biggest risk for the camera operators was the 43, 45, that area. Just because it was sheer drops and we really needed guys to be on the outer edge. And some of those guys had to be standing there while the car was passing by. They also can be a little unprofessional sometimes on our set. <laughs> hey, bus coming up, don't get your kit. Because there is a casualness to it, right? And a lot of these guys do mountain climbing and there's moments these guys are walking out on rocks. I'm like, what are you doing? <sighs> it's one of those things like, I trust them to get the shot. I just don't trust them not to kill themselves. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, here we go, guys. Okay, roll camera. Cars on the move, and three, three two, two, one, one action, action.
Yeah, keep it hot locked, guys, hot locked. Ken, I uh, might want to even do two rotations on the 360 to build a bit more smoke. Stop. Did you say stop? Yeah. Stage at one. Sorry, Ken. Stage. Stage at one. I just heard stop. Sorry. When there's any question, I just say stop. No, that's fine. I didn't hear I'm what you said, you so that. I was like, stop. I'm glad you did that. I appreciate that. Three, two, one, action, action. Anytime that we shoot on a very dangerous spot like this, I go and walk the road and look at everything and there's all sorts of different surface changes in that area. There was some foliage sticking out from the side. There was actually some water coming down from a small drainage pipe. So I knew it was a little bit slippery and I knew that that might happen at some point. I was prepared for it and was able to shut down the truck. For me, that, that laugh is kind of like, whoo, that worked, you know, like. We're lucky that we work with great people that don't mind being put into bad positions. <laughs> All right, cameras, uh, we're moving on. So uh, get the rest of your selfie shots done and let's get this going. <laughs> They're all out there like standing on the edge, like doing the like, I might die. Derek ordered one of those like green screen suits yeah. and we've told Jody that there's a special shot that we're gonna need him in. I've done some shit for this team before. So we're gonna put him in it now, but we're just gonna keep him in it for the rest of the day. Just so the whole day he's gonna stay in the suit. Who designed this thing? They sort of got some sort of dwarf thumbs. <laughs> the zip on the suit is broken. You've got to try, help? try and rethread that zip. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'm not getting paid to do this. <laughs> Listen, is this in the job title? You're not going to zip my wienery there, are you? You can't afford to lose anything. Those guys spend a lot of their days just waiting for calamity. So if the little bit of joy that they can get in between that is screwing with Jody, it's totally fine by me. All right, Dan, when you're ready, ready, I'm going to start for a full launch here. Three, two, one, action, action. I think that was it, baby. One of the big jokes on set was that Hurt was getting all the bangers. That was money. And all of the other shooters are just way more accomplished, like, camera operators. Like, these guys are real professionals, and Hurt just <laughs> kind of shows up, doesn't really know his camera as well as these guys, but still manages to kind of grab that shot. <laughs> For me or not? Yeah. I think a lot of that's because Hertz a driver too, so he really understands like where the car is gonna be. Yeah. In a lot of ways, while he may not be as technically proficient, a little shaky at the end. He totally gets just what that like attitude and vibe needs to be in a shot. You got to see the whole outside of the car, full front and then inside of the car. I like that. So I'm gonna try that again. Stay more steady at the end and let him go away. I tried to chase him a little too far. All right, this time. I'm not gonna jump around after my shot. It just all happened so quickly and it's so exciting.
Back down, going back down. Sometimes when I'm, I'm driving this big a vehicle on that narrow road, I'm so focused on different points on the road and what I'm trying to do that you miss other small points and there just happened to be a block sticking out slightly further than the others. And I clipped it. But it looked like he barely even hit and the whole thing crumbled. Jody, we're gonna pick you up here. The first thought is, how long is this gonna put us behind? It was a bigger deal mechanically than Derek had anticipated. They had to get the truck off the mountain to the shop, work on the truck, hopefully to be able to salvage the back end of our day. Luckily, it was just a small control arm snap, it looked like. Obviously, ate up a bunch of time, but there were monkeys in the trees, so it kept all of us occupied. There's a monkey in there somewhere. Oh, oh there he is. Oh, it's tiny. There's a little baby. Yo, there's a couple babies. Oh, there's so many monkeys. Yeah. HRD is an amazing team. Then they treat this film like they're in a race, so they know that every minute counts. Go on, guys. Go on. And what's great about these guys is they will fashion anything to make it work. We placed one of these in the front, one of these in the rear. They're broken through there. Uh, we're on the damp amount back to the body. Um, you know, the, the HRD squad, the things that I've seen them do over the last eight years, it's absolutely incredible to watch, and I've, I still, to this day, have never seen anything like it. I mean, it was 100%. There were no changes to the dynamics of how the truck felt at all. So if you want to know what it looks like to get a banger, it looks like this. Pretty high demanding roads for Ken here. The truck's so big and the roads are so tight. But we've got back on track, so we'll see how tomorrow goes. Joe, Keep everyone in position. If we get the moment, we'll go for it. The entire mountain was closed in by fog. It's all sketchy. Don't hit this. Don't hit that. Oh, understeer, great. It's supposed to be a fun shoot. I want a fun shoot. Even if Ken falls off the corner, we have a film. Scotto jinxed it. It's pretty bad, huh? What's up? If you're just tuning in, you missed the big announcement earlier today. It is that Ken Block's Gymkhana Grid Race Series is coming to America this fall. That's right. Tickets will be on sale soon, so go check the link below in the description to hold your spot. Not only that, if you want to compete, same link will get you all the info of how to enter, what classes there are going to be, what kind of car you might want to build. That link alone, that'll get you all the info as it comes out. Whether you're a pro or you want to come race us jabronis, see if you're faster than us. Jabroni class. Jabroni class. <laughs> So it's day three, climb kind of two, yeah. at the tail end of the shoot, and the crew's absolutely been shredding. 
We got bangers on top of bangers. Ken's been putting the truck everywhere it needs to be. And I can't think of, uh, of us executing a shoot any better than this. We've absolutely been killing it. I forget which turns which. I, when I said 98, I meant that one there. For day three, we're focused on the top part of the mountain. We've got the upper section, which is the upper 90s. Burnouts at the top, layer cake. And then we also have corner 69, which we've been referring to as Psalm 69. If you like ministry, you'll understand why. Well, the uh, good news is that the giant keyhole here that's like a main part of the shot is now getting fogged in even more. I don't look at the weather report oh, at all when I'm home. When I'm on set, I want to look at like 50 times. Go, go, go. The entire mountain was closed in by a cloud or fog, and especially the Heaven's Gate hole. This is what makes that mountain what it is. We can't really be waiting on fog because we're there for three, four days, and we need to get this done. We're ready. Right there. Right there. Go to Bye, Ken. Drive good. All uh, right, camera team, camera team. Everybody get to positions, please. Let's get our vests off. All right, another good day. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get it going. Let me know, please. Dan, let me know when uh, KB's heading towards vehicle. Yes, sir, KB's just doing a quick 10 one, and I will uh, let you know when he gets to the car. <laughs> Got that. I'm starting to think that that's a ritual. Upper 90s is a really cool section. It's actually just really fast. It's probably one of the fastest sections on the mountain, which is these long runs and then a hairpin and then a long run. It, it's almost identical to what is Cog Corner and the way that Pikes Peak ends. So it's the cool section and it allows us to kind of show the car in a different way. Everything's so tight up until this point. We can let it breathe and show these much bigger shots of the car just like absolutely boogieing, you know, top of six gear. Uh, let me know when KB's back in the car, Derek, please. Yeah, he's back in the car, helmet's going on, which we're about 30 seconds away. Ready, ready, guys? Roll cameras. Oh, wow. Ready, 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 ready. Sketchy. Yeah. It doesn't drive very well when it's cold. Car was warm, tires were warm, and it just wanted to understeer all over the place. Yeah, great way to wake up. <laughs> Brian, what's up? Any playback worth watching? If you want to go watch it, you can go watch it. What's really cool is the last moment coming through here because you hit that bump. And the truck gets like squirrels a little bit. <laughs> It just looks super sketch. Can you do that faster? <laughs> sketch moment's good. You don't like that? No, I don't like. I don't like that moment. I don't like any of the sketchy. It's all sketchy. Don't hit this. Don't hit that. Oh, understeer. Great. Why is it randomly throttling? I don't know. It's supposed to be a fun shoot. I want a fun shoot. Just a little sketchy. Yeah. A little bit more. Sketchy. The hairpins are fun. Setting up for the final shot of the piece, which is this big smoky burnout for the end credits. And we're right here underneath the Heaven's Gate, which is currently filled with fog, which is sort of a bummer. I'll tell you but what the best part is. Here we go. Is it, <laughs> he's gonna do a burnout. He's gonna take it all the way down to the wheels. I and forgot the tires are gonna explode. It hasn't done this since Jim Connor 3. <laughs> But 
it's gonna be sick because he's gonna blow the tires up. Ozzy burnhouse out. Yay, burn tires off. Um, these tires are very thick. It's not gonna be an easy Auto. thing. Just so you know, I spoke to Derek and he said that he actually w thinks the tread right? on the tires is so the thick. Yeah, we can't, we'll right? never get down uh, to popping them. Got it. Like at least not. So we'll just let, we let him run donuts, donuts until Derek yeah. feels that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's no reason to blow the motor now. It'll okay. be a dumb thing to do. Okay, so. got it. Nope. Final burnout, this is the end of the film. Luckily there was enough pavement here that we figured like, just let Ken come in here and just like absolutely shred and just try to rip the tires off the truck. Just. But it was all about getting the right shot and getting the right angle and the whole thing was seeing that hole come through. It was all about that. And obviously the day we have to film here is the day it's overcast. Oh, oh, oh let's, let's, get, let's get ready, guys. We have all. Oh, here we go, guys. All right, guys, uh, let's start clearing back. Let's get Finally got our hole. Turn to P1, bro. Oh, man, it's already starting to come in. Yeah. Let me know when you're ready, ready. Radio check, Ken, radio check. Right. Look alive, everybody. All right, Ken, ready, ready. Can I get him going? Yeah, cars on the move in three, three two, two, one. Action, action. Uh, let's conserve tires for a minute and see if this cloud moves through because it just covered the hole again. So just sit tight, Joe, keep everyone in position. We if we get the moment, we'll go for it. Two minutes, three minutes. Two minutes. Do, you feel like do we have bus on lock right now? Yes, we did. So we have two minutes we'll to work done here. We'll wait if we get something in two minutes, otherwise we're wrapped. People always ask about why we have to do multiple takes. Is it the car? Is it the camera? A lot of times, it's just the weather. On a situation like this, dealing with weather on a mountain, we're dealing with Mother Nature. Nature. We want a particular shot. We want it to look good. For us, it was just a bit of a waiting game. Make sure it looked right. All right, Ken, let's get ready. Let's One get ready. Point. Hurt's gonna get the first shot. He'll step out. Everyone shoot. Shoot even on Hurt. Roll cameras. We are rolling, rolling. Three, One, two, one. Guys, we gotta go here. Action, action. Magic, try to give me a little more top of the hole if you can. Alright, let me know when you're safe. Let me know when you're safe. That's it. All right, very nice work, Ken. Whew. Kinda got that. Done here. Yeah, we're done here. All right, Hopefully we, we got are getting ready to go. All right, guys, uh, nice work, everyone. Let's pack it up, we'll move it to the next location. We'll pack it up, move it to the next location. Copy, thank you, thank you. They're gonna have a really hard time cleaning all this tire debris off. They're gonna know he was here for a while. Now let's go do the big layer cake. The corner we call layer cake is actually one of my favorite parts of the entire mountain, but it's the feature that first drew me to looking at this road. I, I just haven't seen anything like this anywhere else in the world. This is probably our toughest one to cover from a production side. There's nowhere to stand. Everything off the edge is instant death. So we've got guys up on rocks and out on cliff edges. We have some people close to walls, which is also really dangerous. Please be careful up there, guys. I have like fear by proxy on that one. And then we're putting a lot of faith on our drone. Pierre was having the drone sent up and frame the shots and all we came back with was a gray image. But layer cake is the whole reason we're here, so it's all about getting this one right. Derek, please uh, let Ken know that. We're holding for fog. 
It just ended up being a waiting game to get the right conditions of what we are looking for to then be able to shoot. It's definitely stressful. It, have you had these up here? No. Sweet corn chip? People talk about them. Oh. Magnifique. Okay, roads look clear. Best stack on, please. Cars on the move. And three, two, one, action, action. I mean, now that I'm a dad, I guess I could say, Larry Cake was a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs>like Colin has an attachment to his GoPros like they each have not names. like we do yeah <laughs> we're like oh that one looks broken oh yeah it's definitely broken it's like Jasmine, oh, can I get another GoPro my favorite I've had you for seven years <laughs> I mean layer cakes the reason we came here and despite some weather we kind of got through it pretty easily so I'm stoked with what we got I'm really stoked with Ken's driving on it only thing that's next is Psalm 69 33. Look at how much Derek's enjoying himself. That is pure joy. All right, well, at least at this point, even if Ken falls off the corner at 69, we have a film. Man, that's good. Scotto jinxed it. Yeah, yeah. Everything else from here is gravy. So this corner actually does make me a bit nervous. It's one of the most dynamic looking corners on the entire mountain. The turn is, isn't a flat turn. It's actually an uphill turn. There's a lot of grip. The corner opens and tightens. The part that I was really nervous about with that was, would the car keep sliding with all this grip on this uphill section? Well, I found out real quick in one try. Was too much grip. It's pretty bad, huh? I couldn't get the car to slide up the hill the way I wanted to, and it just pulled me into the inside of the corner, and I clipped the rock on the inside. So we didn't actually see the crash because of the way the cameras were. I only saw him enter the turn and then not leave it. And then got the call that, uh, shit. It's a weird energy when something like that happens, especially like on such a good shoot. I can't even put it into words. Like you just gotta shut up and hopefully it gets fixed and then you get back to it. I was expecting it to go wider, but it just didn't. It just okay. it oh, you heard me on the radio. No, no, no. I was like, I'll do it the no, same. No, 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 no. <laughs> I told you all along. <laughs> when you see the car up there, the road looks so white. Come on. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're in a good position at the moment with uh, the truck on the side of the road. When something like that happens, it's terribly disappointing because it's all it's all me. Like, I'm the one that caused this because of a decision I made on how to drive that particular moment. I knew I could have taken the safe route and we could have gotten the shot and been done, but 
things had gone so well. We'd had so many of these moments on this mountain where I nailed everything either first or second try that I just wanted to risk it and take the most difficult route on this one. And yeah, it was really disappointing to have that sort of damage to the truck and have to stop at that moment. Let's just get the people here so we can get the actual team on the low load. Yeah. And this is what makes working with these guys amazing. They're rally car techs. Like these guys are so used to putting together cars that have rolled through the woods and they come in and they have a half an hour, 45 minutes to assess the damage, fix it and get the car back out on the road. They're just looking at the clock of like, how can we speed this up? How can we save not just a half hour, but how can we save two minutes? At one point, oh, we just see all these buses coming up until they literally get right to us. And the same from the top. There's really nowhere to go. There's two lanes, and both of them are blocked by Kent's truck. It was literally just backed up as far as the eye could see, just buses filled with angry tourists who had no idea why they couldn't get through. We were just watching this from above. It's turning into mayhem. And then, you know, of course, all the jokes started coming out. Ken blocks the road, the new film, you know, or Boss Kana. It was, it was a very interesting situation. It was wild. It was so wild. So day three, even with the crash, I think it went exceptionally well. Being able to drive at the top of the mountain there and even the layer cake, that's the reason why I love this mountain. Those are the things I wanted to drive. So even though we had the issue with the crash, no one died, truck had a little bit of damage, but that's life. So today's day four, you know, we need to go back for revenge on corner 69. I actually know that I'm gonna drive a bit more conservative on this. I took the risky route on day three, but now it's day four, I need to get this shot. All right, so Ken, what I'm looking for today is for you to do 75% of what you did yesterday, just not the last 25%. Oh, he loves that. <laughs> Scott, I'll stand by. Mm -hmm. Here we go, please, guys. And we are rolling, rolling. 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 And cars on the move in three, three two, two, one. Action, action. Is there a problem? The gear lever just... <laughs> the gear lever broke off. <sighs> That's just when we start running out of luck at that point. Camera's down, land the drone. Well, That's an insane one. Yeah. Really bad timing. I think that corner hates us. Luckily, the team was able to fix it quite quick, and we were able to continue on. How do you say action? Kesha. 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 Three, two, one, action, action. I gotta learn one, two, three again. It's er. <laughs> Son. R-E-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-
uh, the last shot of every shoot is called the martini, but there's a good chance that Ken will open up the That's side of the uh, bus and hits it with the wing, so we're calling it the sardini. <laughs> Nick just gave me that look like, don't, don't tell me that. Don't, don't tell me that. You don't think kill a meme for you? First rule about meme chat, you don't talk about meme chat. There's hundreds of them. It's all just inside jokes. Well, I mean, the Probably memes DPR predate, bus, uh, right way predate Clanton. It started as a camera crew thing. They basically yeah, caught wind okay. that we had our own meme ready, chat and they got jealous. Everyone's so, so they that. So they bullied their way in. We were like, ah, oh, we feel bad for him. Let's let him end the meme chat. I'll front, I, I'll be honest, I, I bullied my way in like three years ago. Because they used to all be memes about me. So now there's none about me anymore. Which makes me think there's another secret meme chat. <laughs> and that laugh means there is. There's not another secret meme chat. We're all one. Give me your phone. We're all Give me one. your phone right now. You don't pay for it. <laughs> yeah. We have a secret meme chat. We drop bombs in it. Watch your back, bus coming out. See ya. <laughs> Last shot of the shoot, Climb Kana 2 is about to be a wrap. Ken's gonna send it full backwards down this, Johnny. I may or may not be driving a bus while he does it. So you need to come in like super backwards here, bring it all the way out to there and then drive up. And then on the second one, bus with bus proximity. This shot we wanted as a very aggressive entry and a backwards sort of slide around the corner. And for some reason, Brian had this wild hair that he wanted to throw like another vehicle into the equation, which I kind of laughed off in the beginning, but then he kept pushing it. And then it ended up being that he wanted to hurt to drive it. Diego's been trying. Trust me, this has been a, this has been a, a week long conversation. At the end of the day, the mountain was like, nobody's driving this bus but our bus drivers. So, thank you, sir. That got scrapped. Which was kind of a relief to me because then I could just focus on getting the truck as backwards as possible around the corner. Yes. What I recommend is trying to come in, like, Scando. get some sort of shot looking this way because hopefully it unsettles. And then I just whip hard, leave it in second, and really try to try to get more sideways than anywhere else with more smoke. Just fill it out. You want to jump in? We'll go to video, man. Yep. We need to get going. This is going to be one of those ones where it starts downpouring the second we get the lock. Get a good amount of rain here, is what I'm hearing. It really put a lot of pressure on us because we knew we were going to get maybe only one more take. So Ken didn't have the chance to get comfortable. He just had to go for it. Great line. Copy that. Here we go, guys. Picture's up. All right, guys, we rolling, are. rolling. Cars on the move in three, two, two one. Action, action. I knew you could do it. When you catch I knew you could do it. Please. Good. I'm glad you like that. I think I can do it better. I knew that the, the last take wasn't perfect. I wanted a better exit. I wanted a more aggressive entry. And so I wanted one more try at it. We're going to go again uh, as soon as he's back to one. He is passing me now. All the way back to the edge. I mean, that's. He, he's annoyed because he wasn't back on the throttle fast enough. But. I think it's pretty good. I mean, this still harks back to Jim Connor one and like the backwards entry around the cone. I'm still chasing that moment. Like I want that moment in every video because that's the stuff I like to watch, but it's starting to rain. That was sketchy going up the last time. So there was a lot of pressure for me doing that last try. Action, action. action. That was it. Perfect. 
All right, sir. I would say that was perfect. To end the action part of that video on that sort of note, very happy about like how I drove the truck all through the video, but especially that last moment. Let's scoop everybody up. That is a wrap, guys. Thank you, thank you. That is a wrap. That's some shit on your work, man. For us to be able to go to China with an incredible crew of very talented people, it's just incredible. So I really genuinely think I'm one of the luckiest race car drivers in the entire world. Best shoot I ever been on. It was, it was awesome, man. I look, we really enjoy making these films. They're a lot of fun. It's crazy that a bunch of us have been able to build a career around traveling the world with your buddies, slaying tires and capturing it on film. Well, thank God we're not doing this in 2020. For the first time ever, we're gonna play Jim Connor one through ten from start to finish. This is ten years of Jim Connors. Jim Connor marathon. The marathon. Wow. The progression of the Jim Connor film. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Connor. Jim Connor. The Jim Connor. And while you're watching these, start ranking them and what you think is best to not best or not best to best, and we're gonna put that all together. Here.
Unexpected for just coming out and watching a little bit of car fun. I feel like I'm scuba diving. I feel like I'm scuba diving.
Time with the bottle of Jim Dandies. We got all this meat. Oh. Talking about donuts with liquor in them. I'm talking about.
What's up? If you're just tuning in, you missed the big announcement earlier. Today, it is that Ken Block's Gymkhana Grid Race Series is coming to America this fall. That's right. Tickets will be on sale soon, so go check the link below in the description to hold your spot. Not only that, if you want to compete 
Same link will get you all the info of how to enter, what classes there are gonna be, what kind of car you might wanna build. That link alone, that'll get you all the info as it comes out. Whether you're a pro or you wanna come race us jabronis, see if you're faster than us. Jabroni class. Jabroni class. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Block's Jim Connor Grid is coming back to the United States this fall. Now, we are not offering tickets just yet, but if you want to be the first to know when tickets are available and actually have a spot in line, you can click the link in the description, go there, fill that out, you'll be the first to know. And you can actually sign up to participate. All that information is in the link below. Click it. All right, here we go. So here's how we're going to try to rank it without getting into a massive fight. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so each of us are going to state our favorite. Might be duplication. They could all be the same one. We'll put that up. And then from there, we'll look at that and kind of decide if anything else belongs in it. And then we're just going to try to write Who's it. Who's up first? Gary. Gary! Favorite Jim Connor film of all time. You're number one. Jim, Jim Connor one. Jim Connor one. Yeah. Strong, strong, strong choice. Yeah, it's it's like the first album choice. It's yeah. the yeah. first album. It's, the, it's like it's it's trying green. to pick this, like trying to pick a good Jordan. You know, Jordan one yeah. goes good with everything. Jim Connor one goes good with everything. Hawkeye, Subaru, simple Give setup. That little note that it wasn't on YouTube. I think that's really interesting. I had yeah, to you watch. You want to hit him with that note? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, the crazy thing about that one is it didn't even launch on YouTube. It launched on Ken's website. And the server bill came back, or the the web traffic bill came back. Twenty thousand dollars in a month because ten million people have watched it. Which, with inflation, that's like seven million bucks yeah, right yeah, now. Definitely. But it's then like they put it the up. Price of a Mark IV Super. They put like it up on YouTube after that, and it got another like an eleven million views and zero. Crazy. So it's actually wow. got wow. more views. Yeah, the video probably in total has like thirty-five million, but we lost half of them on the KenBlockRacing.com. Wow. Introduced to that by MySpace on my wall. Somebody said, I know you got a Subaru. This looks like you. And I said, No, it's not. Damn. I Vinny, know, yeah. your favorite of all time. Uh, Number one. So I generally like the ones most that aren't in the race cars, but I think my favorite because of the time it came out and it felt so different is three. Because that just that startup sequence with the two step on letting the handbrake go, it sounded so cool, and I was like, man, I just want a car that sounds like that. All right, that was a really good one. That yeah, was crazy. that was yeah, the first. Crazy. That was the first one he ever did in a full born race car. Yeah, and the driving was just like the the previous two were sick, but like the driving was kind of crazier. Mm. The filming was better. Like mm. it all was kind of like it felt more big production. And the thing we never talked about with that film was on the. First time we went to go film it, we had an issue with the tires. Oh, the tire delay. That's a, that's a whole story. We crashed the time. car on the first trip and totaled the car. Wow. And had to go home and come back. Do you think Ken would be mad at you if you just called it a trick? No, no we call it tricks. tricks. No stunts. Oh, not stunts. stunts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tricks, Never mind. not stunts. Never mind. Tricks, not stunts. What, what you run? Look, five is the obvious answer, but for me, really thinking about it and how I felt at the time, two. Two. Gymkhana two. Oh, man. two. Because like one, problems. one blew my mind, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One was crazy. But two leveled up on cameras for the first time. Because yeah, one yeah, was yeah. super raw, which is cool. But you had slow-mo. You had the dock moment. You had a crazy sounding car that was starting to inch towards race car. It, it, it had a lot of stuff. It had an exploding trailer. Yeah. The exploding trailer was pretty bad. It was crazy. And, and that one for me was like, oh, this isn't a one-off. This is a series. You also had the like... Ken Block intro moment with the yeah, breaking glass yeah. and the fire glass. Yeah, that shit was cool to me. It was super it was cool, cool back to me. Then. Yeah, we so all thought that was cool. for me. Look, my favorites change all the time, but right now it's two. Okay, I do love that. Like uh, on one and two, like it was like a key start. Car. Yeah, because yeah, it's such yeah, a street yeah, yeah, car yeah. that it was just to turn at, the key. At the end of Jim Connor one, when he gets out of the car, you can hear the door chime. The door chime, and that was the my door chime right. at the time. I was like, yo, this is the best. Oh, it's a super brilliant. Yeah. Zach. Zach, the only guy here It's got to be Los Angeles. Because it's a V8. Yeah, it just was so... Says the only guy in this group that didn't own a Subaru. You never owned a Subaru? No, I look at this man. I look at this man. You think he would own a Subaru? Do I look like a fucking Subaru guy? Yes. Wow. No. I don't know. Subaru guys wear uh, hats like yeah. that. Yeah. That's Man, you do look like a Subaru oh. guy. You look like the most Subaru guy yeah. of all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're previous gen Subaru guy. You're current gen Yeah, you're current gen. Out of vape, you're a no. Subaru guy. Yeah, you no. got biceps, you got a flat bill hat. You're angry all the time, <laughs> likely from a blown head gasket or crack ring lands. <laughs> like, you fit all hey, the time. Hey, hold on, he's cracked his headers. That's a super <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> You're one of us. All right, 
One of us. One of us. One of us. <laughs> they do the middle finger like that too with the yeah, finger. They don't do a real middle finger. Yeah. Like that half yeah. Finger. It's, a, it's because of the flat four. It just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. I can't get my fingers to close that hard. Then you should work harder. Um, you're obviously not angry enough. <laughs> One more Ringland failure. All right. I'm going to go with the classic. I don't think anyone can argue Jim Five being up there. Yeah. But we'll get into that argument. That argument to come. All right. So are are we all happy with this being like our number five? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The top five. Top, top five. Top five. In top some top order, five. that's a pretty solid top five. All right. On to the bottom five. I'm not. I, 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 I'm not ready. I feel like. <laughs> no, I just to me, I feel like Jim Connor Nine is in here somewhere. By the way, factoid. I won't give the order, but Jim. No, Connor no, no. Nine. You can't. You can't drop what Ken felt because Ken, that's going to sway everyone's thought. Three. It was in That's going to sway three. everyone's thought. That's Ken true. is the I'm, original I'm influencer. Still the argument. I'm still making the argument. He's an influencer. So He's going to influence of, them well, as a group. Do any of you feel like? Nine potentially replaces any of these. No. Wow. Uh, Sorry, maybe two. Sorry, Ken. Maybe two? Two, yeah. We'll put it right over here. Just because driving. All right. Ability. What was your least favorite film? Start with Gary again. Yeah, Gary, oh, wow. least favorite. Like, like the one that like you watched once and you just weren't that, that stoked about. I'm going I'm to say the, the, the number four. Number four. Too many gimmicks. We'll put, to we'll me. put number four over mm-hmm. here. I want to see Driving. <clears throat> not the back lot. No disrespect. What was your least favorite? Uh, I would say eight. It had a bunch of cool moments, yeah, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just wasn't really. It had yeah. a it had a lot of really great yeah. moments and really great poster moments, but it didn't really hit for me overall. So I actually think it was visually one of the most beautiful ones we ever yeah, shot. Yeah, totally. It looked insane. Yeah. But because of like the locations, it was like nine donuts. There just yeah. wasn't a lot of big fast. It was it was the donut fest. There was no, there was jump, no real so donuts. much more we could have done. Yeah, the best stuff was probably the airplane stuff. And also, it's really I mean, idea. really hard to follow up seven. I know. Yeah. I know. So. Yep. All right. Uh, For me, uh, it would have to be six. Six was your least favorite. Mm-hmm. Really. You know, six is one of the more critically acclaimed, not, not critically acclaimed, but the more, the more actual successful. Things. For sure. Yeah. Like I think I think for me it's a trade off because there were there were things that we had set up that didn't happen. We had to make that course remake it overnight. Yeah, but that's that's from the that's from like the working. On yeah, the no, I get it. I'm I'm, 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 I'm biased. Like finished, I'm biased finished, from that. finished result. Yeah. You know what's an interesting one? Like like Junkana haters. Like people who always hated on the Jim Connor films, that's their number one film. I, I'm not gonna name names, but there are five people who just hated Ken, hated his films, and blast Jim them. Six is the yeah. only one. Blast them. I wanna hear No, we're gonna blast them in real life. Can't can't be naming names. <laughs> can't be snitching on myself. Oh. I'm not a rapper. Um Zach. I'd have to say like it's either Realize that the rest two. of them all have four cylinders except one. I so know, I know. <laughs> well and ten. I well, I'm at crazy. number 10. That, I don't know. I think, like, probably L.A. Docks or, uh, like, like Hollywood set had, I think the coolest moment was the accidental moment in Hollywood set where, like, it wasn't supposed to be filming, but... Oh, that's the best moment with the... Bobbing down the, the hill. The guy was just testing out the, uh, the steady cam yeah. before the days of gimbals. Yeah. And he was just transferring from one scene to another for GoPro footage. Just yeah. the best shot in the whole yeah. thing. It's like a little drop down. So, uh, I'd say two. Two, two is your least favorite. Yeah. Okay, so now that means two needs to move back a little bit. Um, we, sure. we have no real. Math. I'm not sure how your chart here is going to work out, but yeah. yeah. Well, he said two was was was. I'm going to put it in the middle because it's got a it's got a down vote, mm. right? Maybe oh maybe that's what we'll do. I'm thinking through this on the fly. Maybe we'll give it like a down vote versus up votes. So it got a down. Oh, mm, Lines on that side's a down vote. Yeah, of course. Lines on Obviously. this side. Obviously. Lines on this side is a down vote. Yeah. Didn't even have to explain Yeah, it. I mean, we all were right there with you. So <laughs> let's let's slap the rest in the middle. Oh, we got Jim We got 10, Brian Jim still 10. up there. Where does Jim 10 go? It's your pick, bud. Oh, yeah. my least favorite is eight. 
Okay. So I'll give uh, I'll give it another down vote. So what was your it hey. can move down a bit. Uh, and I'll tell you why it was. It just the tricks, the driving just wasn't there. Yeah. Beautiful film, but the driving just wasn't there. Yeah. So. Alright, you guys want to work the bottom before we work the top? <laughs> yeah. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> work it. Um, how do we go further? Oh, wait, Jim 10. Where does Jim 10 land? Honestly, like right in the middle. Yeah. That's like a gray area. Because there's, it there's wasn't so bad, in it, but it wasn't. Great. It was cool, but it wasn't. It was yeah. just a lot. Honestly, like, I, it, what sucks is, like, I hate that it opened in Sweden because, like, it's so white and it's just hard to tell, like, this, obviously, right? It's hard to tell <laughs> Spain. Stop. You're yeah. bringing up you're bringing up a sore Pain points. fight between Canada. Pain points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So how do we go Detroit forward from here? Mexico was sick in that. I was. I hated Sweden. Should we all say that the best one is seven? I, no. Oh, nope. Uh, no. Nope. Let's go to the bottom first. Let's work our way from the bottom to the top. Let's do the, do this like Drake. Okay. Uh, so eight, we all think is. Sort I, of the I could agree. Can we all agree? I could agree eight that eight, is, yeah. eight yeah. is okay. So yeah. eight is not the best. That's dog water, bro. Eight is not the best. We'll move it up. Garbaggio. Okay. And then I would also kind of agree with the the rest that four. Yeah. Right eight, after four. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. That feels good. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. Okay. Then, I don't know. It's between two and six. Uh, yeah, this is a really interesting thing because the concept that Ken and I had from the beginning was that odd numbers were the raw films and even numbers were the polished films. Mm. And you're already starting to see like a, like a thing there. Because if you think one was raw, five was raw, seven was raw, nine was raw, like they all had a more of a raw, three was raw. This style of filming, we also like three, didn't have a single moment of slow-mo in it. Because there was such a backlash on two when it came out, mm. that people thought like Ken had pushed, like, like oh one was so good, like it was a lot of negativity there. So, and when I came in, because I was, I got heavily involved on three, I was involved on one and two, but like from remotely, on three I was like, no slow-mo. Everything handheld, like everything just like simple. Well, not everything handheld, but it was just to be a lot more raw. Okay, Let's, so why don't we throw two up for next? Because well, I mean, I, he, I, he, this, I he's still, I, I'm he's still arguing that this is a top. Film. You had you had the doc moment, which we referenced in every Gymkhana creative meeting uh, from two forward. You had an exploding uh, trailer. Here's the thing you about had two the crazy backwards entries. Here's the thing about two. I don't actually think it was like not. I, it's forgettable for me. Mm. It's just not one I go back to. I don't remember Every time it. I make a I don't remember it at all. Every like, time I go back to make a Gymkhana film, I go and I watch a bunch of them, and it's just not in that list for me. I don't know why. I would I would argue that maybe... Maybe... 10 goes in spot three. Mm. Ooh, damn. All right, let's get some down, though. I didn't... Uh, 10 was good. It was crazy. But it was almost more focused on the flex of being around right, the so world let's do than this. it was. Let's talk about this. Six or ten. Because there, there seems to be... Ron's got some... Like, Ron put this as his number one. So, I mean, he could get vetoed by the rest of us. But six or ten, which one was better? Uh, I think six. I would like six better. Six better than ten. Sorry, coach. I agree six I would, over ten. Six over ten. All right. I'm, I'm like, in the middle on it. Because, like, for me... If 10 didn't have LA or Sweden in it, I thought Huna Truck was dope. I thought the spiral at the end was dope. Yeah. I thought that fucking Mexico is on fire. He's ripping. I guess, I guess because and Detroit, like that sick. reverse entry, the Coney Island, the Coney fucking um, Island uh, hot dog reverse Coney entry at yeah. Lafayette is like one of the sickest yeah. moments. 10, ten but has a lot of sick moments. LA and Sweden, which were like the big concept ideas, snow and no tires, I think sucked the whole thing down. Mm. But it's a, it's a whole picture. Quick question. Um, we're going to try to leave this mostly unedited. Yeah, I would just run it like a podcast. So if there's something that you don't want us to include, yeah, yeah. make it yeah. on camera. Okay. Yeah. Don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, all this I think we yeah. should talk about. This yeah. um, I'm treating this like a podcast. Yeah. Like everything flies. No, you're right. I think six felt really like succinct. It was just tight. It was like the it thing. Was a good concept it was too. one simple concept, so it kind of really hit harder. Whereas like 10 was like kind of an over the top concept. 
So I think just in like my rankings, okay. like six out, six edges it out. All right, so here's, so let's do this. Two, oops. two verse 10. I'm gonna go 10 over two. 10 over two. I mean, you know where I am. You're already, what else you got? I would stick two first. Two, two above 10. Two above yeah. 10. I'd say uh, 10 then two. 10 then two. Yeah. I'm gonna go 10 then two as well. It's just Zach. Like, over what? Zach's outvoted. No, 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 no. no. I mean, you, when you you say ten is better than two. Yeah, so ten. I say ten is better than two. He says ten is better than two. You guys oh, say two shit. Better than two. I heard Zach. So right. unfortunately, sucking Subaru nerds. Unfortunately, <laughs> you want to fight all of us right now? No, let, I, I'll have a little. You want some of this? He will. He will take his clothes Joe, off before he fights you. <laughs> by the way, fight you by the way, Gary. <laughs> by the way, this is our lunch. We're actually getting through this. I'm kind of amazed. I figured we wouldn't get anywhere here. It's it's fairly, have a prison shell democratic. <laughs> Look at this. I'm All right. I'm so right now, that KY around it, you guys. We've got our first spot. Wow, we did that. Whoa. We should really talk about Ron's favorite pick. Is third to the left. That's okay. Why well, you gotta put Ron on blast not, like that? What's your it's second? Fine. What's I'm your hard. second favorite? Five. I mean, his second And literally is, only because I'm a dickhead and I didn't want to choose the obvious one as the yeah, first. Of course, I mean, of course, five is one. everybody's favorite. Five For the longest time, Ken used to say what, what, what was his favorite But I, I brought it up there because, in my opinion, it was an underrated one. I, I get that. For sure. You know? Like, five, fuck yeah. Of course it's the favorite. But two, like... Ron's maybe going it, down on the ship. Maybe it did. Yeah, fuck, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm sticking to my guns. It was also a time and error for you. And that's you how I'm kind of ranking. Boy. Also, I'm ranking each one of these. As I was to how going I to. I, I was going to get up and and you know stand by my boy Ron here until I noticed that Ron fucking stuck his bag of chips in the motor table as garbage because I didn't want to get up to throw it away properly. Could have just asked your fellow dedicated. Subaru brethren. But no, you decided to disrespect the block. All right, I could have passed so it down where the lineage. The Subaru lineage. <laughs> Ooh. Nine. Like, does does anyone feel like nine can compete with any of these? No. Nah. Fuck no. Uh, okay. it, mm, Bring it up. Bring I mean, up. I... Go for a vote. I See, I would actually go nine over one. What? Okay, let's go to a vote. Let's go to a vote on it. I'm not having that. What? what? I'm, I'm nine. The fuck, fuck no, I'm, are you saying? <laughs> Let's just exactly. go to the vote. Take it to the table. Let's go to the vote. No okay. reason to get excited. I'm not picking. I'm one stays on the best. Okay. Stays one on has one. a GT 35R rotated turbo on a Cosworth motor with a turnkey ignition. It's a Crawford. It's a Crawford. It basically stops. Same shit. 18 by 10 and a half. Yo, he had CE 28 hands in bronze. bronze. Please put some respect. On what that did for the he, culture. He jumped in front of a fucking train. Yeah. Like six that doesn't from matter. Listen, listen, that almost, that doesn't matter. It almost put a car into but, a river. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't be no train without number one. That's no. right. There's That's nothing. Right. Fuck you're just that getting train. nostalgic. That's it's not all a nostalgia. No. It's, it's no nostalgia. It's the fact it was. It's like when you watch an old street skate video. It's gritty to the point. I don't need gimmicks. I don't need lights. I don't need a Favorite fucking train. Favorite skate video of all time. Uh, Beggar's Death Wish. That's a good one. Death Wish was good. This man. Put oh, favorite skate video of all time? Girl, you got right. I don't I'm know. I'm age myself. Ban this. Ooh. Mm. Should have said Baker 3. But he Baker 3 is another solid. I don't know, man. Fully Flared is probably my favorite modern one. Mm. Just because it looks Bronze good. CE. 20. Listen. Woo! I almost bought Rotas. <laughs> <laughs> yo! 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 Listen, hit us with that again. Listen, I almost what? bought I almost bought Rotas. Because I couldn't afford CE twenty eight, so I was at fucking was as a shop down in downtown. They had them right there for seven hundred dollars. The Ryan, influence, the paradigm shift. That car Ron, had carpet. Ron, I'm assuming I'm assuming you're right here. Yeah. I'm sticking my guns in nine, but you know. Sips it doesn't matter which way I vote. Take your guns to take. It doesn't matter. Which no, way. we want to hear it. One. Tell no, us. we want to hear will, it. But I will say, I will say, if one never happened. This this film was my homage to one, mm -hmm. like it was. Like when we when we came out to make this, we had just made eight, which I was not happy with. I didn't really like how it looked. And 
because of a bunch of issues, we were supposed to film in Australia, and the police told us we couldn't come. We had to make the film in like three weeks and just thrash to get the whole thing done. Ken was busy racing, and he was just like, dude, just do whatever you think makes sense. And Forza had come in, and Nine was my homage to one. So like, I actually like the tricks in Nine, because it's like way bigger, like train jump, sliding against the water. But if one never happened, Nine would so this is this is this is Nas's Illmatic, mm. and this is still Illmatic. Matic. It was still a good album, but it's not smart. Illmatic. This motherfucker smart. So. <laughs> All right, well then, hey, so we got six nine one. Yeah. Oh, Yo, yeah. hey. Hey. Uh, yeah. there it is. Six nine four. Oh my God, we also have 20. four two. Maybe there's a zero. Yo, kind of. Technically, tens is zero, so you have four twenty sixty nine. Woo! Illuminati confirms. Oh, just happened. Whoa! Team don't miss. This put in, just put, in the, put in the Charlie Day with the the board. Holy shit! Whoa. This motherfucker. There's a silent miss. one in the ten. Well, ten technically is zero too. Right? Holy no zero, shit! So yeah. Ken, how are you doing this to us? You're making memes after death. <laughs> Influence. <sighs> Influence. Uh, I guarantee he thought this through yes. years ago. So crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the 420 is such a stretch. <laughs> no, it's fucking there. there. It's there. Yeah. It's there. There's There's like two, zero wait, two, two, two and a ten. No, but two times ten is twenty. You guys are fucking Oh, yeah. It keeps Four going back. Checks out. Four plus twenty. Two ten twenty. That's, that's no stretch. Yeah. There's no stretch. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who cares the rest of this? All right, so now we're going into the top four. All right, one. What? I mean, you, you, well, like, what do we think the next matchup is? I'll, uh, I'll put mine down. I think three goes next. Mm. But, but you thought three was your favorite. Yeah, but it's not the best. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. three is way Ooh, more so violent than let's, let's go early Two years. Let's go, let's yeah. go early years. Three versus one. Hmm. Reverse. One. One's better. Dude, three is so violent. I picked oh, oh, three. We'll start down the line. There's still still one. Still one, one over three. I, I picked three, but I did I also just didn't want to pick the one I thought everyone was gonna pick. Mm. But because it needed Man, props. We are, we are so concerned about each other think here. One <laughs> one is it for me. Like one is okay. fucking okay. Yeah. I gotta give it to Jim Three. Okay. Gym 3, the bank, coming up completely blind, handbrake, tail tap on the top yeah, of nah, a crazy yeah, degree. Nah, insane. Yeah, nah, Absolutely nah, nah. insane. Full alley-oop too, right? Yeah. Good. Full alley-oop. Come in my Dude, and then the, the GoPro setup right at the exhaust. <laughs> like, yeah. just, you know. Three? Violence, yeah. Oh, you guys finally made me a fucking time. <laughs> right there. Oh. I hope you guys got enough four hours to walk through this. So, Jim Wan, the classic, the first album, it's everything. But I feel like Jim 3 was when the series really stepped it up. Like, the driving got to a point that, like, I'm going to say this. Back then, no one could drive like Ken. Now there's people who sit in this room who could remake Jim Wan. Like, Jim Wan, the driving was not really that crazy. Segway was good. Reverse, uh, the reverse entry was good. Obviously, sliding through like the heliport kind of thing, that little wood area, like good proximity. But like that's not really that far away. That, the bank, on three, crazy. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just like. Oh, I and then also, about, let's not forget yeah. like Axis donuts until you're down to the wheels, like down to. The, did we um? The did we wheels. discuss the CE? 28 ends in bronze pre wheel sponsors. This is TE 37s, right? And that, and that oh, shit. Jim, Jim, Jim he was on. Oh, oh, Jim Gray was on TEs. God damn. That's, that's right. But they were. They were. Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, I don't, don't want to play my boy like that. Yeah, yeah. G, this was on threes. Yeah. Oh, dude. they were on. They were on raw, non-concave spec. Yeah, but it do was you know why? Because I took those wheels. I bought them. Hold on, the hold, on hold on, 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 hold on. Little factoid: in the film, we ran them on non-concave, but for all the press photos, we ran concave. Nice, because they did the wheel, the tires didn't fit, but I stretched them out to look good. Yeah. So, so he's the first to demolish some TE thirty sevens. I might take it down. 
Not even Soldier Boy has done that. And he's done everything first. Facts. So we right. not even. All right. So but this doesn't. Day, now they gotta go Diesel against hasn't each other. So Whistler Diesel hasn't destroyed T thirty sevens. What kind of man is he? Not yet. You know what? Not yet. So wait. But that that just puts. No. That just puts one ahead of nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gary's gonna start a whistling diesel spoof account called Howling Gasoline. <laughs> Yo, just you <laughs> managed to do that. You managed to do that. All right, all right, guys. So let's do some other verses here. So let, let's say this: everyone's already discussed that people feel like five is at the top. So let's do. We'll do five verse three. We'll do seven verse one. Oof. So let's go with here. Jim one versus Jim seven. Go. Uh, I'm going to pick seven over one simply because this is going to sound stupid. At the time, I was at AMP school and I saw seven come out and I was like, this motherfucker's down the street before I knew what editing and time drop was. When he goes under the low rider, on that, uh, everything that set home to me as an LA native was in that video and he did it on the street. Which was like, damn, if I had a budget, I could possibly do that. And the Cars reference, no, in a Turbo the Snail movie, mm -hmm. when they do that and recreate that in the movie. All around uh, uh, Randy's Donuts. In, um, it's in uh, Cars, right? Break, no. Uh, I thought it was a movie with the snail. Wreck-It wreck wreck Ralph. Ralph. Oh, with the girl wreck in the Ralph, yeah. Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck Ralph plays homage been, around, the, around Randy's Donuts. It's been Donald's. vamped multiple times. But, with, yeah. but it's like the Akina moment. Like with the bike when he slides, like you can yeah, always yeah, yeah. know what that yes. means. So I'm going to pick seven over like one. like that reference. All right. Yo, seven on God for real, for real. What the fuck? Straight up. Stop hitting that. Ron? Seven. Simply because that film created one of the greatest car builds of all time. You know what the fuck I'm doing. So. Oh, yeah. I can't even fight. Seven for me was just... I, I wish it was shorter. Like, I, f I feel like we put in a couple of more scenes that need... To be you wish there. something was shorter. Yeah, there was like the cop... The doing don'ts around the cop car could have gone. We didn't need that. It was like another moment that was just kind of like... We shot it and Ken was just like, oh, we'll just throw it all in. And it ended up making like a 12-minute film, which I thought was too long. But it is what it is. Um, I mean, now I'm happy it's all in there, but uh, I feel like the lowrider is, I think, one of the greatest fucking moments we ever put together. It was so sick, and the OJ scene was just fun. Yeah, like I things mean, like that. Like it had that mix. It had great driving, but also had like a lot of funny moments. In you it go too. back to that when the lowrider's so. hopping, and you read what's on the guy's shirt on the back. I think it's like pretty much your car is not shit. Yeah, and, and, and it also says we take this hop shit serious. Like, oh, that's yeah. that's L.A. Like shout out to LA, John Hangy. Friday yeah. nights. Our, our right. Shaw. So seven. Seven moves, might as well be number one. Seven moves up. Right. Seven's definitely up. We already know three's in front of one. So I guess the question is: is five? Like seven? Do we even need to compete? Nah, nah. Like seven versus three. We no. seven's nah, better. So now it's going to be. So this is it. So right now, here's where we're at. Oh. Here's where we're at. All right. So this is it. The final matchup. Gary, you're the championship up. for the winner of the Jumkonathon. Five or seven. Still picking seven. seven. Number five was great. All the stuff with the GoPros and the jumping, but it's, yeah. it's it's the fact that when you never seen something like the Hunagorn in your life, built from scratch, twin turbo V8. Well, it wasn't twin turbo. Oh, it was sorry. NA. Yeah, it was just NA. Okay. Well, NA. But it's the fact that I've never seen anybody drive a Mustang like yeah, that. No, that's. It was everything. Everything about yeah. it was like that. Talk to me. Number five was like. Ugh. As far as like the car talking to me, yeah, yeah. If that makes if that makes sense. Imagine if we did five with the uniform. Now that's fucking yeah. that's magic. Yeah. Uh, same. I mean, five was sick. I love that film, but the unicorn just sounds absolutely insane. Like I personally loved it with the ITV so stacks. Seven, huh? Yeah. Ron? Five rally boy. Mm. There's jumps. There's drift jumps. There's crazy camera work. There's the barge. There's it's just it's driving wise. It was stuff 
We took in a over city a bridge that we would never see. The seen drift before. jump in that is legendary. Like, yeah. We've tried to remake that drift yeah. jump since that came I, out. Yeah. I think five has maybe better driving, but the Hoonicorn well, is just too fucking I want you cool. to realize when you talk about that car, you don't say, oh, it's a You always say Hoonicorn. It gets its respective name throughout that's its true. linear yeah, and time as true. a car. So, but, but if you ask anybody if they know what Gymkhana is and they say no, and they wait a second, and they say, "Oh, like that San Francisco video." Yeah, that's what you it's, always. I mean, it's did. obviously the most. Ken at that time in that I chassis, mean, he was the most dialed as a driver. Mm -hmm. Like the the that car and Ken were like this. I would say that and nine was the best driving. He yeah. ever did. Like just being dialed inches off of things, knowing exactly where to put the car, and also taking like massive risks with the car because he didn't take a lot of risks with the Hoonicorn because he also loved the car. So he like he, I think the most risk he took with Hoonicorn was on Clan Kana, because Clan Kana was like obviously there's Evo Corner and all of that. But yeah. all right, so you're on five. Where are you at, Zach? All right, this is gonna sound like a deviation. Don't tell me about the betray us. So I remember to this day, my when I first moved to Los Angeles, my buddy's like, "Yo, did you see this Jim Kana?" And I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> And he's like, hold the fuck on. And he played it. And I just remember watching it. And we stood there watching this on this like 80 inch TV. And, and we were just like standing in the living room, like feet from it, completely silent the entire time. Except being just like, what the fuck? Did you have an 80 inch TV in your living room? Yeah, it was my buddies. We lived together. How big is this? Anyway, but like, we, uh, I just remember being like, fuck. That's what I want to do. Like, I want to figure out how to make shit like that. So I'm actually going to... I'm going to pick five because of this. Damn. Four-cylinder habit. Let it be known. Import <sighs> drive it. It was a Ford. Uh, <laughs> import Still imported. It's actually <laughs> really built in the It's UK. even worse than an import. It's an American that wants to be an import. Ah! Disgusting. Ah! But vehicle-wise, vehicle-wise, unicorn all day. Yeah. <laughs> like unicorn all day. Gary, all right. American, wants to be Japanese. By the way, we did not script this where it would leave me with the final choice. <laughs> Guys, between we don't you, won't, you won't anything. believe this. <laughs> Having watched anything we've ever made before. <laughs> Not scripted. <laughs> we barely script these things. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Tough one. I think... Obviously there's the Unicorn. Unicorn is the greatest vehicle. Although I preferred the Unicorn in Clan Kana. One. Than this one. Mm. I really just don't... I, if, if you really go back and watch it, Ken didn't drive on the level at 7 because he had had like... 10 minutes testing the car beforehand compared to like you watch what is that corner Olympic corner in Pikes at Pikes like he just runs the guardrail like mm. you look at obviously Evo corner just like the like the level of just commitment is massive so that like I think driving definitely wins on five but from like a film package I think so, seven like if you take the driving out I think seven's the best film ever made like like aesthetically, it looks great. The intro feels like a Hollywood film with a leather jacket. I also really like that we moved away from the race car vibe and like didn't have the race suit and all of that. Like that one really kind of broke the norm. The graphics package in it was fantastic. We broke that we did like Wild in the Streets. Um, the and then that like part of the film that really hit for me was we got to sneak in all these kind of like jokes like randy's donuts was a joke we did a donut around a donut place because everyone at the time was saying all ken block does is donuts so we leaned into it we got the access to the top of um the hollywood sign which apparently we are still the only people to have ever driven a vehicle up there we had to go through like homeland security travis pastrana had to give some politicians kid a ride on a motocross bike to make that happen we just did so much to make that whole thing work but just like visually it's something it's probably the thing I'm most proud of from like a full picture. And because of that, Jim Cotton 5 was the best. <laughs> Doesn't really fucking matter what I like. What? Jim Cotton is the better film. <laughs> Just like, because the driving, these weren't about making good films. That's what this was always about. It was about making films where the driving was key and the car was like, and that was the best part. 
Jim Five Points. Y'all happy with that? Put it in order. Put it in order. We just want to go home. I want to eat. <laughs> We've still got hours. We're not even halfway through. I'm so hungry. I'm getting skinny. Start Wait, if you do the math on this, right, we got 420, 69. Then if you take 1 times 3, which is 3, 7 times you 3, one divided minus by... minus 5 and add it to 3, it's 43, 7, which means something. I don't seven know what days a week, that. 10 block. Oh, actually, <laughs> actually day. Day. hold on. Oh. Hold on. 1 minus 5 equals 443. 5, 7, 57. Lee is not. These numbers just don't make them. How they the just, fuck they did just you work themselves out. I think if you have numbers one through ten, you can make any kind of But it's manifest it destiny, though. So You're there you have it. Our top Jim Connor films. We all agreed. We agreed on something. Does kind of everyone feel like is there any protests? I, no. Is I cut this protest? clip right now. <laughs> just cut it. We're good. <laughs>
I guess my only legacy would be that I, I like creative stuff and I like fun stuff, you know, and I, I don't take life too serious. But at the end of the day, I try and inspire people to uh, be creative and live a fun life. And don't be an asshole. <laughs> And the hits keep coming, 24 hours of Ken Block content. So this one, I'm going to explain. It's actually playing in the background right now. But we went to Australia to, I don't even remember why we were there. But Top Gear was there, or at least Australian Top Gear. And we filmed this on, like, I think two cameras. And it was basically, they had this Holden. Yeah, it was a right? Ford Falcon. Oh, Ford Falcon, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> They had this Ford Falcon that they were testing there, and Ken was like, oh, let me drive. And the Stig was there, and we made like this really simple edit and put it up, and it got almost 5 million views just because the Stig was in it. But it was a fun day. I don't even know if it's a great video, but it was certainly a fun day, so enjoy it. Also, yo, look how young Ron and I look in this film. We look like children. I was a child. fun with the Top Gear crew, apparently. Rear-wheel drive really isn't my game, but, you know, it's a good time. So Ken's daughter, Leah, has a birthday coming up. We thought it'd be proper to give her a surprise, something that she's really desperately gonna need in the future. <laughs> I hope you're stoked. I hope you're really scared. But I have a little greeting for you. So here, you gotta watch this. Hey Leah, it's Vanilla Ice here. Just wanna say happy <laughs> birthday to you. Rolling in the 5.0, or should I say drifting? <laughs> yeah, we need a mask. We do, yeah. You gotta, we gotta blindfold you. Yeah, you gotta be blindfolded. Do it up. Do it up. This is important. I'm gonna fall. You're gonna run me into a wall. Which wall would you like to do? No. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm gonna be right here. Okay, you can take it off. <laughs> there she is, old glory. You know, this is actually the first car I've ever been a part of buying and just blindly drove 500 miles back home <laughs> and nothing happened to it. Now we've elevated the game to buying a used, pretty much clapped out five liter Mustang. Is he in Colorado though? I'm not Colorado, yeah. Any chance you can meet us at the airport? You know, flying from Salt Lake City with cash. Yeah, buddy. We made it back. We did some hooning with it. Man, I feel like we didn't actually hoon it hard enough. I want to try to cool it down. 
But then it did donuts really easy, so I just kept going. <laughs> I don't think so, because it just, you know what? It was able to start and back into this position right here. But obviously, you've had a grand master plan for this since the jump. Break it down for us. What's the game plan? Well, the master plan is we've been trying to figure out something to do with my daughter Leah for her 14th birthday. She did such a good job learning how to do donuts in my Mark II Escort, which is a very difficult car to drive. some upgrades, get it all fixed up, and then I have a good buddy of mine come out and uh, teach her how to do proper drifting. Part of that has to do with a particular joke I've been having with my wife and my daughter about this becoming her car. There's someone in the 90s that had a 5.0 that was fairly iconic. He loved the car so much that he made a song about it. I'm sweating like steaming, you can feel the flow when I'm rolling in my 5.0. Let's talk to him about the 90s, about this car, cut to that. What's up, man? Good to meet you. Good to see you, bro. <laughs> it's awesome, man. You're a legend, dude. It's great to meet you, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's the original OG50. It was a rust bucket up until about two years ago, and I had a frame off. Dude, that car, when I when I first saw it, everything came back. Like, I remembered, you know, who I was dating in high school. I remembered the Zeke Cavricci pants I had, bro. I, <laughs> I used to think I was really cool, you know? Want to talk to you just briefly. We won't take too much of your time, but want to talk about the 90s and your love of the 5.0 and, like, why it inspired a song. I mean, that's yeah. how much you loved it. I remember I had an IROC Z before I had this with the T-tops, you know, when it first came out. I thought it was cool, but I was always getting beat by 5.0 Mustangs. You know, I couldn't beat them, so I just joined it, man. I got one, I fell in love with it, and then I understood that you can make these things go so fast for so cheap. So the funny thing is the background on this is my daughter's turning 14. So wow. we're fixing this car up so that she can drive it to learn to drift, right? I, and she's a cool kid. She's like, likes racing. She's right. actually been racing carts, UTVs. She wants to like race in her future, but she hates this car. She doesn't get it. Like every time she comes in the shop, we joke oh, that it's like, gonna be her first car, you know? And she just rolls her eyes and like, I shouldn't say hate, she greatly dislikes it. But that's the thing, that's why I wanted to get you on video, like kind of explain the love of that. Because you liked it so much, you made a rap song about it. You know, and that's that, right. that to me is like an essence of the 90s and the 5.0. So like, what would you tell her? Like if you tried to explain it, in simple terms what that car means to you, what would you say? You know, before people really knew what drifting was, we would go around corners burning out and this thing was the best burnout machine on the planet. We break danced, we had boom boxes, yep. we wore ri ridiculous clothes, <laughs> that, that Z Cavricci pants and starter jackets and we used to use words like SUP and we'd stand like this and go sup. It was the times, man, and the bass and the music, you just couldn't make it loud enough. And I remember the amps like Rockford Fosgate and Serwin Vega subwoofers, and, and and we would rip out the back seat literally and just put a big, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight subwoofers in the back, just as many as you can. You pull that trunk and pop that thing and drop, pull up in a 5.0 and you were baller. You were baller. Man. Well, I appreciate cool, the time. Thank you, uh, thank uh, you for uh, showing me the garage and the car. Anytime, man. Hey, man, good to meet you. Good yeah. chatting with you. All right, nice to be here. Stay safe out there, bro. Take care. You too. So, first order of business and the most fun one. I gotta tear this thing apart so we can get it to paint. Game time. Let's go. This is Cole from Maximum Motorsports. He's helping us install this. Actually, he's probably installing most of it himself, and we're just gonna be jabronis and watch, except for Hobie. We 
we just had some extra help join us. What up, Chair Slayer? Man. brace to the torque arm. It's all bolted up. You've got a wild chair slayer welding up a Vorla exhaust. Got some rotiforms for it. Got some Toyo rubber to burn off. This looks so much better than it used to. After two weeks of absolutely busting ass in this thing, we got a brand new Stang. If you remember what this looked like before we dove in, it was clapped out, blown out, wrecked. And now, we got what dreams are made of. First of all, hit it with a quick paint job. Got the fresh vanilla ice, ice cream white, absolutely dripping. We got new interior. We had to get like everything new. Most of that came from a company called LMR, Late Model Restoration. We had to get a new top. We got a rear seat delete. We got new carpet. We got new dash panels. We got all sorts of stuff. Along with LMR, we had our buddy Aaron come out. He does a bunch of these Fox bodies, but he had a ton of stuff that we just could not find. It's like these back panels right here. Apparently, these get destroyed on every single drop top. Like all of them. Along with the obvious, with all of the, you know, restoration pieces, all the trim pieces. Got seats by Recaro. We got a full suspension by Maximum Motorsports. Now, they sent out one of their employees, Colton, who came and helped us install all this. Along with our buddy Chair Slayer, who welded up. Now, we got their coilover kit. We got their subframe connectors. We got a torque arm rear setup. Pan hard bar. Adjustable rear sway bar. We got their four-point roll cage. Because we're drifting, we had to get an angle kit. So luckily our buddy Scotty over at Scotty D Race Development got us all hooked up and we got angle for days here. So an SN95 knuckle lower control arm. We installed a new clutch. We've got the Hoonigan Chase Bay's Collab handbrake. We did a five lug conversion with full disc brakes, some Cobra R disc brakes. That was all from LMR. We're running 28 spline axles with five lug conversion. We welded the old diff that was in it. We're just gonna send it and hope to God it holds together. Under the hood, we're keeping it mostly stock here. We did upgrade a few things. Number one, got a new nitrous kit because nitrous. Secondly, we're running a full Holly Terminator EFIs kit with their HyperSpark distributor. We got their MSD6 EFI box. And of course the coil. We got a new brake master cylinder, some new lines, a proportioning valve. So for exhaust, in order to keep this thing cool, we're running a Mishimoto radiator up front along with an oil cooler. We had Borla send us over a bunch of stainless steel tubing and then also some of their XR1 mufflers. Chair Slayer welded us up a custom X-pipe. We got those mufflers in there and it turns down before the axle. It's also up here you can see, you know, we're running the Terminator, but we have this Holly 6.7 inch dash mounted up here. Styling, baby. Got a little bit of baby chop to her. I think we're ready to party. Still need to figure out how much nitrous we're gonna put through it though. Cap all this stuff off. Hit it with some of these rotiforms sitting on Toyo rubber. 
And of course, we're running an anti-gravity in the back of this thing, nice and light. So the best part is, a lot of these parts, you can find at carcanesupply.com. So if you like something on the car, you can go there, pick it up, now you're drifting Fox bodies. And then, of course, we had to do the custom Golia license plate. Cuts a rolling MI50 so you know what the reference is from. Rolling MI5.0. So now that this thing's all done, now that it's sitting proper and it's not a jalopy, I think it's about time we show this to Leah. See what she thinks. Can't tell me that doesn't look hard. <laughs> Hope he almost died to make that happen. Look at it, like we fashioned it after the license. <laughs> it's your favorite car. <laughs> <laughs> Far from that. Okay? So that's the funny part of it, though. You don't actually get the car. I you don't to... want it. Man. <laughs> you get to learn to drift it, and I, we're bringing out uh, a Formula Drift champion to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You get to do it tomorrow along uh, with everything else we do. Great. <laughs> Drink this all in. Because you remember what this thing used to look like when we first picked it up, right? It's a handbrake. I didn't even see it, man. So your first drift car. I'm um, alone. Um, uh... <laughs> There's nothing better than drifting in a car that you have zero responsibility for. <laughs> well, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, you really can't do that because Hoonigan's actually going to give this car away to somebody. So you got to stay tuned for that. I think someday you will like it. <laughs> Oftentimes, it just takes a little bit of so growth really, and experience. So it really has been a joke that she's hated this thing so much, just the styling of it. Like when, we, when you and I went and got it and brought it back here, she's like, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. So Vanilla Ice actually had a license plate that said Go Ice. So we made you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the next episode is Lee gets to learn how to drift. And Lee gets to actually drift from a drift champion. So he's coming in today and comes out to the track tomorrow to teach him. <laughs> tomorrow, we rage. You're ready for greatness, Leah. Oh, there you go, there you go, wait, hit him. Yeah! This is real life drifting. So we are out here at Utah Motorsports Campus and the day has finally come. Miss Leah is gonna learn how to drift. Are you stoked? I'm stoked. Are you stoked? Yes. Happy <laughs> birthday. It's actually been a big day. She got to learn how to drive a shift car. And she got to go out on the big track and do the West course and the Focus RS. And now she gets to learn how to actually drift in the 5.0 with Mr. Von Gittin. What up? <laughs> Teaching your own child can sometimes not be the best thing in the world. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> she just doesn't listen to me very well. That's all. <laughs> I don't think there is another person more qualified to not only instruct someone how to drift, but to do it in a Mustang. Professional fun haver, slash world champion drifter, slash off-road racing champion. We're glad to have you out. I think I had a little revelation today. Though. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said it's cute. Oh, yeah! If you cut to it yesterday, her first reaction, a little bit different. <laughs> you can't tell me that doesn't look hard. <laughs> this is an iconic machine, let alone the inspiration they took from Vanilla Ice. This is the real deal. I, I showed up and I was like, damn, okay. They did something with this thing. Yeah, because you saw it beforehand. Oh, yeah. It was clapped. I, I can't believe it's this. Can you run us through what you're going to do with her today? Absolutely. I, have to, I do have to say that I stole some of this lesson plan from Chelsea Nova and his school of drift. So I have to give him a little shout out on that because I stole it a little bit. It, it's first of all really cool to be here. I don't know if you know this, but I've known you since you were an infant. 
Um, you know, well, we've been all over the world and, and I've watched you grow up and I think it's very cool that you're getting into motorsport and you're actually taking to it and it's really cool to see that. So I'm pumped to be able to, to show you some things, but I think the mindset here is, you know, whether you want to become a drifter or not, drifting as a skill will help you in any discipline that you do because you're going to learn car placement, unbelievable car control, as well as the feeling of traction and you know driving the car out of turns and basically everything that's required for any other motorsport. So the fact that you're doing this now is huge to put in your arsenal of skills. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out first and we're gonna do a J-turn. And then we will head over to do some donuts. I'm not just tight donuts around a cone, but some larger donuts left and right. And then once you nail that, which I know you will, we'll jump into figure eight. So where you go from left to right. And then once you have done all those, you've learned all the basics. Let's go have some fun, learn some things, and uh, yeah, do it. Cool. Awesome. Let's do this. Are you nervous? No. I'm <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, you, and you've done a little setup on yeah, this? Yeah, so through this process, I mean, you know, Zach and I and the team have been chatting. I gave some suggestions and they really dialed this car in. It's got a nice angle kit. I mean, it's it's set up very well and the balance is really good. So it's perfect. And this motor, you guys are like, oh, let's supercharge it. And I'm like, let's let's wait a minute for that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always yeah. nice to put a ton of power, but like this, she'll be able to get super aggressive and it'll all be there. And I think it's better for people to learn with a little less power because yeah. you learn technique a little bit better, so. It was so weak when we got it, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was like, ah, for some more air in. It's actually working a lot better now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it looks great. Yeah, because they put some suspension on it. It's not as rolly yeah. as when you guys first yeah. got it, so it's not. And like it sounds good, too. I was over there when she was carding, and I could hear someone driving around, and yeah. that Borla exhaust actually sounds really good. Yeah, it is, it is sounding really yeah, good. It's a dramatically different car. Let's do it. All right. Oh. Do you want to say that? No, no, I, I, get to, I get to walk away and, and watch this. This is going to be... Oh, the Ken's trusting me. Was I know. Teaching his daughter. I know, no doing pressure. high speed. Yeah. No pressure. Here we go. Oh, God, he sounds like this. So what you want to do is when you want the car to rotate around, you want to be feeling the weight going in the direction you want the back to go. So right now, if I want to rotate around a cone on the left, I'll do a little weight transfer and then flick it. So right here, you just do a little jog and you do it. Okay? So left, little right. There's multiple ways to kick the car out, right? One of them is do a little weight transfer and a handbrake, or you do a little weight transfer and then kick the clutch. She's got this. Hell yeah. She's gonna teach me right now. Y'all have fun now. All right, fire up that 302, girl. Get a little gas. Whoa! So out. Yeah. Don't think about oh, I'm turning my wheel in this. You, you, it, this is all about feeling. So go ahead, drive a little bit. So feel, feel how you go. Feel the weight. So as soon as you go back over, that's when you're pulling the handbrake. Right in here, just like I did in my box. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you too can make your very own RTR spec Mustang. Spec point five. Everybody wants us to make box body parts. Here's our first one. Yeah, you want to smoke the hole in your bumper? Yeah. Yeah. All right, yep. Bring it down right there. Don't go too far to the radiator. There you go, nice. This is true Hoonigan fashion here, Leah. Yeah. We need more airflow. We got to make. What do you do? Yeah, you are getting a full drip spec lesson here. <laughs> Doing track side repairs, mods. You know, we just increased that what? 30% more airflow, I'd say. Yeah, hell yeah. There we go. All right, let's do it. So, you remember how to do donuts, right? Uh, maybe. Okay, just go ahead and get start getting a little bit of momentum, and then once you're going, I'm gonna tell you to do a weight transfer and clutch kick and it's gonna flick the car out and we're just gonna keep doing donuts. So you're just gonna look at those cones and keep doing large drifting donuts around them. Okay. So get a little bit, a little bit wider, a little bit wider. Yep, let's keep going a little faster. Yep, flick that clutch. It seems like this suspension wasn't fully cycled when it was all put together because the first time Leah hit full lock, the wheel hit the factory uh, shock tower that doesn't even need to be there anymore, I don't think. And uh, yeah, you got a broken wheel and a broken tire. Sick! Welcome to drifting! Yeah. See, you didn't think this lesson was going to be real life. This is real life this drifting. This is real life drifting. Break everything. Things happen. Nice. All right, well, do we have another? Leah, do you have another wheel? No. No. Hey, you guys got a 5 by one one four three wheels? Hell yeah, you do. This is also how drifting goes. <laughs> um, does it have a tire on it? How many do we, Leah, how many do we need? One. We're gonna let this hot rod right on over. Hey, we appreciate the help, man. Of course, man. You guys are legendary. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. yep. Yeah, that's your first one for your wall, Leah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Put it on the ink care wall. <laughs> what I love about drifting, you always find a friend. If you speak the language of drift. You get whatever you can get to, to help you get back out there. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Electric Mustang? So what we're gonna do uh, while you're cooling down, I'm just talking about it. We're gonna go do a figure eight. So this is what brings the hardest part of drifting in, is the transition. So what's gonna happen is, you're gonna be counter steered one way, and then when you get to the center, you're gonna give a quick lift, and the car is gonna come around the other way. And as soon as you feel it start coming around the other way, then you're gonna get on throttle and you're gonna change direction. Whenever you're ready. Let me jump over there just to show you real quick. 
like Scando flick it if you want it to go. Right. And it understeers in the front. It could have something to do with that sound. <laughs> she's she's being a soldier. She's not getting frustrated. I mean, she might be a little bit inside, but yeah. she is not scared. And like another day of this, and she'll be. She, I mean, she'll be great. Whenever you're ready, hot rod. Okay. All right, you can do it. This is like drifting 101, right? Everybody thrashed to get their shit together. Then they take it to the track and think it's gonna be the greatest day ever. Guess what? It never is. There's only something that happens. <laughs> yep. So we have a no working handbrake. We have an overheating car. Other than that, it's great. The problem is that we've set her up with no tools. She's literally got a clutch and a throttle and a steering wheel. So there's no now button for her to tell the car when to rotate. What has happened by accident is she's gotten so good at weight transferring and clutch kicking and just initiating drift that every time she comes this way she's doing the same exact thing she got the same mark the same initiation and the same rotation like that consistency is unbelievable to me for a 14 year old that's never done this I mean, you, you were just about to keep doing that and doing that. Yeah. Nice job not giving up. I can see you're tired, but every time I ask you, you're, you're, you're like, your body's like this. And I'm like, do you want to stop? Like, no. No, I don't. I want to get this. You got to see the whole plethora today of like, not everything always goes as planned, but you power through it. And at the end, you did just about two figure eights in a row. And I could tell, like, you got it. You came in, you had your rhythm. Boom, boom, boom. Like, you're just, you're there. I'm really proud of you, Thank you. and I hope you're proud of yourself because you did, you did an amazing job. And I hope you had fun. <laughs> Happy birthday! <Yay. laughs> and by the way, Vaughn, great coach. Oh, yes, amazing. you did a great job. Yeah, no, Thank you. I, that was. I appreciate that. Thanks, Ken. Good job. Very proud to have. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's a wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Block's Gym Connor Grid is coming back to the United States this fall. Now, tickets are going to be on sale very soon here, but if you want to hold your spot in line, if you want to be the first to know about it, click the link in the description below. Go there, fill that out. And that's actually not just for spectating. If you want to drive, whether you're pro or amateur, go to the link below, sign up. You'll be the first to know when spots are available. Those are going to run out really quick.
Well, it's actually nice to be back here in the LA Harbor and not have the pressure on me that uh, I had filming for five days. So uh, we're doing a little event tonight, get to drive the car around uh, this great setting and take uh, about 25 people for rides. We're gonna show the uh, new video tonight. It's still a bit in rough form, and uh, but it's getting close and it'll be up June 1st. So. Looking forward to getting some feedback tonight and seeing what everybody thinks about it. And, uh, go from there. It's a perfect mix, you know, cool people and nice party, race cars. What else can you ask for? Renee, Renee, I uh, work for DC. I'm kind of like the uh, team mascot. I'm going in the ride here uh, with Ken Block tonight. 242, which is uh, 199 plus 43, twice the drivers, both these guys. I got my Depends on in case uh, I have an accident, and uh, I'm ready to roll. My name is Rob Deerdeck, and I expect to go really fast, and I know because it's me, right, that he's going to try to push it to make it that much more ridiculous and over the top, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully we hit a tire, maybe scrape somebody, I don't know, hit someone's camera, something sketchy, so I can have a story to tell. Contest on Nazi in DC, whatever, for the ride along. The two day matter two days, I flew 2,000 miles over here from Virginia to come do all this. What's up, man? How you doing? So you won the contest, right? Yeah. Nice. sideways, just feeling it, throwing you against the seat, just holding you against the back of the seat, just ridiculous. <laughs> it's amazing, it was so much fun. It's everything that you, you see on the video, 10 times more in real life, it's great. Absolutely sick. That, that was the best feeling ever. So good, kind of like shaking right now. I was really impressed. I didn't think it was gonna be as easy to uh, back end to spin around, especially with the all-wheel drive, but it's, it's effortless. So we tried to go out of our way completely to try and make it as beautiful as we possibly could. And uh, basically my term for it is motorsports eye candy. I'd like to thank everybody that was involved in it. Uh, I have a great crew of people at DC and Mad Media, Crawford, Subaru. Uh, it's just an incredible, you know, people that are helped me behind the scenes on this project, and I, I really appreciate it. So, thank you again for every, everybody for coming out. Really appreciate it. So, hope you enjoy it. Sick, man. 
I feel like he outdid himself over the first one with the cameos and just the rotation in the new car. It was just, it just topped the old one in every way. It was super sick. Congratulations, Ken Block, Subaru Monster, DC. Love it. Absolutely. That was uh, another good uh, run with Ken Block. I already knew it was as gnarly as it was going to be, but I had no idea that I was going to look cool. So I'm, I'm a bit the egotistical maniac that I am. I'm delightfully surprised. All right, if you're just joining us, this is 24 hours of Ken Block. That's right, four three day. We're curating all types of different content, our favorite pieces of video that we have ever made with the man, Ken Block. Next, we're talking about onboards. Now for me personally, this is one of my favorite things that we always put out, because I'm a nerd, I'm a rally nerd. I like watching what's going on in the car. And with Ken, what we had developed from the very beginning was the helmet cam. That wasn't super easy because most rally cars have the halo thing going on and it's hard to get a camera in there and when you turn your head it hits and everything. We had a lot of different crazy setups for that but we made it work because we always felt that from the helmet, from the driver's eye view, was the absolute best version of seeing how insane it is to be behind the wheel of a rally car. And on top of that, how crazy skilled Ken was behind the wheel as well. So here's a bunch of our favorite onboard footage Enjoy. <laughs> oh yeah! Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here today because we're going to talk about winning. That's right, success, victory, accomplishment, achievement. <laughs> it was actually my first win in a rally in America in a long time. I just hadn't raced here that much. Been in various cars like the Kazi version 2 and the original rally version of that. And obviously a Skoda and a Subaru this year. So there hasn't been a lot of consistency and I haven't done a lot of events. So it was nice to go back to LSPR this past weekend, which stands for Lake Superior Performance Rally, which is in the upper peninsula of Michigan. So I went back there for the first time since 2013, came away with a win. So pretty happy about that. I'm happy too, because the last time Mr. Block was there, it resulted in a little, little bit of a thing. Yeah, that, that year was a tough year. We uh, actually had a big battle for the championship, but it started with like three mechanical DNFs for me and the team in the beginning of the year. So then I had to win the last four rallies of the year to win the championship. And I won three of the four and it came down to the last rally. And I had one of the biggest crashes of my career because I didn't note a corner perfectly and I tried to drive flat out through it and it wasn't a flat out corner. So Alex and I went tumbling down the stage six or seven times and uh, yeah, so this was the first time back at LSPR since that big crash, but LSPR is really a great race. Very technical stages, some fast bits, some linking tough bits with jumps. It was very cool. So the event like wasn't perfect for you though, right? Like, cause you did start off with blowing half the, the front corner off. <laughs> Yeah, for stage one. Basically, I was going around the inside of the corner just trying to drive nice and clean and quick, and I just felt my front right tire clip a rock right at the edge of the weed. And it ended up being bad. That tire completely came apart. Fight block. Oh, Let's fix it to crash that. How far do we have to go? Okay, we got fixed miles. It's too fast to stop. Carry on. Gotcha. Try not to damage the car for 50. <laughs> I'm trying not to. Right, six plus long, open tight, and it's probably on the rim. At least we got goo wheels, you know, rotiform. Rubber flying all forward and backwards and completely down to the rotiform rim I was racing on. And I had to drive about six miles like that flat out. I actually didn't lose that much time. I think I still won that stage, which was insane, but I just continue to drive as flat out as possible on it. And I know we just did a big test on the rotiform wheel. This, once again, another test of how strong these rally wheels are. Six miles flat out on the rim, finish the stage, absolute ain't care moment of the weekend. 
but that just set me up for the rest of the weekend, which went really well from flat out on most all the stages and even getting quicker at the end. Usually you get a little slower by the end. I actually chopped 12 seconds out of a repeat stage. So in this episode, we're showing two onboards. The first stage you're gonna see today is second to last stage of the rally. It's just outside of Marquette, Michigan. It's only a mile and a half long and it was actually featured, I think back in the 70s when the WRC ran an event in the States called Press On Regardless. The stage is short, technical, but it's stunningly beautiful and a very fun stage. Very dark, beautiful dirt on the stage road covered with leaves at the edges and these just beautiful forests of trees that are changing color. So it's one of the most beautiful things about LSPR this time of year and this stage is really the epitome of it. Probably one of the most beautiful stages I've ever raced down. These stages that you're gonna watch today uh, don't feature Alex. We had a malfunction with the camera that actually records the audio. So for this episode, enjoy the sounds of lots of gravel flying and hitting the inside of the wheel wells along with this boxer motor get run out to rev limiter at certain times, potentially in sixth gear. Like you were having fun because every single time that we were set up at a spectator stage you kind of chucked it in you even had a nice nearly reverse entry uh to one of them uh, which showered everybody in gravel yeah these stages are really great there's lots of jumps in there some fast sections but there's these rad junctions some of them are you know more than just a 90 degree turn i was enjoying really kind of throwing the car in on the handbrake trying to get a bit backwards to make those transitions and entertain the fans by the way it's great seeing the fans back out on the events and there was a lot at lspr so I tried to shower them with a few rocks a bit of gravel gravel souvenirs. Yes. <laughs> the next stage we have for you is Herman. We ran this stage twice. This is the second running of this stage. In this running, it was actually raining before I started the stage. So the stage is quite wet. And you can see that on the, the wheel tracks going down the stage. You'll see that they're kind of shiny. So I found that there was some grip, not as much grip as there is when it's dry. And I drove pretty much flat out, 12 seconds faster than the earlier running of the stage which is a lot considering I think this stage is only seven miles long. And this time is one of the fastest times ever set on the stage. It's a pretty infamous stage in American Rally. It's one of my favorite stages of the entire championship. So I really enjoyed this run of it and being able to put in this quick of a time in these tough conditions. There's a couple moments in there where I'm flat out in sixth gear. The screen starts blinking behind my steering wheel and that's telling me sixth gear flat out, probably about 125 miles an hour. So that's a bit sketchy on a wet surface road in the middle of the forest, but that's what we do. Really enjoyed this stage. One of the best stages, like I said, of this rally of the championship. Lots of technical stuff, some jumps if you're going fast enough. Enjoy.
about to watch a full onboard video of special stage 12 from the rally in the 100 acre wood. Now this stage is the longest stage of the rally. It features several water crossings, several junctions, a couple rough spots, a couple very quick spots, uh, and some narrow and twisty technical sections. It's definitely my favorite stage of the rally because it has such a variety of different conditions in it. So it rained a couple days before this event, and one of the water crossings, I think the first one I come to, is actually quite deep and quite long. And I come at it flat out fifth gear, but there's a corner right afterwards. So I have to break down to, I think, second or third gear, skip across the water crossing, and then exit to continue on the stage. Probably the most wet and water crossing filled stages I've ever driven. And I was driving a Skoda Fabia R5 Plus. It's my one and only drive in this particular car. Uh, we'll see if I drive it again, but I really enjoyed it. It's quite quick, but I didn't do much setup changes before the rally on it. And you'll notice in this onboard video, I'm actually moving my hands a lot. It's a very twitchy car. I should have made some adjustments to try and get that twitchiness out of it. Uh, but for my driving style, what I was doing, definitely moving my hands a lot. So as fast as on the stage, it's one of three stages that I won, uh, and I finished second overall in this rally. So, enjoy. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. 50, right five long, opens over crest. Right and stable, 150. Small crest, 70, small crest, 50. Right 6, 50, left 4, don't over crest, 4, don't over crest, 150, right 5 plus, opens, into small crest, 120, small crest, 250, right 6, into crest, 100, 
crest over 50 into care, right 5 plus over crest, ruts into left 5 plus, lose, long water 70, sleepy left 3 plus, in, sleepy 3 plus, in, into entry, right 5 minus, into left 6 over crest, 30, right 3 minus, rough water, 3 minus, rough water, into caution, left 4 plus, 30 deep water, 30 deep water, into right 5 minus, 30, right 4 plus, in, 4 plus, in,
So here we are at Rally Legend, we're at the end, but I'm going to show you an onboard video from Special Stage 7, and it is my favorite stage here at this rally, and for this one we have a, a GoPro mounted to my helmet. Now it's not very often that I get to run a GoPro on the helmet in a race, so that's why I really like this particular video because it feels real. You can actually see me turning some of the hairpins and actually see me reacting to some of the braking and that sort of thing. So this stage is very fun. There's some fun tight hairpins. You actually see three linking hairpins at one point. Some uphill, some downhill, a couple of handbrake turns. There's also a very fun, quick, fast section. Anyway, I was able to secure first in class and third overall in this rally. And this is Alex Del Sabino and I in stage seven, which is my favorite stage of this rally, and my Ford Escort RS Kazi version two. Five, four, three, two, one. Got 70, left six, 70, small press, into left six, 50 break, right six over press, 50 right six, late, long. Into left four plus, open small, tighten. Into right three plus, over small press. Open and caution left five minus for press. 29 left three minus. Into right two minus. Kings 100, left two plus, late, late. Open, tighten three, 30. Right two, open, tighten three minus, 30. Left four plus, don't. Opens long, tighten three plus. Open 70 right, one plus in, one plus in. Into narrow left two, tighten into long press 30. Left five plus 30, right three plus. Open tighten stable over press three plus 20, left two in. Into right four, tighten two plus 20, left over press in, right one. Into left one minus. And right two in into left four plus fifty right two narrows thirty nine left three minus into short right into left two minus late two minus late and right two plus into left three plus into right two plus hook in fifty right four minus long right three minus open slow twenty Left two plus long, tighten two minus, two minus, opens long, kicks 300. Cresting two, left four minus, tighten, 20, right three, 70, right four, tighten three, 30, left three long, opens, tighten three minus, very long. Into right two, opens long, deceptive, tightens three in, ten, left two plus, up, two plus up, seventy, line, right four minus, and left three, left three, opens, very long, and right five plus, tightens five minus, thirty, press into entry, left five minus, tightens four, thirty, right two plus, don't, two plus don't, into left three minus into right four plus 150 right six plus 70 left two plus long two plus long into right two opens 100 turn left three plus hook oh, sleepy baby 150 left five minus third Right three plus long, tight and slow. Sleepy, 100. Left two. 120. Right three plus long. 50. Left three plus don't. 50. Left five minus. And right five. 50, right three plus don't. Opens over small press, opens caution, tighten, five plus long, 30 left three minus, grip maybe, grip change, and kings line, left four, into right four minus, don't, 
open. It's 50, that's 3 plus. Stick me, stick me. 30. Therefore, plus. Open, so we're going to fall. Titan, and Titan 3 minus E. Titan 3 minus E. The P50, right one. Narrows. 30. Right into the front wall. Open. 50. Right one. And left three minus. Open. Right that's two plus hook. Two plus hook. And right two plus. Into left three hook. And right two plus. Open. And left four. Open slow. Right that's three minus. Right, two plus seventy. She came left hand three seventy. Turn left two plus line thirty. Right four plus thirty. Right four minus fifty. Left three plus long three plus long. Open long fifty. Right three plus. Extra long. 50. Right 5 minus. 30. Left 2. Don't. 50. Right 2 plus. And left 4 minus. 30. Left over crest. 30. Right 5 minus. Into left 5. And right 5 plus. And left 5 minus. Long over crest. Right then. And bumps. Right 5 minus, opens into crash 150, right 5 and 3, line left 5 and right 5 plus, 50 right 4 plus, shortly to turn left 2, over small press narrow. And narrow now, watch the dirt, left 5, caution 50. Right four, short over the crest, into left crest, three plus in, hook over the crest, watch the dirt, into right three plus, open five and four minus, over small crest, fifty, left two minus, and right four plus, short over small crest, in, king swan eighteen, right four, long over the crest, Titans bumps, Titans bumps, fifty, small crest, into right four minus long, Titans in, in, fifty, crest, 30, entry left 5, and right 5 plus, caution 100, turn left 2 plus, narrow, open thing to wide road, wide road, 150, right, 70, right 3 plus, long, into left 3 minus, long, tightens little, 70, right 2 plus, very long, and left 5 150 left 2 plus, very long 70 right 6 plus 150 entry, left 4 plus 100 right 1 plus, long 70 Left two minus long, two minus long, 150, entry, left five, 100, she came, left entry, into right four, opens long, keeps 250, right five minus bumps, break, 50 right, into deep, left two minus don't, narrow, 150 Left 2, long 180 Right 2 plus long, the Titan Slayer road 50 Left 5 minus long 70 Right 5 plus, 30, left 2 plus, half long. And right 4 plus, 70 line, left 5 minus, 50, right 2 long. Right 
one after it. <laughs> They're five. <laughs> Left three, stop. Check out. Yeah! <laughs> Seven seconds left. <laughs> good luck beating that one. Yeah. That felt good. Okay. What's up? If you're just tuning in, you missed the big announcement earlier. Today, it is that Ken Block's Gymkhana Grid Race Series is coming to America this fall. That's right. Tickets will be on sale soon, so go check the link below in the description to hold your spot. Not only that, if you want to compete, same link will get you all the info of how to enter, what classes there are going to be, what kind of car you might want to build. That link alone, that'll get you all the info as it comes out. Whether you're a pro or you want to come race us jabronis, see if you're faster than us. Jabroni class. Jabroni class. <laughs> you did this whole race with a broken toe. So recently, Ken and Alex uh, did a stage rally in Ohio called the Southern Ohio Forest Rally, where they took second overall. Right five finals over the press, 100, turn right one clock. Second place overall, Ken Block and Alex Del Cimino. Well, the, the stages actually of the Southern Ohio Forest Rally were really fun. They're tricky. There's lots of surface changes. There's hairpins, there's tarmac parts, and it had rained earlier that day, so some of the tarmac was wet and slippery. So trying to go as quick as possible, but also making sure you don't slide off the road because we're on gravel tires on slippery tarmac, trying to go as fast as possible. There were a few people that, you know, ran into some like track debris that took out massive chunks of vehicles. I mean, how many people got taken out by the end of the race? Like uh, well, the last stage, two cars, two of the top three cars actually hit a brick in the road that had been pulled out by a, a previous car. So those are just the hazards of racing stage rally. And my Ford Escort Cause EV2 actually performed exceptionally well and we got quicker and quicker through the event. It was a lot of fun, but we're gonna show you some GoPro helmet cam footage. It was a Hero 8 mounted in my helmet, but eventually that got knocked around in the car on transit and the helmet cam popped off and actually took some of the Troy Lee paint off. Most of the rest of the rally, the other four stages were all at night. So we had some great rigid lights on the front. So before we get to the, the full helmet cam shot, let's show some of the, the night footage from these several different cameras. 50, press to 30, left 5 cut into narrow, care, right 6, open, long, into press, left 6, extra long, tighten little in, tighten little in, into right 5, long, 30, left 4 plus, 4 plus, 180, entry, left 6, and right 6 over press, 100, Left five finals into caution, right four in, caution right four in, into break, left five short, 20 left one, onto tarp. Left over long crest, 70, right six, 70, entry, long crest, kicks 200. So now that we're back from the night footage, can we talk about something really quick? What's that? Uh, the fact that you did this whole race with a broken toe. <laughs> it was like disgustingly bent off. So I did that kickboxing. So I was kicking with this foot, this foot moved, my toe stuck and my toe folded under my foot. And so I went to the hospital, I got nine stitches. And when I raced in this event, I had to stuff that broken toe into my DC shoes race boot. I actually felt pretty good in the car. It felt more uncomfortable walking around than it actually did racing. So on the stage, I had the second fastest overall time, which is great since I'm racing my 90s Ford Escort Kazi against a lot of modern machinery. So tell you what, let's cut to that helmet cam footage and see what it's like to go balls out through the Southern Ohio Forest Rally. Six, 
5, 4, 3, 2, 1, turning the 4 minus late, into right 5 plus, open extra long, tight and slow plus, don't in, don't in, into left 6, into right 5 plus, don't, 70, entry, right 5 minus, open very long, tight and slow plus in, 4 plus in, 10, left 1 plus, 1 plus, 10, into right 4 minus long, in, 10, left 2 minus, long in, near, 10, left 2 minus, 70, left 3, open, Titans 2, you beat Titans 2, 30, right 4 minus long, Titans 2, 4 minus long, Titans 2, open, into, left 4 long, Titans, into, long press, into right 6 long, Titans 4 don't, Titans 4 don't, and, left 5, 30, Right 2 plus, cut! Into left 3 plus, don't lay. 3 plus, don't lay. Open. 30, right 1 plus. Right 1 plus. 30. Right 4 plus, Titans, cut. Into care. Left 3, late, don't. You be care. Left 3, late, don't. 30. Left 5, open. Titans. 30, left 2 plus, don't. You be left 2 plus, don't. Kings 100. Left 5 minus long. 50, right 1. Maybe 50, right 1. Open. 70. Right 6. Into left 5 plus. And right 4 plus. Late lose. Maybe left 5 plus. And right 4 plus. Late lose. Into left 4. Open long. 50. Left 5 plus. Titans 4 plus, narrow bridge. Titans 4 plus, narrow bridge. Opens, 120. Left 5 plus, 100. Care, long press into left 5 plus. Care, long press into left 5 plus. Into right 6 long, 120. Entry, right 6, 300. Left 4 plus. Repeat, down there, left 4 plus. Opens long. Entry, 100, right 6, 150, caution, press into right 1 plus late, repeat caution, press into right 1 plus late, open, 50, left 5 in, kings, 50, left 5 minus short, 30 left 3 minus, Titans long, hook, repeat 3 minus, Titans long, hook, 30, right 5 minus, into, left 5 minus, repeat left 5 minus, and right 6, Titans 4 plus, Titans 3 plus long, repeat Titans 3 plus long, and, left 4 hook, and, right 4 late cut, repeat right 4 late cut, into, left 2 plus, left 2 plus, open, 17, right 4 plus, cut, into, Left 5 plus over press long, tight and clear roll, tight and clear roll, continues over long press long, 50, right 5 plus, open, tight and 4 minus in over press, repeat, tight and 4 minus in over press, into, left 6, and right 6 over press, open, long over second press, tight and 5 minus, tight and 5 minus, into, left 5 minus long, tight and 4, Repeat left 5 minus long, Titans 4. Opens over press. 50. Right 4 plus, extra long, Titans 4 minus. Extra long, Titans 4 minus. Open little, Titans. Open little, Titans. Opens into. Left 6 plus, 30. Press into. Right 5 over press into caution. Left 5 plus long, Titans 5 minus. Caution, left 5 plus long, Titans 5 minus. 30. Right 4 minus, into care. 4 minus, into care. Left 3 late. Left 3 late. Into. Right 5 minus. Into. Left 6. Into. Right 5 minus in. Into. 
in into left six and right five plus over the crest into left five minus long right minus long open into crest 50 left over crest 150 left five plus over crest into right five over crest tightens zero you beat five plus into right five over crest tightens zero open into crest in tightens zero open into crest in 200 and 3 left 5 plus over crest care right 6 over crest open tightens 5 minus care into caution break left 6 over crest and right 4 minus cut caution break left 6 over crest here 4 minus cut open 70 middle over junction left 6 middle over junction left 6 15 left 4 minus hook 4 minus hook watch it Open 70, long crest, 70, crest into care, right 4 plus, Titans 4 minus, repeat care, 4 plus, Titans 4 minus, 70. Left 3 minus, late hook, 3 minus, late hook, open into crest and right 5 long, 30 care, left 6 over crest, don't, 30 left 2 plus, 30 only 2 plus. Into right four minus long cut four minus long cut open fifty care left five minus fifty care left five minus in over press open Titans four in over press Titans four fifty right two plus hook two plus hook into left five minus long the Titan open very long and. Right 5 plus, over crest, Titans 4 plus, Titans 4 plus, open, Titans little, Titans little, 20, left 4 long, repeat left 4 long, open into press, Titans over press, Titans over second press, 20, right 4 cut, repeat 4 cut, into left 5 minus very long, Titans 4 plus, Titans 4 plus, open, Kings 200, Opens here, kicks 200, right 5 minus Titans 4 plus long, in over press, watch this one, 4 plus long, in over press, into left 6 very long, the Titans 5 over press, open, Titans 4 plus extra long, open Titans 4 plus extra long, Titans little at the end, Titans little, and right 5 plus over press, Opens over, opens long, the Titans 5, caution, opens into long press, 20 right 3 plus, caution, 20 right 3 plus, cut, 30, press into care, left 4 plus, very long, Titans, care, Titans, 50, care, left 5 minus over press, Titans little, Titans little, into right 5 plus, open Titans 4 minus, cut, into care, left 6, open Titans 4 minus, in over press, 4 minus, in over press, in, Kings 100, left 5 minus, in, over long press, 5 minus, in over long press, into, right 5 minus, and then 3, left 5 minus, open Titans 4 plus, Titans 4 plus, nice and easy, 20, right 2 plus, 2, and, left 4 plus long, Titans little, 10, right 2, late, too late, and left 4 plus, open, Titans 30, left 4 plus in, 4 plus in, open over press, Titans into press, 100, right 5 plus long, Titans 4 minus long, repeat, Titans 4 minus long, into left 3, repeat into left 3, into the right six. Repeat right six. Fifty. Turn left one late. Turn left one late. One hundred. Right four minus over press. One twenty. Right four plus. Open long. Titans two cut. Two cut. Into narrow, narrow curve. Left two plus small cut. Left 2 plus small cut, narrow exit, into, right 6, opens into press, 30, press into left 6 plus, very long, Titans 5 plus long, 5 plus long, into care, right 6, 30, left 3 plus, care, 
Left right, 630, left three blocks, over crest, over crest, over long, into right four over crest, tightens three minus, four over crest, tightens three minus, open smoke over crest, continues very long, 50, left three hook, 50 left three hook, into right six, 30. Left 5 over crest and right 4 over crest tightens. 4 over crest tightens. Opens long. 50. Left over crest into left 5 plus 30. 5 plus 30. Left 6 over crest long. Opens caution. Tightens 4 plus over crest caution. Tightens again. Tightens again. 30 care. Right 5 plus long. Tightens 4 long over crest. 4 long over crest. And left 2. 10 left 2. Hook. Long in, in, 50. Right four very long, right that's four minus, four minus, 30. Left four in, four in, into pass 30. Left five minus, into caution, right four in, into break. Left five short, 20 turn, left one, onto tar. Left one, onto tar, into Right four, ten, left three, repeat, left three, into, right four plus, seven, deep. right three plus hook, three plus hook, open over crest, fifty, right three minus long, three minus long, uh, open twenty, line, left four, repeat, line left four, into right five, into left five plus over crest, thirty, left four minus, four minus, ten, ten, right two plus, cut, two plus cut, into left three, 30, left three, opens long, tightens four plus, tightens four plus, 30, line, right four minus, into left four very long, tightens three, tightens three, 100, left five plus over press, and right three plus cut, three plus cut, into entry, left five minus long, in the 50, right one, one, 100 Left 6 over crest Open 50 32 Right 5 30 left 4 Long the Titans 4 long Titans Open 30 Right 5 plus Bumps 5 plus bumps Into left over long crest 70 right 6 70 entry Long press, kicks 200, at the end, the 4, kicks 200 down there, the 4, 70, turn, right 2, 100, finish, 200, stop. Long. Greetings, this is the full GoPro in-car video of Alex Gelsomino and myself from stage 13 of the Donegal Rally in Ireland. The second running of one of the most infamous stages of Irish tarmac, Nakala. The stage starts wide and fast with big drop-offs and it has a beautiful view of the Atlantic Ocean. And then turns inland, gets narrow and twist here, and even features some fun jumps. My drive here wasn't perfect, but it was pretty quick for only being my second time on this epic stage. It's a tough stage to get totally right, but I had a great experience driving my car this weekend for the first time on tarmac. Enjoy this ride along. Five, four, three, two, one, two hundred. Left five extra long, the seventy. That's thirty, right five long, okay. One eighty. Left four plus. 100, right 2 plus long, 150, left 3 long, opens very long, tightens 5 long, 
tight then. 30 left for plus. 30. Line. Right, 5 tightens 4. 30. Left 5 Michaels over crest. Open. And right 6. 70. Right 6. Tightens 5. Open. Tightens 4 plus in. A very long. 4 plus in. A very long. 70 over dip. Right 5 minus in. Right 5 minus in. Into crest. 100. Entry. Right 5. OK. 100. Caution. Long crest. 30 down. Left 3 plus long. Tighten. 3 plus long. Tighten. 30. Right 5 opens into a long pass. 20, left 6, 70 through dip. Right 4 minus in over crack, in over crack. Long, long, opens, entry 150, right 6, 30, chicane, right entrance. Right 6 over crack, 30, right 4 plus, 4 plus, 30. Left 5 minus opens in over crack, bump. 30, right 4, don't long. 30 right 4 don't long, 300 through dip, right 6, 120, long pass, entry, kings 250, left 6, sudden chicane, right entrance, 6, sudden chicane, right entrance, into turn, right 4 minus, 4 minus, 30, left 4 plus long, 50, Crest 70, right 6 long, 350, crest bump, entry 200, left 6 plus, 50, right 4 plus, repeat, left 6 plus, 50, right 4 plus, 30, left 4 plus, 100, line, left 4 plus, into right 4 plus, and left 5 minus, into right 6, into left, into turn right 3 in, Repeat, turn right 3 in, 500, and 3, care, left 5 plus, don't, repeat, and 3, care, left 5 plus, don't, 150, chicane, right entrance, into left 3 minus, don't, lose maybe, 3 minus, don't, lose baby, and right 3 minus, 70, left 5 plus over bump, Dip and right 6 plus over crest opens into jump 150 crest 20 down left 4 repeat 20 down left 4 50 narrow left 5 minus over kick 250 left 6 over bump into junction 350 over crest and drips dips entry right 6 long 100 left 3 repeat 100 left 3 30 Right, 2 plus, repeat, 2 plus, 50, jump, 70, right 5 plus, 70, jump, 100, left 5 minus, extra, extra long, Titans 4, Titans 4, 120, left 6 plus, 70, left 5 plus, extra long, 50, Turn left 3 plus. Repeat 50. Turn left 3 plus. 150. Care. Right 5 over crest. Extra long. The open Titans 5 plus. Care. Titans 5 plus. 100. Turn left 2. 200. Narrow. Repeat. Narrow. Care. Left 5 plus over crest. Into right 4. Care. Narrow. Into right 4. Kings 350, right 6 plus long over bumps into entry left 6, 50, right 6 plus over crest into left 4 plus late. Repeat, right left 6, 50, right 6 plus into crest into left 4 plus late into right 4 and slip it starts left 4 plus short into right 5, right and 5 minus into bump 30, right 4 short, don't into left 4 plus and right 6 short and right 4 don't into left 5, don't. 30, sleepy, right 5, into jump, into right 5, minus open, but then little over crest, bumps 100, in right 6, 30, crest, left 5, left 5, 70, left 6, very long, 30, turn, right 2, before the green bush, 400, bumpy breaking, lose, turn, left 2, 
lose turn up to 350 jump narrow 120 Slippy left four don't and mud right four slippy repeat mud right four slippy and left four minus 30 left five plus over long press Titans four plus and sudden turn right two plus before the pile before the pile into left three minus into right four plus opens long Titans bumpy 50 left three minus don't three minus don't 20 right two 120 Caution, bumpy right three, don't, into left two minus, bumpy right three, don't, to left two minus, into right five minus, 100 over bump, chicane, right entrance, 50, long press, into left four plus, repeat, left four plus, 50, right five over press, tightens two minus late, and right six long, tightens little, into left four minus, four minus, opens extra long, okay, 50, right five plus over press, 70, right five minus in, five minus in, opens over press, 550 over press and dips, turn, right one plus and sign, eat, repeat turn, right one plus and sign, eat, 100, Left four minus long. Titans. 30, right three. Repeat, Titans. You're 30, right three. And left four. 50, press. 30, left five plus. Don't cover press. 30, right four. Don't cover press. You're 30, right four. 70, left five. Don't cover press. 30, care. Right four in. In. 70, left four. Stay middle. 50, right six. 70, long press, 50 right 6, 200, entry, long press, kinks, 150, right 6 plus, over press, 70 caution, right 4 plus, late, repeat, 70 caution, 4 plus, late, over press, open, 400, left 6, over long press, Titans, long over press, Titans 5, 50, sleepy maybe, right 4, short over press, 50, sleepy maybe, right 4, short over press, 70, turn left 2 minus, don't, 2 minus, don't, 150, press into, left 6, don't, 70, narrow, left 4 minus, narrow, left 4 minus, 70 caution jump 30 down caution right six over dip open titans five minus long into crest into left six plus the kings 250 entry left six over jump into dip 50 chicane right entry repeat left six over jump into dip 50 chicane right entry 30 caution press into left four plus titan narrow bridge into right four minus narrow bridge right four minus and left five plus and right five plus over press opens long titans five over press open 70 left six over press and 350 left six 120 chicane right entrance 120 chicane right entrance 50, press down, 30, left 4, very long, 4, very long, into right, 3, long, watch the long, 3, long, into left 5, minus, open, into press, bump, right 6, over bump, 70, jump, 100, small jump, into left 6, plus, 50, line, right 4, plus, over press, repeat, line, right 4, plus, over press, 30, turn, left 3, minus, 50, long press, 100, keep left over press, into right 4 plus, left over press, into right 4 plus, open, into finish, and press, 50, dip into right 5 in, I thought I was late for the left 3, sorry, that's okay. why, yeah, I know it was there actually, yeah, that one, uh, yeah, we did good on, 10-12, 20 second improvement, 22, yeah, Hope you enjoy this epic ride along. Balls.
All right, so next up is one of the first videos that like we made as a team because in the early days like I wasn't a filmmaker you weren't a filmmaker Definitely. we barely knew how to use cameras I was we watching were... how to's on YouTube on how to make I, I actually told you that I knew how to edit video that's how just you to job. get on the team and I got on the team didn't know how to edit video so we're like in the middle of who knows where trying to put stuff together so we used to always bring a big team with us to film and we needed to figure out an easier way to make fast stuff that could go up within like a few hours. And the concept was rapid, rapid fire, fire clips. clips. That's right, so when Brian says team on the road, he really means just me and him. Shooting stills, setting up GoPros, shooting video footage from rally tests that we would go out and we would try to get it to a point where we could put that out the day after testing. Yeah, actually, Mike Lawn was involved in I think one of the he first was, couple yes. of teams. Yeah, yeah. So it was the very, three very of us. first one. But yeah. we were filming this with like flip cameras, yeah, like maybe a GoPro. Like this was we didn't have any good cameras, or maybe we would use like a, um, a like, I think we had the five D Mark II. Right, that right. was it. So like we were making this with the simplest of cameras. GoPro Hero clips. One. Yeah, I haven't watched these in forever. We've come a long way. Yeah, anyway. they, they were a really good time. Uh, test days were super fun for us because we could move along yeah. the road. We made them super simple and short. We just wanted to get them out. And this was during an era where all the other WRC teams were only releasing photos. Yeah. So like this may seem lo-fi, but at the time it was, but at the time no one else was doing daily video updates. So we were really trying to push that content and get that out there instead of just releasing stills. Yeah, what a golden time, because for Ken, that was his first ever miles in, in world yeah. rally cars. Like, he, that dude went from driving super production-based, basic Subarus to full-blown weapons. Weapons, weapons. It, it was a crazy time for us. We really enjoyed making these yeah. videos and all the foreign snacks in between them, so enjoy. Cut to Wu-Tang's, can it be so simple? <laughs> I wish it was that easy. All right, enjoy. I've done 150 kilometers, uh, and we're four days away from Germany, and this is my first WRC test on tarmac. confident about stage but yeah <laughs> like years from now <laughs> sliding a car around on street tires is nothing like racing a WRC car on race tires Using the handbrake a lot of junctions. Uh, right now I like gravel. I just tarmac is such a new thing for me. It's actually really fun. I had one of the funnest days of my life doing testing today. But I just know gravel so much better. But this is fun because it's all new, but it's gonna definitely take me a while to get up to speed. Ooh, I had one pretty good spin right at the end. The whole day went really well, and then my last run out had a pretty good spin. I guess that's my initiation to uh, 
how sketchy it can be if you're six inches off the line. Yari Mani Laval sat with me for one run and I sat with him for one run. And man, I learned a lot with just that little bit of time sitting in his car. Uh, the capabilities of this car on tarmac are just amazing. I have a long ways to go before I'm ever anywhere near that dude.
right here. This is the very seat where I, where I talked to Mr. Ken Block. He was sitting right. He was sitting right here, eating some food. And I walked in and I was like, "Excuse me, Mr. Block, can I borrow a moment of your time?" He was like, "Yeah, to interview him." And the best thing about that, from what I hear now, he doesn't like to be bothered alone. And he took his time to talk to Tim. You know, I don't know who Tim is. But he talked to Tim and myself, asked him a series of vague questions that pertain nothing to automotive sports. But out of those five questions, that lets me know as a human-to-human -human interaction who you are and what you're about as a person. It's usually just pizza, a couple Star Wars questions, and some sprinkled in BS besides that, and his favorite Jim Gymkhana. But the cool thing about that whole day was is that... I saw him as a person. I didn't see him as Ken Block. I didn't see him as a prolific Jim Connor driver. I didn't see him as this badass rally dude. It was just I saw a human and I saw that human go to other humans later that night. He didn't project a cock uh, the, he didn't project a god complex or that he was better than anybody. It was just a dude that was with other dudes and female dudes that were happy to be around this whole thing we call Hoonigan. Enjoy. We are here live at the Ken Block meet and greet at Tire Slayer Studio. We have an Audi Quattro. I think that's seven in Spanish. Let's find out what the people think. We are on the hunt for Ken Block right now. We need to find Mr. Block. We are on the hunt. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sir, How you doing? do you mind being on camera? You got the cap on a wave check. <laughs> or you got braids. I got dreads. Dread. Okay, okay. You safe today. You safe you safe today. I tried, I tried. We're gonna find Mr. Block. He around here somewhere. These are these are behind the scenes. I have to use my secret code. What? <laughs> Where is he at? Where is he at? Hey, y'all seen Ken Block? Okay. In the bathroom? We are on the hunt for Ken Block. Oh. Oh. Tim, this is a, this is a, this is a exclusive. Excuse me, sir. We hate to bother you, but do you have two minutes for a small interview? <laughs> sure. All right. Uh oh. You can't show this man without his hat. The people need to know that we found him. It took me all day. I searched high, low, under the sea. I was with a little mermaid and Ursula. This is a sir. Hello. <laughs> Gary King Jr. Hard hitting news. We just need a couple quick facts Rebellion or Republic? Rebellion. Least favorite Jedi. Whoa. How could you have a least favorite? Okay. You're in a knife fight. You've got Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin right when Padme died. Who are you choosing to back you up? Ooh, I'll go Obi-Wan. Mm, solid question. What is your favorite Jim Kana? Who, man? It's like asking me what my favorite child is. That's not fair at all. Well, you got you to gotta, you gotta pick one, my good man. <laughs> uh, my favorite one's the one that, with the big V8 thing. Fair, fair. <laughs> now, this is the hardest question. The hardest question of all, do pineapples belong on pizza? Man, tough one. I mean, that is the Hawaiian style. I mean, I ate it as a kid. I don't know what to tell you. I don't eat it today. Mixed feelings. It's a yes or no. Thank you, sir. Gray area. Appreciate you. That's been your questions with Mr. Block. Wave check.
Kakawa, what was your favorite Ken Block moment at the old building? Probably when he brought the escort. Oh yeah, that was a good one. That's like right. the early one before the fence? Before we had the fence, before we had the container, when we had just introduced ourselves to the neighborhood, he brought that escort and that thing was loud.
fuck you for?
<laughs> you enjoying watching me do Instagram? <laughs> Well, the time has come. The day is almost over. So we want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for helping celebrate this day with us. It means a lot to us. It's been a tough time, but it's always great to go back and watch all this amazing content with Ken. So just as a quick reminder, uh, a couple things. Jim Connor Grid, it's coming. Check this link for more information. Also check this link for uh, how to contribute and donate to the 43 Institute, which is the foundation set up in Ken's name. And there's other things on there as well, like some of the new limited edition merch that we brought out, which proceeds help the foundation and all the other details that are coming. So check out 43 Day and also don't forget, sign that petition. Right, Gary? Sign it immediately or I'll find you. So anyway, we thought no better way to end today than to play what was Ken's favorite thing we ever made. And it was a lot of people's favorite thing because it's also the most viewed video we ever made. So without further ado, to end the 2023 4-3 day, Gymkhana 5, San Francisco, Ultimate Playground.
too. Still mad underrated.